Schaffen.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back for yet another day of coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. Maria Ho alongside Ali Najad bringing you yet another day's worth of coverage. Today on tap, we'll have day two of a 40K mystery bounty. But, of course, as per usual, we're going to cast our eyes on what took place yesterday, Maria, with the 30K. It was quite an action-packed final table. It was one where, again, the chip leader in Juan Pardo came in with such a big chip lead, and then there was just a really slow pace in terms of bust outs from about five players down to heads up. And again, we expect that Juan Pardo, somebody who made probably one of the best folds we have ever seen in poker history in London, he made one of the best calls actually three-handed against Ole Shemian, and that really propelled him to heads up. But after that, you know, Dimoff was able to take a couple of pots and things go his way. The card distribution finally fell in his favor. And uh, either way, it was just amazing to watch per usual. That it was. And while it may have been slow paced, if you were streaming it with us live, as we always encourage you to do, for those that may have missed it, We've clipped it down to some highlights, and like, let's get to those highlights now as we reflect upon the final eight. 34 did come back for day two. Didn't take a whole lot of time to get into the money, nor did it take much time for Mikita Badziakuski to find his way into the middle with an ace jack from the small blind, Juan Pardo, the aforementioned Spaniard. Really left us breathless. We'll get to that later with a couple of eights. Sat pretty on the flop on the turn in spite of the arrival of a fourth club. Clubless was Badziakuski, unable to connect with the ace jack or the deuce that he needed, let alone the club. And so that would do it for the Belarusian. An eighth place finish, 126,000. Jao Vieira. 9-7 offsuit is what he would find his way into the middle with. Up against Jack-7. He was always dominated. Things were not looking pretty for him. And a diamond turn coupled with the king on the river would send one of Portugal's finest home in seventh. 172,000 going to Vieira. So then, the Triton first-timer theme. One that was continued courtesy of the presence of Hong Kong's Janissa Khan. With six remaining, her ace-deuce would find itself dominated up against Ole Shimion's ace-seven. She would be outflopped. And then on the turn, she would draw dead. Obviously a wonderful experience for her. Sixth place finish, 233,000. Five remain then. And again, a Triton first-timer was the next to find the exit. Travis Endersby. Just played $15 average tournaments coming into this one. Ace nine, sat pretty for Pardo on the flop and the turn. The queen deuce took a shot. As obviously Endersby will be thrilled with the 300K and didn't let the bright lights bother him one bit. Four remaining then. And Luke of the Brothers Greenwood with king 10 would be crushed by Agnion Dimov of Bulgaria's ace king. 854 board with a couple of hearts though would provide some hope to Lucas. The turn was a failure, but so many outs going to the river in an over 10 million chip pot. The seven of spades, unfortunately, not among them though, as Lucas would collect 374,000 and the remainders of his chips collected by Dimov. Three remaining then in Germany's Ole Shemian, a true veteran of the sport Ace five, crushed by ace nine, as once again the Bulgarian would dominate pre-flop. Jack nine six, and Ole would push his chips further forward, recognizing that the situation was dire. Unable to find a winner, he would find 457,000 to add to his career Triton totals, however, as the heads-up showdown between Juan Pardo and Ognion Dimov was set. And when brass tacks came to bear, it was king nine against queen 10. Pardo had Dimov in trouble, was covered. On the turn though, Dimov would hit the 10 and Pardo unable 
to find the king that he so needed. Walked right on over, though, and showed his love for another one of our Triton first-timers. Agni on Dimov, what a moment. Family in tow. And they were absolutely thrilled on the rail. Largest ever cash of Agni on Dimov's career. One million going home with him. Juan Pardo, 685,000. His parents also here, much like Adrian Mateos' father, not a long flight from Spain over here to Nice. Was wonderful to see the support on the rail. Deeply disappointed, but let's focus on Pardo first and foremost. That call with King Six, for those that don't remember it, walk us through. He went deep into the tank against Ole Shemion. I believe that he used every single one of his time banks on that decision. And, you know, Ole was able to find a triple barrel in a spot where I feel like nine out of ten times against almost any other opponent, it would get through. And Juan Pardo very clearly thought through his decision, probably counted all the combos in his head. I just imagine a beautiful mind chalkboard behind <laughs> uh, Juan Pardo's head. And after he made that call, it seemed like perhaps he was going to be the first person yeah. in this Triton series to go wire to wire, which we haven't seen yet from any of the other chip leaders. But again, heads up, got a little bit shallow. Dimov started with a two to one chip lead. And so Pardo wasn't able to close. Word of advice to those who are out there in the field doing battle. If you're the chip leader on the final table bubble, you may want to dust that chip lead off because it has not worked well <laughs> so far here in Monaco for those who have brought it to the FT. Then let's turn our attention, of course, to Agni on Dimov. Incredibly humble, but part of a burgeoning poker scene in Bulgaria as the best to do it in that country. All of the top four here at Triton doing battle with our regulars, not a country we hear from all that often. Right, and I feel like when we talk about players from that region, I mean, Alex Kulev, of course, somebody that has really made a name for himself, but Dimov, really well known online, a little less so maybe live, but now I think finding a lot of success and hopefully we'll see him in a lot more of these series. Yeah, he was a first timer. We touched on it during the highlights Travis Eldersby, Janissa Khan, first stops for them, also notching deep caches there at the FT. You know, I've touched on it with Randy as well. I'm not sure what your opinion is. But do you think that being the unknown entity at your first Triton stop actually is a competitive advantage? Absolutely. And I feel like Endersby is a great example of that because yesterday, I think some of the players at the final table might have underestimated him or felt like he was going to try to ladder and play very conservatively. But we saw him pick up a lot of chips, just taking some shove spots that perhaps his opponents weren't sure that he was capable of. And so when that happens, I think you can certainly gain a little bit of an edge with that anonymity. On form, of course, were uh, Ibinger and, or forgive me, Shemion and Greenwood as they both capture titles out in London, third and fourth here at this particular FT. The reason Matthias Ibinger's name crosses my lips, though, is I want to turn attention to the player of the festival. Obviously, valuable points going toward the overall Ivan Leal Player of the Year award and that player of the festival as we dive into the Triton Poker Plus app for the first occasion here in our pregame show is Matthias Ibinger. 600 points for him and change. Christoph Vogel saying the guy that he was railing there as Christoph took his title right behind him in second. Let us not overlook, though, Dimov, who took down that 30K right there in the hunt, 541 points. I do want to back out and get to the overall player of the year race, though, because one thing that jumps out is the fact that those who are regularly notching victories, deep caches, and adding points haven't really been performing thus far here in Monaco. And I'm talking a bit about Kuhn, Brewer, and Chidwick. Yeah, it feels like for them, they've had a bit of a slow start. You know, Brewer was trying to get a little something going, made a final table, but wasn't really able to get very deep in that. And I think what's also interesting is in the series player of the year race, you know, none of the top three players are still in the mystery bounty. So, you know, that isn't going to have much movement today, but we'll see as there are still a few events left on the docket. And, you know, PLO probably going to be interesting as, you know, I'm not too sure about how much PLO somebody like Ibinger plays. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to maybe shake things up on that leaderboard. Well, listen, once upon a time, short deck was a game that many of the Western players who frequent the Triton uh, Super High Roller Series did not play. They got into the lab, they learned, and uh, they understood that 
points toward a player of the year race available in short deck. That's going to be really important and have some positive EV. Maybe pages will be turned and some PLO work is going to get done. I know Danny Tang was bemoaning the idea as he really is hunting that player of the year award this year that PLO was going to be three different events here at this stop. Maybe a little resignation as he says, I don't play the game, but hasn't stopped people in the past. So then let us turn the page and focus on what we have going on today. It is the 40K Mystery Bounty, 162 entries in total, ponied up for this one, 96 uniques, only 39, though, are going to be coming back for day two action here today. And as you look at the payouts in the Triton Poker Plus app, all the way down at the bottom, scrolling, there's the min cash, 33,000, and we scroll right up to the top where you find that 718K. Of course, the rubs in this one is that the payouts may seem a little bit small, but that's because half of the prize pool gets stuffed into envelopes. Right, and we can't forget how much fun the idea of the Mystery Bounty is for a lot of these players. Still a relatively new format on the scene, you know, only a couple of years old. But people love this idea that they have no idea what they could possibly draw until tomorrow. When yeah. You'll be presiding over. Well, the bounties yeah. aren't actually available until day two. Mm -hmm. So those are now active. And the other thing to note is a lot of these players do the math in spots yep. where it may not seem like a hand wants to be calling off. It does change the action a touch because you go, what's the EV of an envelope? If I can claim a pelt here, it may very well be worth the risk. And we will see that theme manifest itself as this 40K gets underway. So then envelope breakdown, if you will, Maria, how's it going to shake out? Yeah, well, you were speaking of what that EV is going to be. And the average EV of a bounty is 83,000 with the top bounty being 400,000. There's only one of those, though. Three at the 200,000 mark and then six 100K bounties. So, you know, a lot of really strong bounties up top, 10 10 80k bounties. Mm -hmm. There's going to be 19 40,000 dollar bounties, two 40,000 dollar bounties, and then one draw again for a little extra element. Well, of you surprise. left out one of the things about that draw again envelope that I love the most <laughs> is it has zeros, and a lot of the players will squeeze the envelope, and it's nothing but zeros, and then a sad face emoji at the end. Something Luca Vivaldi came up with having a little fun, but of course you aren't going to be showered. You do get a draw again in that particular spot. So that bounty, as Maria mentioned, not going to happen until tomorrow during the dinner break. Let's get a look then at our two featured tables and the thing that jumps out right away is the likes of Justin Bonomo arriving on absolute vapors. Well late into the night actually probably the last orbit Bryn Kenny had aces against Bonomo's king queen on a queen high board and that is how Bonomo lost most of his stack and I'm sure all of the players at his table are really happy to draw his table today as that bounty is going to be very quickly, you know, put out in the middle for any player to grab. He's got a big target on his back, yeah. doesn't he? Yaroshevsky, also of Ukraine, quite short, 12 big blinds for him. And let's not overlook the presence of the Bulgarian Mustafov here trying to make a run. So then let us look at the other feature table getting us over there in the app. Quickly, and there it is. The likes of Mahar Noida, Mosbach. There's Chidwick, Spencer. Break this one down. Yeah, well, Mosbach, of course, coming off of his second place finish in the Invitational, perhaps trying to string together another final table. And Chidwick, who, of course, you mentioned, maybe isn't having the greatest start to the series, but still an opportunity here. And Tim Adams, short, seven big blinds, also somebody that players are going to be looking to go bounty hunting after and Lewis Spencer somebody who you know we've seen a lot more of recently and yesterday he was able to actually get a really nice bluff through late in the night when I think players were just winding down so perhaps he's going to use some of that momentum in the day today. So Bonomo and Adams are the two shortest stacks in the field but quickly as we glance at the overall chip leaders remaining in the event we find two Frenchmen were in their backyard no None other than Jean-Noël Torel and Imad Derwish. Just look at them up there. 1.8 million and change. 1.7 million. The opportunity to absolutely lean on some short stacks and put the cuffs on the middling ones. 
And listen, if I had to dream up who I wanted to have a big stack in this tournament in this format <laughs> when it's bounty hunting time, it has to be these types of players who are willing to, of course, you know, call off in spots to go for the bounty. But it's so nice when we get those players that aren't afraid to put chips in the in the middle. And also some players who aren't afraid to make a statement. I actually snapped a picture of fifth in chips overall. Sammy Bolung, just get a look. <laughs> At this, I don't know if you can read what it says. I'll, I'll let you do it. It says, I don't need S-E-X. The river, you know what's me every day. I love that shirt. Sammy, out there in the field, fifth coming in on the day, 1.6 million in front of him. So then let us send it down into the arena where our two feature tables are making their way into their seats. And there's a look at the chip counts brought to you by G. Pardon me, brought to you by GG Poker, blinds of 10 and 25,000 with a 25K big blind Annie. 60K in orbit, the price of poker. Lewis Spencer has company at the top on the red side in Mario Mosbach, Rin Kenny. Same story with Mustafa nipping on his heels over in Bluesville. Cards should be in the air. There it is. Can I have some back? <laughs> Yaroshevsky creeping out from behind those sunglasses he's been wearing for the bulk of his appearances. I believe it. Oh, Ace Queen. <laughs> Jamming under the gun. 350. You know, and you'll find that at the end of the night, of course, there were players on shorter stacks, just trying to hang on, trying to make it to day two when the it's bounties will come into play. Granted, no, one, you know, they're not in the most favorable of positions one, one, one. because they're short, but you still want to be able to have a chance to on get that. some bounties way, today way. and... On the hunt for Yaroshevsky's pelt oh. is yeah, Mustafa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1.6 <.6 .6> <laughs> See the power of having one of those bigger stacks, shutting everyone else out. Sturm concedes, and Yaroshevsky will be happy to be ahead, of course, but he's going to have to see five and hold. I had seven deuce off street. <laughs> I have seven deuce never hold. <laughs> if I saw those hands, I might call. I think if you call, I have to call. <laughs> Eight, seven, four. Yes. Top yeah. pair for Mustafov <laughs> as the fight stays oh, fair in terms easy. of Yaroshevsky. Maintaining right the two overs in a club still. A small favorite dropping from three to two it's to just about 50-50. And there is the club Six. that he needed. Oh, how much? Six of clubs for a chop. Wouldn't be the first straight flush we've seen this series. Oh, oh my! Oh my God. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Igor wow. just devastated. Unbelievable. Whoa. I was about to use the pistol chop out. This is in the TV. <laughs> you know, we say it as a as a perfunctory <laughs> matter. On the board, <laughs> but I'm I'm not <laughs> just a formality. We don't expect it to show up. <laughs> oh, my. If this is any indication of how this day of bounty hunting is going to go, I feel like <laughs> we're in for an exciting <laughs> one. No kidding. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but Kenny has a startling resemblance to Mustafa just from a wide shot here. You know? Just similar vibes. Yeah, I mean, they got the color scheme memo. Another ace queen emerges in the hands of Ireland's Steve O'Dwyer in the face of a Kenny <laughs> open. Five seconds. What the fuck is this? Oh. <laughs> O'Dwyer. Coming with the flat, by the way, here. Bonomo going to take his stand. Uh, 
Obviously, once a bounty is available, everybody else is heavily incentivized to join the party. I believe that you're actually rooting for me, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a case where the other players at the table not involved in the hand are actually rooting for Bonomo to triple or quadruple Everyone up here because they want the bounty <laughs> to still be available for when they enter the pot. Queen 10-7 as everyone's on the side. Top pair. For Yaroshevsky, outkicked by O'Dwyer, of course. Owen. By Olin. Yaroshevsky understandably wants to get all in here. Oh. Sturm having checked the gut shot. Now, of course, O'Dwyer needs to choose between a flat or a re-raise? Thoughts? Well, I think with two bounties available oh. here, you do have to ISO. O'Dwyer has both Bonomo and Yaroshevsky covered. You know, talking about how the average EV of a bounty <laughs> pool is 83,000. <laughs> this is Steve O'Dwyer's shot to potentially <laughs> knock out two players. Yeah, Yaroshevsky and Bonomo both at risk now. As Sturm's hand will hit the bin. 965,000. One would presume. I mean, he only has 1.1. This is just about all of it if he wants to come along. Just the King of Hearts working with a gutty. Yeah, it's not so much for him about, you know, of course he understands he's going to be behind, but does he perhaps have enough equity against O'Dwyer's hand that it would make it worth it for him to potentially win the two bounties on the line immediately, but also O'Dwyer's as the third, having all of them covered. And these are considerations and calculations, Ali, that we don't normally have without this element of the bounty. Five seconds. Oh. So time banks used, but ultimately Sturm does find the fold, resisting the temptations of those two envelopes. Very difficult to find. Seven, seven. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> ten, ten. Bonomo in for the main. O'Dwyer and Yaroshevsky. Sorry, you said seven, seven. Competing first. It's gotta be for the way. side. And Three of hearts. O'Dwyer's oh. stranglehold Come on, one time. comes firmer. Six and he ends up with top Jeez, two, like guys. showering yes. both Bonomo and Yaroshevsky in one fell swoop here. Bonomo, of course, had vapors. Yaroshevsky's top pair, always a big dog. So not a particularly dramatic situation, but for O'Dwyer, a very dramatic infusion of chips as we flip over for a first look at our other featured table where Chidwick and Spencer, the Brits, squaring off, limp, blind versus blind, queen 10, four board, both with bottom pair, advantage Chidwick. In the face of the Spencer check. Yeah, this bet, of course, designed to just fold out over card equity that can't continue on this board texture taking control of the hand. Lewis making the call, checking once more. 
And once Chidwick gets called on this board texture, the four does feel quite vulnerable. Yeah, it feels like, of course, there are going to be some straight combos here. You know, some of the weaker ones might not lead and might be a check call. But also 10x is a big part of Spencer's range. You know, probably wants to mix between leading those himself on the flop versus check calling. Eight is a bad card for the four, I would imagine, just in case it wasn't already beat. It really slides in nicely to many of the combos that we're hunting straights, potentially pairing Spencer. But round the knuckles on the end, and Stevie will be happy to haul that one in. Chidwick, of course, an absolute legend of the Triton Super High Roller Series. $18.5 million in career Triton earnings. 30 caches, just one title, <laughs> however. And he is putting up a goose egg here in Monte Carlo. 0 for 5 thus far. Yeah, it's pretty hard, I feel like, to, you know, see Stevie not cash a single event in a series. You know, when we look over at his results in London, six caches, I believe, with four final tables and... Certainly, of course, the variance. And look at this. Noida with pocket jacks. Again, Santonius is open off of ace jack. This is exactly where he wants to be. Moving all in over the top of the min raise open from the fin. And that's a big chunk of this 410 back on request. But of course, Patrick must make the call especially with bounty considerations. And clearly yeah, I am, I am. not smitten yeah. with the sight of two black jacks whilst holding ace jack suited. Ace free flop and no diamond out there either. Not a great spot for Antonius. Jacks still best. All Noida needs to do is fade the ace, and he's done it. And in this spot, ace jack suited is not a light call by any means, but let's think about the flip side of perhaps having a shorter stack. You know, yes, are people going to be gunning for you because they're trying to hunt your bounty? Yes. But will you also perhaps be the recipient of some double ups and some triple ups against vastly <coughs> inferior hands because they're trying to target your bounty. So, you know, it can certainly work out in your favor. Of course, you do have to pick up some hands off the short stack. They have to hold, but you will get looked up a lot lighter than normal. Hence, you should be a big favorite oftentimes to that, win. That's actually interesting perspective because I feel as though the only angle I've ever taken on that situation is like, gosh, I got this target on my back. Everybody's gunning for me. I'm always going to have to fade five cards when I'm all in. But the opportunity to pick up chips that wouldn't otherwise have been in there giving you a spin and the triple and quadruple ups suddenly come into play. Bounce you right back up Grace, off of a short stack awesome. into a playable one and take the target off your back. Yeah, I'm not saying that I prefer to have a short stack right. in this format. Right. I'm just saying that there is a silver lining should we choose to see it that way. Noida putting newfound tokens to work with King Jack off suit out of the hijack. Now Patrick left with just 85,000 after that exchange with Noida. Those chips in the form of the Rays look awfully familiar to him. And Patrick suffered a bit of bad luck late last night as well, getting ace-king against Bryn Kenny's ace-queen and ended up chopping when he had the chance to eliminate Bryn. And now Bryn comes into the day with a top five chip stack as a result. Patrick flicking in 25 of his remaining 85 to look up at Queen Jack-Jack. This is all Noida. 
Hat trick. Check folding. Mahar giving him a look. Not the goods. I have two life cards. <laughs> <laughs> So suspicious if I try. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about Patrick having a little bit of bad luck. Maria, he is putting up a goose egg here in Monte Carlo as well. 0 for 4, including, of course, the 200k Invitational, the 125k Main, the 100k 8 Max. Things add up very quickly, and it can be challenging to get serious when you're dealing with regressive buy-ins as opposed to progressive buy-ins and right. you get yourself in a big hole and suddenly you're thinking, Ugh, it doesn't matter how well I do, this is going to be a, a red line item on my spreadsheet. And that's why it's important Hold to, of course, you know, not let that affect you when you come into a series where all of the big buy-ins are front-loaded. Hey, you know, on the bright side, Patrick saving money on expenses since he lives here. I'm pretty sure he's still staying at the hotel, believe it or not. <laughs> so <laughs> I got news for you. Not saving money on expenses, though it is worthy of note that those who do meet the minimum buy-in thresholds on the Triton Super High Roller Series are offered free accommodations, and those accommodations are always spectacular. In fact, on this particular stop, on the first evening, everyone had a room over at Hotel de Paris, which is right there in the heart of Monaco. Nice. Casino Square. Shopping district. Now, I really want to exercise restraint and not ask you what this granulated substance is that you're pouring into your bottled water, Maria, but I can't help myself, do tell. It's a part of my daily regimen, Ali. You know what electrolytes are, don't you? But this one, much better than what you get in Gatorade. Grace. There's a thousand milli milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. In fact, I have one for you if you want to counteract exactly what you're holding up right now, which is, you know, your fifth Orangina of the day. Well, first off, my French is loose at best, but my Orangina comes with 174 kilojoules of energy. I, I believe that means <laughs> calories, but doesn't it sound so much nicer? <laughs> when you say energy, this might actually be nutritious. I got glue sides well, in here, listen. okay? I mean, I've got uh, proteins. If you're not getting your nutrition from your orangina, surely you're getting it from your fill of chicken tenders and fries. Okay, first off, you've single-handedly put a dent in the tenders to the point that they weren't available to be ordered yesterday. <laughs> Own that. Finally, they're back in stock. They and didn't anticipate you. Than ever, Ollie. With your multi-tender <laughs> daily order. Chidwick, the party started at 55,000. Mosbach coming along. Noida closing the action with a call from the big blind as... The three amigos look up at ace eight six. Chidwick pipping Noida's sevens. Unclear what that side card is for Mosbach. And with the betting lead in spots like this, middle pair fairly dry texture, Chidwick gonna be more comfortable with the follow through? I think he will assume that oh, Mosbach seven. does have some ace X's here. But, as you mentioned, still some protection to be had. You know, some of the stronger ace -Xs, of course, Mosbach would likely be three-betting from these positions. But it would appear that Mosbach could have something like 10-9 suited here. I think that makes sense because pocket 10s off of that stack size might also be looking to get aggressive pre-flop. Does lay down, however. Chidrick able to haul one in. 40 big blinds plus. 
for Stevie. An unquestionable future Hall of Famer. Something you know a little something about, Maria. Feel like we don't touch on that often enough. You're a member of the Hall. Lewis Spencer, 48 bigs. Out in front of Chidwick. Timothy Adams and Patrick Antonius on life support. Their pulses faint and a salivating field surrounds them. And looking at the app, Polly, there's three players under five big blinds. So people are going to be ready to pounce. Timothy Adams, one of those players that I mentioned. As is Patrick, who with two queens, jams. Five seconds. Small blind with the chips to do it is going to seek to isolate Patrick. Spencer, 9-5 offsuit can never, ever. But he's asking for a count? Yeah, that's a little surprising. I mean, I definitely think there's some closer spots that <coughs> might not seem close initially, but I'm not thinking 9-5 falls into that range. You do see just how wide people are ISOing against the bounties, though. Yeah. I mean, it's just 50K in front of Patrick. Maher doesn't want to let Spencer take a pull at that envelope by flatting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was in trouble against that. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick's going to try to claw back. What do you think I that makes me feel bad. That much he lost. I had a very, I had a very, very bad orbit. hand. But. High cut? No. Maybe high cut. <laughs> I had 9-5 off. 10-10-8. Ten, ten, Gut shot for Noida. Williams facing a bit of a threat. Safe turn. Can Patrick find the triple and fade a 9? Yes, he can. Yeah. <laughs> Was in trouble against Queens. Never it's a very good hand throughout. draft for two big blinds. He's got a protein heavy meal to eat. Well, if you'll remember, he really <sighs> kind of pulled the salmon equivalent of what you did to the chicken tenders here <laughs> in Monaco when we were out in Vietnam. I mean, they ran Why lamb are you also the in Cyprus. Situation on me. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I haven't had that many tenders. I. But in, in Cyprus, Patrick went with the lamb. In Vietnam, I believe it was the double salmon. You know, got to keep fuel in the Ferrari, as I like to put it. Yeah, I mean, Patrick Antonius wouldn't be caught dead with chicken tenders, that's for sure. What if secretly he just, like, mashes Twinkies and we don't know it? You never know. 10-8 suited. Adams, one of those... Shorties that you were talking about earlier, sub five. Put in. in they go. <laughs> you see Nuita, just a mischievous look on his face on the button. King seven off suit. Actually not a bad hand against the five BB shove. Five. But <laughs> it's gonna let this one go. Leave it to the blinds. You have like a million, Stevie, now? Don't do it. Spencer Mulling was 7-5 off. Yeah, a little problematic to ISO when Stevie does have 
pretty big stack behind him. Spencer only having Stevie covered by a little bit. But of course, if you just call in this spot, you're really opening things up for Chidwick to ISO behind you. Cool. Stevie with pretty bad hand here, but knows that he's gonna be closing the action. So does he, because of that, want to just put it in the call? at least get a chance to hunt Adam's bounty. So, main pot complete, queen nine three, bottom pair for Steven Chidwick. Obviously, Adam's with plenty of hope in the form of a flush draw and a gut shot. Air for Spencer and a dry side. Heavily dissuasive toward him exhibiting any ambitions. Well, normally a dry side would dissuade players from betting when there's someone's tournament life up for elimination. But when ISOing could win you their bounty, then perhaps a hand like bottom pair here might elect to bet versus checking back in this spot. Chitwick does check back, and now Adams with the flush ices the main pot. <laughs> and Adams. Wouldn't that be great Looking if he just stood stoic. up and was like, yes? <laughs> 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 they both look up at him like, really, bro? Spencer wants a free look at a fourth club. Not expecting, of course, to show down seven high and win. Look at Stevie, just digs in in every single spot, doesn't he? Checking back. Neither of the players on the side improving. Yeah, now, you know, it's been checked through the flop and checked through the turn. There's no side pot. There's really nothing to be gained now in this situation for Spencer. Right about that. He agrees and checks it. Chidwick does the same. And Adams. Flush is very good. Can easily lay claim. With the third nuts. 370,000 big pickup. Kind of that stuff you were talking about. The doubles become more like triples, given the 7-5 came along. 10-3 also, hands that normally wouldn't be in there. Yeah, and so although, you know, on shorter stacks you lose more fold equity, should your hand hold or <coughs> are you able to find a board that cooperates, then you can easily build a stack here on day two and turn things around for yourself. Having a short stack in a mystery bounty for me would be akin to severing your femoral artery and then diving into shark infested waters off the coast of Cape Town. Expecting not to have a few fishies come over for a oh, sniff. Yeah. I mean look at this group. Bloodthirsty mm. animals. Like those movies where someone gets lost in the woods and then the Thank wolves you. start to come and take an interest in what you got going on. Antonius already having tripled King Jack off suit. Gets it in. Noida.
And we've seen Noida have the willingness, of course, to ISO the bounty and here. Decent holding to do so with, of course, you know, if somebody were to wake up with a hand behind him, a lot of the times they'll contain two overs. He'll still be in a decent spot. And by the way, this is not something lost on the remainder of the field. They know that the typical cutoff jamming range for Noida is going to be widened considerably. Yeah, widened, but still within reason because Noida does have about 27 big blinds, which is, is still a decent stack, you know, not that far away from average stack in the whole tournament. Oh. But Chidwick going to go for it. Looking that for the is. tuple a limb with a hand that is actually playing quite well up against the two other hands of his opponent. Yeah, before you go scratching your temple, if you're just joining us, this is the kind of stuff we alluded to in the pregame show that you'll see on your screen that you wouldn't otherwise were it not for the fact that we're playing a mystery bounty. Chidwick's 8-9 suited. Looking for two envelopes as both Antonius and Noida now at risk. 1-5 into the muck already. The king-queen six board giving Antonius top pair. Comfortable lead for the time being. Oh. And no sooner do I say the time being than the time changes. Upon the arrival of Adusa Hearts, Chidwick now a knock at the back door. Can he break hearts with a heart? No. Seven clubs on the end. Six what? Actually, it's just one club. It's the seven of clubs, but you know what I was getting at. Antonius going to triple again. And just a spot that Chidwick deemed good enough did not pay off here. Not to be overlooked, though, Noida does haul in the side. Those fives holding on against the nine high as that was a very poor outcome for Stephen Chidwick. Now we'll be sub 10 bigs. Thirty nine came into the day. First two casualties happened all at once. Justin Bonomo, Igor Yarshevsky. Paulius Vaitia Kunas. I know I'm butchering that and I'm <laughs> upset about it. Of Lithuania, 37th. Some Alex Boyka. Lithuanians are upset about it. <laughs> yeah. 36 for him. The cyborg, Eric Seidel, out in 35th. Chidwick now, second shortest stack in the room overall. Punat Punsri of Thailand, shortest. 34. <laughs> Remaining only 27 fair, fair. will be paid. Five seconds. Away with that. Five seconds. Noida not taking many hands off. Finds an open ace jack offsuit and Mosbach in the small blind with King Queen. 25 big blinds. Seven handed here. You know how like trumpet players do the circular breathing thing where they keep the trumpet by their mouth, play, never actually stop to take a breath? Something similar could be happening with Patrick where it's just a continuous chew. I believe in the bovine realm <laughs> that cows will bring it back up, you know, like kind of swallow it, save it for later, run it back, chew it up some more, send it back down. Unclear. But it is remarkable, the frequency with which we see the man mid-mastication. You know, the harder you work up top, the less you have to work on the bottom. 600, 600. I'm not really sure what that means. Perfect. The Maria. more you chew, the more times you chew, the less okay. your digestive system has to work to process your okay, food. Okay, got it. Appreciate the clarification there. I think it wasn't just me. Oh, Noida. 
looking for some clarification of his own here. Yeah, but this is an interesting spot for Mosbach now because he has a chance to win Antonius's bounty, having him covered, knowing that Noida again is going to be ISOing fairly wide against Antonius's shove, and Mosbach really wondering how well this King Queen performs, not only against Antonius's shove, of course, but also the types of hand Noida is going to be willing to ISO with. You know, we saw Noida ISOing with a hand like five, so perhaps does Mosbach feel like he has two overs, which in this case, very live against Antonius, slight underdog to Noida's holding. And this is where the value of the bounty is sometimes worth more than you preserving your tournament life in this situation. <coughs> you know you're going to have to run it against a player that has you covered, but that alluring 83,000 bounty EV. You know, it's unclear how much work Mosbach has done specifically in the mystery bounty format, but he was front and center for the Chidwick Jam with 8-9 suited moments ago, and that obviously lends to some thought processes with this king queen and i would absolutely be paying attention to what people like chidwick and brewer are doing in these spots because most of these people i think probably haven't worked too much on what the adjusted calling ranges would be yeah and they're big adjustments as we do see mosbach ultimately fold still wearing a sense of uncertainty on his face one million plus in the middle Noida and Antonius collide once more. Advantage Patrick until an ace shows up on the board. <coughs> Patrick might be chewing a little bit harder than he was moments ago as he hunts a snowman. Unavailable on the turn. Already tripling twice. Can he find the rabbit in the hat? No, a six on the end. And we're going to need a to-go bag for the rest of that meal. Antonius out of here as Noida <laughs> hauls in his chips. I thought you were going to say a sick bag. Nah, I wasn't that bad. Get up in the water. That was standard. <laughs> sick bag maybe when that gut shot straight flush for the chop came up. Yaroshevsky. One outed. What's the worst beat you've ever taken? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know it. Hmm? Come on, Ali. What kind of question is that? Of course, every single person has remembered the worst beat they've ever taken. People remember just when they lose a coin flip. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go ahead and collect your thoughts about it in between hands. Inquiring minds want to know. Bryn Kenny, meanwhile, pocket fours under the gun. A standard open min. Leon Sturm flats the small. Haxton. Bowing out, so it'll be heads up. Stern, part of the new generation of German talent. Jack 7 4. Stern with some problems here. Top pair against bottom set. 180 in the middle. He checks it over. Obviously, some backdoor prospects. And this is a pretty nice setup for Kenny because when you have bottom set, you're blocking top pair and Sturm calling from the small blind will certainly have a lot of top pair combos. You know, hands like ace jack are just gonna call from the small blind against an under the gun opening range. King jack, queen jack suited, jack 10 suited. All those hands are going to be in there, and some middling pairs are also going to be in there as well that will pretty easily check call the flop. Now the turn could potentially save Sturm some money, of course. I was hoping to turn a spade or some straight possibilities for additional equity. But this is, of course, going to be a card that favors Bryn's range from opening yep. under the gun, one that you would expect him to fire on whether he has it or not, but you see he has 
a much stronger hand than even top pair. And Brynn, of course, has that very aggressive reputation add to that the mystery bounty factor. And it could be real tough to nail him down on a hand. As Sturm's check call of 85,000 on the flop, a second check, now he faces 245,000 into 350. And Bren setting himself up with a nice river jam <laughs> spot. <laughs> Couple of draws possible, of course. 10-9 suited, 9-8 suited. All of those hands going to be in here. But Sturm unwilling to fold the jack again just because of the perceived notion that Bryn's going to be firing on an ace turn. Running aces now. That which greets Sturm and is a little problematic because it makes that jack eight slightly more attractive, doesn't it? Yeah, especially if Sturm called the turn feeling like that's a natural barrel card for Kenny. Then still not giving Kenny credit for having a hand like trips here or a full house. Five seconds. All in. Player all in. There's the jam from Bryn. Sturm also doesn't block some natural potential bluffs that Bryn could have, of course. You know, some of those King 10 of diamonds, King Queen of diamonds. Somehow we're stepping away from that spot there for Leon Sturm, which of course is with reason. As Maharnoida again hunts envelopes, suited one gapper. He jams over the top of a Mosbach open. Mario laid down the King Queen, but Jacks aren't going to be going anywhere. 1.2 million in the middle, and the 8 6 turns into bottom pair. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jack safe for the time being. Nervous smile being worn on Mario's face. The turn will assuage those emotions, as will the river. So Noida caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Five, That'll be quite all right with Mario Mosbach. There go. Desperate to know what happened here in this pot. Sturm still in the tank. And on the topic of desperate, that's exactly how this jam from a guy like Bryn Kenny, who's gone three streets, might look to a hand like Jack-8, unblocking the diamonds, unblocking some of the smaller straights. None of the draws get there. Yeah, as I mentioned, some natural bluffs will contain hands like King-10 of diamonds, King-Queen of diamonds, those that turn combo draws and unwilling to relinquish on the river. Quite willing to relinquish, though, is Sturm. Correctly, mind you, as Kenny with the fours full. Doesn't get that third street of value, but he won't be complaining. Nice pickup for him. Ali, do you remember what were the number of most bounties acquired in London by a single person? Wasn't there some staggering, like, 10 to 13 bounties, something like that? I, I want to say. By the way, you don't get off the hook on the worst beat you ever took question. Let's hear oh, it. Oh, I mean, if you want me to be triggered at the start of the day and be in the booth with me for the next four hours, sure, I'll tell you the story. Yes, the good news is you're over it. <laughs> well, there were 16, 15 players left in a big WSOP uh -huh. prelim. I want to say up top was somewhere in the neighborhood of 700, 800K. I had 35 bigs effective and got it all in with queens against jacks. A jack was actually flipped up and dead pre-flop. Ooh, exposed card? Yes. Oh, that makes it extra spicy. And then the person binked the one-outer on the river. Five seconds. For, you know, what was probably 
a little over, you know, a small six figures in equity at that time. Did you just fire. quietly collect your belongings and leave, or did you have a little demonstrative moment? Some of us have self-restraint, Ollie, and we don't really partake in eating the cards. <coughs> yeah, I've heard about table. this self-restraint concept. Uh, I, I don't actually exercise <laughs> it myself. Why bottle up that negative energy when you can just poison your compatriots with it and then move on about your day? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it was just one of those where you're kind of in shock and you don't even know how to feel. You're very numb. And it's just a very awkward, silent walk. And, and it's even worse when everybody else at the table is audibly more shocked than you. You know, when the jack rolled off, they were yeah. like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm here for it, guys. I, I know. Meanwhile, David Jan targeting an open from Fahreddin Mustafov, part of the Bulgarian delegation that we were talking about earlier, the ranks of Donchev, Kulev, and of course, yesterday's 30K winner, Dimov. Top four all time from Bulgaria, by the way, making their mark here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. And Mustafov is actually thinking about it here. He knows best case scenario. He's got to see five against two overs. Worst case, he's crushed by a bigger pair. Nevertheless, he does make the call. And obviously, we'd much prefer to be up against the two overs. We will play a 1.6 million chip pot. And you can see David... Pursing his lips here, <laughs> I don't think he loved it. No, I mean, it's just uncomfortable to be having to get it all in for this many bigs on a flip, but you know that people are going to be targeting those bounties. This is how really big stacks get amassed early on in day two. Eight, nine, ten, monotone flop, spadeless are both holdings. Jan, looking for the jack, queen, or ace. Threes still in the lead. What the frick is this? They stay that way on the turn. Now a spade for the chop. Are we going to just see the seven mm. of spades roll off here? Mm. No. We're going to see a board pairing six of hearts. And with that, we're going to see David Yan collect his things and head right on out of the room. I definitely the ace Mustafov, a big pickup there. Chip leader of the table with 76 bigs. Don't hate it too early. Yeah, but I don't like to gamble so much. I don't know what to do. it's okay. It's good. For those players that are unsure of what to do in these spots, listen. Becoming chip leader. Yeah. If you have a covering <laughs> stack and you're on the fence, click call. Seems to be working out so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm you know, some events, we talk about the shorties and their resilience. It seems like they're all doubling up. Not here. Bar Patrick with a couple of doubles. Triples, rather. <laughs> like fucking bullshit. <laughs> On Down you. to 31 <laughs> players are ready from the 39 that came back for day two. Five seconds. Oh. And let's not forget, you know, there's still 27 players that are going to finish in the money here. So yeah, the money it. bubble is relevant, not as much mm -hmm. as the envelope EV in terms of what the min cash is versus what the EV of an envelope is. Just 33000 for 27th through 25th. It's not until you get all the way up to 8th place that you outdo the EV of an envelope. So you start to understand why it is that the envelopes are far more attractive than making it into the money. And players are taking chances. Leon Sturm on this occasion. The man taking a chance, opening a pot with a seven suited from the cutoff. Haxton on the button with a couple of nines, deliberating. Have two 
two big stacks in the big blinds and the small blinds as he looked over to check out what they're working with. But he's working with quite a big hand on the button against the cutoff open. Five seconds. All in. They will in. There's the jam. Counter. 775. Are you on two bounces? Yeah. First and end of the day. No, you can just see, even for second someone like Sturm, who is very well known for being quite well studied, all these calculations making his brain hurt a little bit. Okay. Normally a seven of spades for 26 bigs would, of course, be a fold. But again, factoring in that bounty EV. Along with Haxton's shoving range, because you would assume that Haxton will also have some hands that he can just call with here on the button versus shove off of that stack. Very dramatic release of the A7 there. I hadn't seen thumbs digging into eye sockets like that since that episode of Game of Thrones. By the way, Sturm really went after the corneas. We don't condone self-harm here on the Triton Super High Roller Series. Take it easy, Leon. I also don't want to gamble. <laughs> Sometimes we ask us. No decision is worth temporarily blinding yourself. Let alone permanently. Right. Morton Klein has joined the party. There he is. Norwegian legend. Just north of one million in front of him. All stacks. Plenty playable here. You stop off. The boss, though, after showering David Jan, 73 bigs. At present, lines 15 and 30,000. That look brought to you by betacr.eu. I'm looking in the app, Maria, and you talked about there being only 31 left when David Jan was eliminated. Mateos has just been eliminated as well, leaving us at 29, two spots away from the money. Mahanoida also eliminated. Wow. He was the victim of a double elimination. Perhaps the reason why Mosbach is all the way up on top of the chip counts with 2.5 million. Yeah, it was pocket sixes for Mosbach, sevens for Noida, nines for Chidwick. Wow. It was all in, all in, over the top. Chidwick, Mosbach, and then Noida called it off. Board came deuce three, five, and then the four ball in the corner pocket for the pocket sixes. Mosbach with the straight. Noida sevens were drawing live to a six to make the bigger straight, but in the end, a king rolled off. And what a pull there for Mosbach. Absolutely, the smallest of three pocket pairs as the covering stack, knocking two players out. Now then, Morton says hello with a couple of nines. Off of interested from the small blind with the suited connector. And O'Dwyer, a seven in the big. Five seconds. Oh. Just one customer in the form of the big stack, suited and connected. Mustafov speculates. 
And flops himself a flush draw up against middle set. Fasten seatbelt sign has been illuminated. Going fairly small here with middle set. Trying to keep in a lot of the speculative hands, perhaps some of the queen jack, jack 10 suited, spade, diamond variety sticking around. Wow, just quads right off the top. Relieving any concerns about that draw heavy texture for Morton Klein. Has that very standard 50K barrel. Got called, bringing the pot up to 3.30, Mustafa. Action on him. And in a spot where he actually oh. should have more 9Xs and than he the, the gun opener, <laughs> just seeing him lead right into the preflop aggressor. You know, if Klein doesn't have a King X here, doesn't have quads, then he's going to release a lot of the ace highs. And this Klein. Is, this you know. reminds me of back in the day, Maria, when one would be at a pool party, cell phone in pocket, <laughs> dive out over the top of the water surface before realizing that your cell phone was still in your pocket. That's the situation Mustafov is in here as this 70K is going to get zapped. Yeah, and you're going to need a lot more than a bowl of rice to dry off from this potential mm -hmm. showering. <laughs> that actually works, by the way. Tried and true. Not every time. But I know what you're saying. And Shout out, by the way, anybody who's actually waterlogged their, their cell phone. It's a terrible feeling. This is before, you know, they were all waterproof and whatnot. And really interesting run out with the backdoor diamonds coming off. And Mustafa perhaps smells a little something funny in the water. Does shut down. Yes. Even if Mustafa nice. were looking to rep a nine, here, that's huh? pretty poor river. Yeah, better than pocket, pocket kings. Pocket nine? <laughs> Show one time. I smell something very, very big. Yeah, it was something. Yeah. It, was, it was pocket nine. Yes. <laughs> Fahredin, like a bloodhound out there. Didn't stop him from barreling the turn, of course, but maybe that scent wasn't evident until the call <laughs> on the turn. Yeah. Mustafa, by the way, gets around. Oh. Seen him hunting. How could you smell that from? <laughs> Titles yeah. and urn out at the Merit crazy. Poker Room <laughs> okay. in North Cyprus. <laughs> wow. Fairly close to his stomping grounds. The is that you have the pocket kings. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> If you fold pocket kings there, it will be crazy. <laughs> no, I, if you like have pocket kings, I not fold. No, I, I, no, 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 of course <laughs> not, I understand. Nice to see the lads getting a laugh here. Oh, wait a minute. Looks like we're paused at an outer table here where Paul Pua, the boss, Triton co-founder. He's going to be giving Punat Punsri a spin. And because we are close to the money, looks like they're holding their cards face down. <laughs> waiting for the tournament director to come over. Mm -hmm. Paul just jammed the small blind. Punsri calling all in. 
And shows ace five. Boss with pocket eights. Paul says he's got a bad feeling about it. Might be feeling quite a bit better on a King King Deuce board. Oh! Spidey's senses were tingling with merit, it would appear, as the ace on the turn, giving Punsri aces and kings. And a much needed capital infusion. Updates being delivered to Jan Zarens at one of our other tables by Punat. Still two away from the money with a couple of sub-10 BB stacks out there in the hands of Sam Greenwood and Julian Sitvon. <clears throat> Kenny, ace 10 suited. Oh. Dwyer pauses momentarily with the 4 5 before bidding. Big blind, but won't defend. When you're not the covering stack, obviously, you're very disincentivized to be taking a stand. Can't pick up that bounty. A little right quieter now. Pace of play a little slower. As now there's sure definitely there's some here. incentive for the shorter stacks to hang on. And for them, the utility of their stack is obviously not going to be useful in the sense of knocking somebody out and collecting bounties. But to be able to squeeze into the money get them in cash, get a little bit of rebate on their buy-in. Seems like an attractive proposition as you expect to see Bryn Kenny step things up during this phase of the tournament. That's exactly what he's doing with this 4-5 off. Stuff off. Covering stack. Will flat the ace-7 suited. Further participants, so it'll be heads up between the two biggest stacks at this table. You got Triton promo coming up too. Ten nine five. Bottom pair for Kenny as he outflops the A seven. And after that, we'll be the lucky two hands in the group. About forty five thousand. Little sprinkler, quarter pot. Yeah, a little dangerous for Kenny, of course, because this type of board texture can, of course, lend itself to the pre-flop collar. But still trying to just dissuade continuation from these types of hands that don't have much backdoor equity. Pretty weak in terms of showdown value. Easy release for Mustafov.
Well, from an easy release to an absolutely easy decision. Type exclamation point giveaway or scan the QR code on your screen right now. And if you haven't already, get in on our exclusive Triton merch giveaway. And this isn't one of these some slightly irregular or like previous season, couldn't sell through at the outlet. We're going to give you the newest and nicest swag that we've got. Unveiled the TPS logo in London. High quality sweet threads to rock in your local poker room or anywhere that which we offer typically at a pretty penny in the triton store can be yours free of charge get involved now you know holly i'm not eligible for the giveaway but i'll give you five dollars for that scarf that you managed to you have two of them right this is an offer up Maria, this isn't Facebook Marketplace, okay? Five dollars. What are you gonna do with two of them? Do I look like I just brought you it actually a bottle upsets of water? me that I even have $5? to pay you for it. You would just think for as long as we've been friends that at this point you've missed a lot of birthdays, mm -hmm. you know, haven't gotten any presents or even a card from you on Christmas. If you think, you're, uh, by the way, I know uh, I've got a huge stockpile of cards that you sent me on my birthday and Christmas throughout the years, Maria, so my apologies for lacking reciprocity in that respect. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have any of those sorts of things from you as it looks like a little greeting card is being given to Lucky Chewy here by Jan Zarenz at one of our outer tables. Cards have not yet been revealed. Preflop action was an open to 60K. Chewy three bet to 165. Arens then jammed and got called. I don't know if I have it in me, but I'll consider it for future. Revelations have not been made as yet. Pretty casual exchange for what? is a decent sized pot. That it is. Can't quite make out the exchange between Jans and Chewy. It isn't the chatter that we're looking to make out, more so the holdings. Usually in these spots, because you have to keep the cards face down for a while. You know, you already tell your neighbor what you have. Just to alleviate a little bit of that tension. Nines against ace, king. That's what we're looking at. The nines belong to Arens, who has the covering stack. Chewy can't improve on the turn nor on the river. So the rest of his stack is going to get passed along to the right, and he will not join those in the money here in the mystery bounty. That pot ought to put Jan Zarens near the top of the chip counts. Probably like at least one other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we must be fighting different tournaments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? This is this is very odd. Yeah. Then it didn't that it like didn't get announced, and now what's going on? So we are down to 28 players upon the elimination of Chewy. Action being held up by tournament staff here at the tables that have maybe gotten a little ahead of the others as this is the stone money bubble with 27 paid. I 
I don't know. I mean, we. Floor. We. We. Okay. I Catch guess, up. So I guess, I guess we play one hand. We're playing this hand. Yeah. Yeah. Then why would we? So, we have. Oh, so we're playing this and one more yep. b before we get a new play. Why is that? Two hands, then we're going to break new Sonny play. coming over to clarify things for Ike Haxton and company. Yes. Dealer Joe doing the same for JNT, who of course was the chip leader coming in on the day. Five seconds. Quickly peeking at the leaderboard. He is no longer at the top. In fact, has slipped all the way down to ninth. Average stack is 1.4 million. Good for 28 bigs. There's a look at the chip leader, wondering how wide they could potentially be opening the button in this spot. Adams, out of the small blind, will limp the suited combo. Spencer, 5-6 off suit. Doesn't feel like one with which to wag his finger. So those fingers come together to wrap the rail and check back. As we head to a flop. Limped, blind versus blind, 90K in the middle. And how about that for a board if your name's Tim Adams? Pair of eights and the flush draw up against the two-way straight draw for Spencer. Check. Adams opting to check. And that might open the door in position for Spencer to just barrel the six high because there's no real showdown value. It would be nice if it were able to just take down the pot right then and there, but does opt to check back. Sometimes that check back might indicate to Adams that there's a little bit of showdown value in Spencer's hand, even though we see that with this combo, he doesn't. Faces a second check, does Lewis now, and absent that aforementioned check. showdown value. He checks back once more, and somehow he's the man that gets there on the river, courtesy of this four spades where he's made the eight high straight. So far, Adams checking over twice. Could still get some calls from worse. You wonder how often the seven X checks back twice. You know, obviously Jack X's would have bet already so seeking a little bit of value and is not going to love getting raised here after he had such a big flop. Yeah, this 75K is not going to make its way back to Camp Adams. Look at Tim, brow furrowed here, a bit confused as to why it is that Lewis is using a time bank. As played, he doesn't suspect that it's a spot that would present any difficulties to Spencer, and as we can see, this stall is not the product of difficulty, but rather an easy decision to raise. Yeah, because this was a limped pot free, of course, Spencer could have um, rivered quite a bit of two pair combos. Just doesn't really make sense that, of course, a jack X or some flopped two pairs would play this way as a check on the flop and a check on the turn with those draws possible. So it really does look like that river card changed Spencer's hand meaningfully. Of course, the 6-5 gets there. Perhaps a hand like 7-4 
in this spot where Spencer might check back. Bottom pair from the flop twice. Not a lot of bluffs to be found, especially when Adams had the flush draw. Releases in the face of the 235K. I should look over at Lewis. Curious as to what exactly was afoot. Those are the ones that I feel like the guys always go back into the stream and hunt on the delay. See what's what. Tim Adams is the type of player that doesn't need the reinforcement to know he made the right decision. He's, he's just going to erase that one from his mind. I don't know if it's a need-based thing. Perhaps it's just want. Lord knows I've built an entire life out of surrounding myself with things I want but don't necessarily need. <laughs> that you have, you are a international man of luxury. Trouble is, I don't think I'm nearly rolled enough to live the life that I'm living. <laughs> Creditors haven't come knocking yet, though. You're kind of taking a page out of JRB's book of broke but living like a millionaire. I don't know about all that broke noise. Okay, Everybody you're relax. Right, you're right. But, uh, you know. Confirmed, not busto. I'm guys. not Tinder swindling just yet. <laughs> now, uh, involvement from another one of our Triton first timers. Oh. Tompere Ragnar, ace jack in the high jack, and he has run in to Cowboys for Lewis Spencer. This might be trouble for Ragnar. Not incredibly deep stack to start the hand. Spencer has him covered. All in. And now he's got him searching for the rest of his stack if he wants to fight on with the ace jack. JNT expressing some curiosities out of the big with jack 10. Does have both players covered. It is a little tempting again. Average bounty worth 83,000, but does make the fold. Now what does Ragnar want to do with this hand? On the stone bubble here, would have to call off for his tournament life. Five seconds. Do you want to correct something I said earlier about him being a Triton first timer? He did play one lone event in London, failed to cash 25k PLO. That one. So this is actually his second festival, technically, and second event. Yeah, perhaps here for the last few events, which are all going to be PLO. Maybe not so much of a two card player, but waiting for the four card variety. Does, does get away. Yeah. Nicely done by the Estonian. Obviously, the ace could have left him in the lead. No. Some match work. We're rendered on the flop. Spencer surging a bit here. Still 28 players and we are going to be breaking a table that will take a few minutes and we'll bring you back here to the desk as the mystery bounty rolls on ali and maria glad to have you with us from wherever you are give us a like give us a subscribe if that place happens to be on youtube we did breach the 200,000 subscriber barrier so our thanks to those of you who helped make that happen obviously hope that you're continuing to enjoy all that we have on offer here the enjoyment for these remaining 28 will come more so courtesy of the next bust out, of course, as that will put everybody into the money. Payouts, the min cash, going to be 33000 Steady Eddie for three slots. 
Make that four slots as 27th through 24th will be 33K before we get a tiny jump up to 23rd. But the thing to take note of as I scroll up, Maria, you touched on the EV of an envelope. Not until we get to eighth place money do you breach that 83K. And hence, some of the things that we've seen out there early on day two of this mystery bounty. Yeah, the preservation of your stack and your tournament life a little less important if you have somebody covered and have a shot of that at that 83k EV, of course. And so we see that there's plenty of bounty hunting stacks in the mix. You know, a lot of players here with over 50 big blinds, very comfortable at this stage. You want to talk about comfort. How about Austria's Mario Mosbach, former professional footballer, has looked every bit a pro since his arrival here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Uh, at the top, 2.8 million for Mosbach, and we dive in to his Triton track record here in Monte Carlo, he finished runner up in the 200K. It is all downstream paddling from there. $2.7 million he earned for that effort. Obviously, a little bit of that has been lost courtesy of an 0 for 4 stretch from the 125K and the 100K. Here he is though, mystery bounty on the precipice of a cash and some bounty envelopes gonna be left to open for Mario. Bit impressive. Yeah, I mean, Mario, of course, the lucky beneficiary of a multi-way pot where he had the worst of it with the mm. sixes up against sevens and nines, but certainly just part of the variance of the game. But Mario has shown a lot of composure throughout, especially at the final table. You know, sometimes you have the chip lead. There's a lot of expectation and pressure on your shoulders to close, but he was able to manage that pressure quite well. So about 30 seconds before this table draw is complete. You can get a peek at it here inside the app. Our featured tables being filled out, seven players at each right now. Uh, not sure if we're going to dive into the app or not. In any case, you do find Imad Derwish. The Frenchman came in second on the day. He is now third overall. And Jan Zarens is second behind Mosbach. The Dutch delegation not bringing its usual cast of characters here to Monaco. So then... Onwards we march. Brought to you by Poker Steak. Look at these chip counts for Mustafa's new crew that he presides over. We'll include the likes of Malaysia's Michael Soiza. There is Soiza. Jack 10, not going to be good enough. Stone money bubble procedures on display. Bryn with a big stack to his direct left. Just going to limp in with this weaker 8-6 offsuit. That he is. Stop off. Not going to allow it. 45k bet. <laughs> What's going on over here? Looks like might that be Lun Lun's chips forward? Perhaps of less interest. And that which goes on at our other outer table. Encircling what looks to be Henrik Hecklin's stack pushed forward. In 
indeed a jam of 290,000, we're being told. Yeah, tied for the shortest stack in the room. Greenwood also has a very similar stack, so looks like it's time to go for Hecklin with whatever hand he's dealt. Yashislav Buldigin is the customer here. Hanging tight here while hands elsewhere in the room complete. Function of us being on the stone money bubble. I wish Sammy Balung there in the green t-shirt would have wore the shirt that he had on yesterday. I know, right? I think that's good for a back-to-back. -back. I mean, I laughed out loud when I saw him walk up in that thing. Showing some of his personality. Sammy is someone that I played cash games with in L.A. And someone who always has fun with the game. Definitely likes to play a lot of hands. And this hand is king 10 for Henrik Hecklin and deuce three suited for Buldigan. And the way he rolled it over made it seem like he might not have known what he had. Could it have been the dark call on the hunt for a bounty? Flop, queen, ten, three, bottom pair. Hecklin, in good shape. Turn keeps things that way. The river. Making things official. Bounty cake. Bounty cake. So what? So what? It's you who gave me bounty cake. It's your own fault. If you don't give me bounty cake, I'm out. Is he saying bounty cake? I'm not sure if I heard him correctly. And you know the short stacks again because of the format, gonna get more spins than usual. You know, sometimes during the bubble period we'll see some all-ins from the shorties, but nobody calling here will definitely be a different story. King Jack offsuit then for Michael Soiza. Looks to be suited in clubs, actually. Oh, yeah. Don't tell me it's that time where I need to go down to the lens crafters and grab a pair. I'm I've got fantastic vision. I was going to say, I'm actually surprised that you don't. Why are you surprised? What, what, what's already? so surprising about that, Maria? Well, I don't know. Just, Just given saying. my age? Is that what you mean? Perhaps. You know, I'm, I'm, like a freaking I'm not one Osprey. to throw stones when I live in a glass house, though, so okay. we don't need to go down that road. Yeah. Stay in your lane, Magoo, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Upstairs to 60,000, Kenny coming along with the suited one gapper from the button, so Soiza picks up one straggler for the ride. But does not pick up any improvement on a queen six five monotone texture where Kenny's got bottom pair. Kenny can't love his prospects, of course, considering he doesn't have any spades. But Soiza deciding to check over to Kenny. Kenny doesn't know the meaning of pot control. Kenny might not know the meaning of self-control, Maria, let alone <laughs> pot control. I'm teasing, of course, but, you know, that's a guy after my own heart in terms of 
living the life. The difference is I think I have a couple of thousand dollars in career tournament earnings on my Hendon, while Kenny has more than anyone else on Earth. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of bookending it, Yeah. he and I. For a while, you know, I heard Kenny had quite the crew that would travel with him, a barber Stop. being one of them. Yeah. A barber? Yeah. Yeah, but he's shaving his head, isn't he? Like, it, you know, I mean, But it doesn't look that clean without the assist of a professional. Okay, but that's something that can be up to anyway. Out to the outer table, Vyacheslav Buldigan looks like he's gotten himself involved in one. What does he have up his sleeve? A couple of sixes. That's a hand that performed well for Mario Mosbach. Up against two tens, though, for Punsri. Well behind. His queen four board keeps things that way. Punsri looking to hang on and keep the bubble intact. Board pairs on the turn, and the six. All that needs to be faded. And faded in style as Punsri makes tens full on the river. Getting a little bit of a spin here at this table. First a double up from Paul. Now another one from Bulldogan. Indeed. Love that staircase, by the way. Remember that club in the Jim Carrey movie, The Mask? Was that like a Copacabana <laughs> kind of thing? That's what I, you know, I feel like there should be some metal palm trees somewhere <laughs> in here. You know, the white Mambo King sort of tuxedo servers. I don't really think that fits with the overall aesthetic of the venue that we're in, though. A little cheesy. We're keeping it classy. Yeah. You're not wrong. Maybe a taffeta gown Marilyn Monroe style, though, with the elbow gloves. Love that. Performer, you know? Mm-hmm. When's the last time you said taffeta? Have you I'm ever? Probably more likely to have said taffy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the last time I said it, to be honest with you. You know that little craft table of sweets that they have right behind us here at the desk. Did they bring that out specifically for you? Because I feel like that's what you've been missing. It's a little pep in your step. <coughs> I'm missing something? A, a little pep in my step, you say? When we work together, Ali, which, you know, we've done on many occasions, namely at the PokerGo studio, you know there's that table with uh, all of yes. the sweets. Now it becomes clear what you're referring to. As Kenny refers to a couple of nines and comes with a call in the face of a sturm open with King Jack, what Maria's alluding to is the fact that my dentist is kept very busy, courtesy of a truly baffling amount of sugar that I'm able to ingest throughout the course of the day. Gotta keep the energy up here in the booth. And you're gonna have to keep the flop a little higher than that for sturm feel good about things. Over pair for Kenny. Pretty good board for Kenny to shut out some of these over cards. Kenny able to really continue chipping up here throughout this period. This is why it's nice to have a big stack as we get to the money where ICM starts to come into play. You're able to play more hands. You're able to pressurize some of the shorter stacks and even play post against bigger stacks. Go ahead. 
Can I go grab one of these sweets you're talking about right now? Feels like pace of play would allow for it. I mean, truth be told, I was a bit MIA there as I looked over just to kind of survey what's on offer. Oh, they have way more options today than they've had in the last few days. I was going to say we could Rochambeau for it. I, we need a plate, though, because... Well, hang on. I do think that, you know, we got one of those old-school rotary phone <laughs> sort of cables on my headset. Are you going to be able to headset. reach from here? No, I don't know. I, I think I can, though. I'm kind of walking away from the desk now. No, I don't think you'll be able to reach without pulling out the cord. I, I'm going to try. I'll, I'm going to go for it. This is like when you see someone who has their dog chained up in the front yard, but they know exactly how much chain to offer so they don't get to the sidewalk. Pedestrians remain safe. The dessert table under real threat, though. I feel like a kid on a leash right now. <laughs> That's weird when they do the kid on a leash thing, by the way. Not so weird. This Kenny Flat as pocket nines has become somewhat of a theme for him here. Flatting once more, this time against an O'Dwyer open after taking that pot against Sturm. King 5-4 board. And Kenny? Able to get a few favorable flops in the last couple of hands he's gotten involved in. This one not looking too bad for pocket nines. Three certainly can pursue some backdoor uh, possibilities, especially the with the three of hearts. Yes. And, and especially if you side. think that your opponent yes. has a really high C betting frequency you know, which it does appear Kenny has, then you might want to start calling in position with some of these hands. The thing is, the water is so murky from this point forward. Obviously, a straight draw or a set would be that which we would seek. And if we're going to continue, perhaps this is the manner in which to do so. Oh, Dwyer. Shooting it up to 160,000 here. A lot of those Broadway combos containing a king could be very credibly represented by Steve as a flatter on the button. Yeah, especially if you expect, again, Kenny to be C betting quite often. A lot of those ace highs, you know, without the presence of some straight possibilities to the wheel are certainly going to be shed here against this raise. Kenny, though, guys on the stickier side, mm. peels. Faces a second over card to his nines. This is not what O'Dwyer had in mind as he's breathed life into this one. 525 yeah. in the middle. Problematic to not turn additional equity for O'Dwyer's hand, but we'll see if he does still want to continue. Kenny, of course, known to be a sticky customer. Checking and getting the check back from O'Dwyer was Kenny. And where is that going to leave him after a jack rolls off third over card to the nines? And all of that stuff that feels like it's supposed to be hitting O'Dwyer's range sitting out there. And Kenny coming with the block bet. 1.5x min. And sometimes, of course, this type of sizing includes some light value, but also sometimes certainly going to be inducing with more of the nutted hands as well. You 
you know, and O'Dwyer wondering what to make of it. Is it the thin value? Is it perhaps that Kenny has backdoored himself into perhaps a straight, you know, some sets? Forty five K on the river out of Kenny O'Dwyer paying off and Bryn with that weird hybrid sort of hyper block accidental value bet making some money with the nines. Jan Zarens fork and knife in hand looking to chop suey. <laughs> What have we here? Against Lun Lun. Pocket fours. And ace king. Off to the races. This was blind versus blind. Jam and call. And the ace queen four board gives Arens the set. Lun on his feet, trying to avoid the stone bubble. A little assist in the form of the jack as he now picks up the Broadway draw. But the river. Pairs the board, and unfortunately, it will be Lun Lun, whose departure will put the remaining field into the money. The dreaded bubble boy. And Arens already up toward the top of the chip counts. Surges further. And will take over the chip lead from Mario Mosbach. And between the bursting of the bubble and these massive bounties on the line, I'm sure we'll see play speed up quite a bit. Wheels do tend to get greased once we work our way into the money. That much we know. Theme of sorts. over to the feature Soiza from the button min raise open Morton mucks the ace Sturm with a covering stack in the big 10-9 worthy of defense one would imagine the extra 30k investment. The King 6-4 board draws the check from Sturm. Both players a bit adrift. So is it, by the way, 9 million in career Triton earnings, two titles, seven caches, a couple of them coming already here at this festival. Part of the reason why that comes as a bit of a surprise is it's in the two events that we did not cover on stream. The 50k turbo bounty and the 25k turbo. 106 and $114,000 picked up in each of those. Here he is following through for 55000 We see the consideration being taken with that 10 of clubs. Certainly could turn quite a bit of equity in the form of straight and flushes and Leon does not shy away from an opportunity to play these spots aggressively against pretty high continuing frequency from the pre-flop aggressor there. Mm -hmm. So Soiza will take that one down as we head back over to Estonia's Ragnar. Down to 300K. In it goes. 
The Ace-9 with a big target on its back in the form of that envelope. Adams, a couple of fours on the button, asking for a count before he goes bounty hunting. It's going to be most of Adams' stack, of course, to chase the bounty, but a pair could be performing decently against this eight and one that. shove from Ragnar. And it could. Ball 55. <laughs> What does Spencer want to do with 8-7, having both of these players covered? Hoping, of course, to have two live cards, not be up against some big pairs here, which is certainly a little less likely considering the stack sizes that are shoving, you know, 8 and 11 big blinds aren't deep enough to wait for just the premiums, of course. And we're going to see this throughout as a theme, Ali, is just a little bit of that struggle in these players' faces when they have the decision with what are incredibly mediocre holdings normally. But with two bounties on the line, puts the chips in for the call. I think you can. So that, which under normal circumstances would leave us a little bit befuddled, heavily explained, courtesy of the opportunity before Seven, Lewis Spencer eight, four, mm. eight, to claim two pelts at once. And in doing so, $166,000 in EV in the form of a couple of bounties. But for the time being, it would seem ambitious. 29% equity with that 7-8 offsuit. Ragnar. Actually, the favorite with Ace Nine suit. No gamble, no future. <laughs> Side pot of 300k between the two baddies. Spencer and Adams. We see clarity on the flop, wow. and it is provided in the form of 10 Jack Queen. Spencer. Has a clean draw to the straight in the form of the nine. Seven would work for him as well. Adams fours in front for the side for the time being. Ragnar <laughs> can't huh? find the backdoor clubs, but the ace, king, or eight would work for him. And Adams hold on. He cannot. An eight on the end. And that will give Spencer one one. Wait, the yeah, side wait. pot, I mean, while uh, Ragnar yeah. will triple. <laughs> oh, well. Decent I'll result for, the for nine Spencer, and when you see the eight, you didn't does realize. collect Adams. I was just thinking about here. Here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having him covered. Yeah. At this yellow bounty. Thanks. It's yours. You have a bunch. Yeah. Very important. Tim, <laughs> Tim covered, right? The, oh, you gave me the side part. Yeah, yeah. she did. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're right, we're right. So as the dust settles, one elimination. $33,000 will be going to Tim Adams as he's on the right side of the bubble as we go back to the feature. Stop off with a couple of jacks, making noise up front. Kenny grabs his dancing shoes and looks up at just one spade with this queen three suited combo, 230 in the middle. He knuckles. backdoor pursuits for Kenny, but I think could be a little too weak sometimes against an under-the-gun opening range on a king-high board. <laughs> He's able to find the backdoor flush draw. That he is after peeling the 65k. These guys have shown a lack of avoidance toward one another here, despite being 
The two big stacks at this table for quite some time now. Oh, and now, Kenny, a little stop and go. Post-flop variety. Check, call, lead. 145,000. Yeah, taking a lead line in a situation where actually Mustafa can be uncapped here, can, of course, have trips from under the gun, can also, of course, have nines full. And Kenny just manages to hit a better two pair on the river. That he does, courtesy of this queen of diamonds and the flat from Mustafov, understandably on the turn, which brought this pot to 650K. And is Kenny go for, gonna go for another street of value? Well, if what I said, you know, on the turn about Mustafa being somewhat uncapped here, having all the strong trips, of course, you know, sometimes you might want to just check when you do river the showdown value as Kenny. But we did see Kenny again go for somewhat of a thin value bet earlier, perhaps with nines. You know, that one a little less clear based on the run out than this one. The problem is, is if you get raised here as Ken Kenny, what do you really do with kings and queens? But we see that Mustafa has the type of hand that's more going to play as a bluff catcher. You know, blocks jack 10. I was going to say, he could every now and again try to look like a hero. He has the jack of spades. That is particularly relevant because that 10 jack of spades combo would have gotten there and would have played in this manner sensibly. Yeah, with the way that this... Yeah, oh. he goes upstairs. I had a hunch. And you see, Kenny does not waste any time getting right on out of there. Fahreddin Mustafov. I love that. Sends the best hand into the muck. And Kenny left shaking his head. Even some of those King X combos defending out of the big, which will be considerably wider, not just Broadway in nature, would be given real pause by that river raise. Nice procedures there from the Bulgarian, and you begin to recognize why it is that that's a country that we're keeping our eye on here at this particular festival. Courtesy in no small part, of course, of that victory in the 30K for Agnion Dimov last night. Sturm, meanwhile, cut off. Rips it on in with a couple of fours. Haxton, okay. ace four, on the button, asking for a count. Still in pursuit of the bounties with the covering stack. Flat pay jumps. Only nine call on three. Haxton ultimately getting out of the way. Mustafa, though, going to give Sturm a spin. 1.2 million plus. Could this send Mustafa even further up the leaderboard? Sits in third, coming into this one. King, king, king board. Favoring Sturm. Trying to use some tricks. Yeah. <laughs> I take queen. Which opportunities in the form of the queen, mm -hmm. which Mustafov says he's okay with. Nine or a ten would be disaster for Sturm. And instead, it is the ace. So, king's full for the German, who will double. Kenny Chips 
Transitioning through Mustafov over to Sturm. now for Morton Klein. Klein's been fairly quiet since he made quads with this exact hand earlier against Mustafa. And he has. Chirping up. 5,000. Up front, O'Dwyer. Suited king in the big. Can obviously get involved, which he does for an extra 45. Ten seven four. One heart on board. Steve with the check. Follow through of 65,000 from Morton. And this is the type of texture that can oftentimes pique the interest of the big blind, considering they're going to be coming along with a lot of the middling cards in this spot. Some that could, of course, potentially have some pair and straight draws, but also some that pursue the back door options in the form of a hand like King Five of Hearts. <laughs> Getting creative. Sensing that Morton isn't supposed to be in this zip code. The check raised to 250,000. Is pressure laden. Yeah, this is especially profitable if you feel like Klein, even on this texture, is still going to be C betting two overs here. You know, I think most players usually check back this type of flop with two overs, but. You know, Klein, O'Dwyer certainly have some history that O'Dwyer might be taking into account here. And Klein actually has a decent hand to continue with. You know, doesn't block some of the straights, the straight draws of 8-6, 8-5. Does block 9-8 specifically, but that's only one part of the range. Jack-8 can be in there as well. Credit to Morton, by the way, for deliberating here. Unconvinced that the nines are no good. You know, sometimes top pair will check raise, but it's not all of the time. I think seven X's are just going to be a check call. Sometimes bottom pair might go for a check raise as well. So certainly a decent portion of O'Dwyer's hand that mm. Klein is beating nine. there. But it's going to fold to mm. the aggression mm. from like a very nine. capable mm. player. Mm. Ten of spades. It, it gives the queen, yeah? <laughs> and you do get a sense <laughs> of exactly bar, why it is that O'Dwyer finds himself fourth in it. chips here. I don't care anyway. 6.6 6 million <laughs> in career. <laughs> Triton earning 17 caches, two titles. If you, if you say one of like which he picked up right here in Monte Carlo in the 25K well. Turbo. Meanwhile, we encourage you to head on over to the world's biggest online poker room and sign up today with the code Triton underscore 2023. Get in on our Triton official qualifiers. Punch a ticket and come join us at the Triton Super High Roller Series. And if that isn't enough, get involved in the Bounty Hunter. 50 million guaranteed. Jack, Hop in on those flip and goes. It all happens at GG Poker. Maybe Jack Jack. Maybe. Hmm. Sometimes. A little post-mortem for Morton. 
nines. Popping up once more. Didn't work out great for Klein. And that was aided by O'Dwyer. Mustafov doubled up Sturm last time. He stuck his neck out. Soiza, big blind defense with the suited connector. Ace 10 7 with a diamond. He flops bottom pair here. Could keep his interest. You see Mustafa from the button. A follow through. Just 50K into 230, though. Especially on this type of board where you, expi you expect Mustafa to be firing quite often, but, you know, range advantage less clear the later you open. So here in position on the button, of course, going to be opening a lot wider and not liable to always have hands that contain a sex. No back doors present itself for Soyz's hand, but still some showdown value and does go check, check. So hoping to see Free River with cheap showdown value. Probably check. still a little too Six, weak, seven. though, to be betting and quick checks out of both players. Yeah, just that extra 100K found its way forward on the flop. No action on the turn or River. And so as I got a couple of cheap pulls, stuff off, shutting it down. Performing better than Klein did with the nines before him. Have you traveled through Eastern Europe at all? Bulgaria qualifying is that part of the world as I look up at producer James for verification, our resident geography expert. Well, I actually did a Eastern European tour with my dad. It was oh, a trip, right. a daddy-daughter trip. After high school, we went to uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Russia. You went to Russia, did, did. you? did. St. Petersburg. Yeah. You went Russia light. <laughs> I knew it. No Moscow? I'm not sure, actually. I think I feel like we did. But it was a good two and a half weeks in Eastern Europe. But we did not go to Bulgaria. Perhaps we missed out. You were just... Riga, Latvia. Yeah, yeah. O'Dwyer, a couple of fours. More on Latvia momentarily, by the way. Steve, 90,000, on the button. Could look a bit suspect to this suited connector for Morton Klein. And I think he's got revenge on his mind. Yeah, now he, three like betting. It. To 350,000. And that really puts the fours in a tough spot. Granted, O'Dwyer does have Klein covered here. But Klein certainly could be doing this with the premium holdings, you know, going for the three bet, not all in sizing. Sometimes can look incredibly strong off of a sub 30 big blind stack. Dwyer wondering if Klein has any three bet folds in this spot. You know, some other players for sure, but it really depends on what Klein's appetite is for taking these spots with the light three bet range versus just strictly value in this situation. And with the bounty available for O'Dwyer does call, looking for some favorable flops, perhaps the low variety 
760K in the middle, courtesy of that eventual call from O'Dwyer. And this is not the flop that Morton had in mind. King 8 3, all clubs. A snap check over to Steve, who's got a flush draw and a pair. Yeah, a bit of a shutdown, it would seem, from Klein, mm. although for the value portion of Klein's three betting range, sometimes this flop isn't going to be all that bad. And I think O'Dwyer's a little bit confused because he would, of course, imagine that a hand like Ace King wouldn't just three bet versus going all in, especially because the bounty is so appealing. Jamming, 1.7 million, and the conclusions were foregone about what would happen to that 10-9 suited after that action. As Steve picking on Klein a little bit here. Another helping of Morton Bucks. Now, I turn my attention back to Riga Latvia. Production crew employed by us here at Triton. Sherhan, based in the Eastern European nation, had been telling me wonderful things about Latvia. Come to Latvia. You'll fall in love. I arrived at the airport under doom and gloom. Temperatures plummeted. It was windy, rainy, and overcast. I went from the airport to my hotel, to the production studio, and back, and never anywhere else. The entire 10 days I was there. I feel like you didn't really give it a, enough of a chance, Ali. I did try on their version of Uber Eats, by the way. Bolt Food, which was really replete with a little more than kebabs, pizza. I believe there's a McDonald's as well. Sushi, also quite popular. Coastal City. Mm. Story checks out. But, uh, yeah, I may have to go back to Riga. I, before I go any further, though, Haxton, 100K open with this Jack-10 suited up front. Sturm with Ace-King ready for him out of the big. I had a fantastic Michelin-starred meal at a restaurant called Max Chercote, Oh, which I would highly recommend. You should have led with that. Yeah, well, that... You know, That's a trip saver. I buried that. It kind of was a trip saver, and it came toward the end. I almost think it was sort of a, a redemptive effort by the Sharehand boys <laughs> to try to not let me sour entirely on Latvia. Really was a great meal, though. Stern making a meal of that Jack-10 suited. To see the jam. Top bounty available in this format to the tune of $400,000, which is more than third place payout. Three $200,000 bounties available, six $100,000 bounties, and that wraps up the six figure bounties in play. Smallest bounty worth 40K. You know, a buy in in this event. But the number that we keep repeating over and over again is the average EV of a bounty $83,000. So is a jamming two queens over the top of another Jack 10 suited speaking up. Apologies for the interruption. Morton Klein, a couple of fives. Yeah, and who's going to come for Soyza's bounty? A little less attractive to Klein as he doesn't have Soyza covered. So, you know, certainly a little worse to be calling off in these spots when you don't have a chance to win the bounty. But Kenny could be interested for 20 bigs. That he could. I don't know, Kenny, to be one to shy away from a gambling spot. Oh, no. 
Indeed. He will take the gamble. Mm. Green, green. So he's in great shape here for a double. As he gets bounty hunted. 1.8 million chip pot. Nine of hearts in the window was menacing. Followed by a king and a ten. The queen has some prospective complications. Seven of hearts. And now, additional paths to disaster for Soiza. Couple of blockers, though. Eight on the turn. But a safe king on the end. And Soiza's bounty will remain intact, and his stack will double, and then some. Michael will pull his chips back. A little surprising, Ali, that we've only seen two eliminations since the bubble burst. Yeah, we got there in a little bit of a hurry, didn't we, on the day? And then suddenly our foot came off the accelerator a touch. Okay. And from feet on accelerators to hands on desserts, Maria, whatever mm. happened to the let's get some sweets going initiative that you would put okay. forth. The problem is... Pavlovian responses <laughs> in my mouth and then nothing to follow it up on. Okay, the problem is, is that the cord reaches to the edge, but my reach is the problem and I don't mm. want to be the person not using the tongs. The tongs are a well, little bit out of grasp. Well, the tongs give you added reach. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I can't get there because my the tongs are actually further okay away Thank on the plate than yes. the actual dessert. So you see my problem here. Although, you know, we do have a break coming up. We also have a producer who can hand you these tongs. Okay. Or he can just walk over to the table, use the tongs himself, eat a piece of dessert, and then walk away with a very smug look on his face. We will remember that, of course. Morton Klein, couple You're of nines. Today, so Mustafov. <laughs> Two queens. Those nines have been ever present here at this feature. Have not performed particularly well, however. King eight three board. This time things Come on. perhaps looking like <laughs> you're gonna be better for Mustafov. 1.3. In the middle, two outer. Oh, the four side spade. Not the one that Morton had in mind. So O'Dwyer took the first few bites out. And then Mustafov washed down the remainder of Morton Klein's chips. As he is our most recent casualty here. 25th place finish for Morton on the heels of his Scandinavian compatriot. Henrik Hecklin, who was showered in 26th. Adams, we observed, eliminated in 27th as three of the four 33K payouts have been issued. Now then, Julian Sipon. Sipon has been on the short side for most of the day, trying to make the most of this stack. Would be nice to get this raise through from under the gun. So far, so good for the king queen. <laughs> and now Uruguay's Francisco <laughs> Benitez as the queens <clears throat> and the nines have become themes. Just 11 bigs. This is obviously going to look incredibly Sorry, strong. 390. Yeah, 390. But Sipon I don't like probably it, but can't luck. fold for yeah. the bounty. Got a quick <laughs> count. You keep Said dead. he didn't oh, like it. <laughs> and he really doesn't like it. Yeah. The displeasure. Yeah, <laughs> deepening. 
But this time I, I make the king, it. I'm sorry. Jean Noël is not as good as I am to make the king. On l'appelle le roi. Petit roi. Même configuration. C'est ça. Ouf. Oh, right, right in the window. window. Plus de chance. Pour l'instant. Shark of Christ. It's just a stone one outer. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Ask for the wettest card in the deck and receive it. The Jack of Hearts Jack now Jack. suddenly no. from one out to a heart <laughs> or that queen. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> it's the three of spades. Audible frustrations there for Benitez, but obviously a lot better be to be on this side of the bubble as he will claim the last of the 33k payouts. Four in total. He leaves us with 23. 35, six. The next payout. Benitez, not a bad showing for his first Triton series. Made the yeah, final thanks. table. See you on the next one. Of the last event that he played, the 100K. Ninth place finish in that one for 288,000. Adds a skosh to his career Triton totals. Here at his first ever festival. Like a skosh of dessert. You know, I thought producer James was going to bring. Like he was going to take the hint? Really just a, a brutal sort of display of self centricity from the human Labrador who lacks the trigger that tells one when they've had enough to eat. Truly a goldfish of sorts. <laughs> King 10 for Soiza. He opened to 80,000. Then raised with the blinds at 2040. 7 8 suited. More than playable kit. So Dwyer tries his hand. Got the two-way straight draw here. Top two, though, for Soiza. Will be heard from. As Michael does not want to let free cards roll off on this board texture. Soiza, 44 bigs, pretty deep. Can certainly go a little bit bigger and start setting things up for future streets, but actually ends up taking very... Low variance line with the check back. Keeping all of the queen X and the jack X in there. Letting them see a free card. The flush possibilities. And of course this open ender here that O'Dwyer has. I'm absolutely shocked. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that Soiza was going to barrel there. And the look on your face along with the nod suggests that Maria, we were in alignment on that. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, uh, again, given how deep they are, perhaps O'Dwyer with the covering stack, Soiza not wanting to play a huge pot. And if he gets check raised, of course, there can be so many bad turn cards for his hand that roll off. Soiza electing to play this as a two straight hand in the sense that as he bets this turn here on some brick rivers will Go for value. And three of spades, just not a great card for O'Dwyer. You know, still does have the open ender, but sometimes could be drawing dead. You know, wondering how often Soiza checks back here with some type of flush draw. The break, yeah? And O'Dwyer just, what a sicko. Raised to 350,000. He looks to put Soiza okay. Okay. into the okay. blender. Yeah, with the belief that O'Dwyer has more flushes here than Soiza, you know, in terms of Soiza going to be a lot more 
conservative in terms of the suited combos he opens from under the gun, whereas O'Dwyer is most likely going to be defending all of the suited combos from the big blind. Soiza does make the call, not drawing dead against the flush with two pair, and now deteriorating texture coming in the form of a queen. Flushes, straights, staring Soiza in the face. O'Dwyer, zero showdown value, 920 in the middle, covering stack. And sure, does Soiza have some nut flushes here that he could have played this way in some other traps, as well as non-foldable value. Oh, Dwyer shutting it down, though, and not mm -hmm. making matters Seems difficult like on Soiza. Heading into the break, Michael all too happy to snap check back and haul in a pretty one, which will put him ahead of O'Dwyer in terms of chips. Heading to this break, 2.25 million in front of Michael, who still trails Bulgaria's Fahradin Mustafa, the overall chip leader. So then, one frame in the books here from Sporting Monte Carlo as we bring you back to the desk. Ali and Maria, glad to have you with us. And uh, some were happier than others on the march to the bubble in terms of outcomes. We've seen four $33,000 payouts already, very modest pay jumps, but the envelope hunt, that is what really has guided and driven the action on display. Yeah, for a lot of people out there who perhaps haven't watched a lot of bounty formats, I think they can learn a lot from seeing the types of decisions being put on the covering stacks, the players that are able to go for these bounties quite liberally and with very, very liberal hand selection, it appears. No question about it. Some targets are painted on some backs when we come back from this break. Shortest of all stacks in the room belonging to the U.S.'s Isaac Haxton, Vyacheslav Buldigin, right there with them, stride for stride at 11 big blinds in Estonia's Tompere, 625,000 in front of him. So then we will cut you loose for just a few minutes when we come back, continuing coverage of this 40K mystery bounty from Monaco. Stay close. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song, the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jumpy scores it. Jumpy scores it. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Obviously, once a bounty is available, everybody else is heavily incentivized to join the party. I believe that you're actually rooting for me, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a case where the other players at the table not involved in the hand are actually rooting for Bonomo to triple or quadruple Everyone up here because they want the bounty <laughs> to still be available for when they enter the pot. Queen 10 7 as everyone's on the side. Top pair for Yaroshevsky, out kicked by O'Dwyer, of course. Owen. By Owen. Yaroshevsky understandably wants to get all in here. Sturm having checked the gut shot. Now, of course, O'Dwyer needs to choose between a flat or a re-raise. Thoughts? Well, I think with two bounties available oh. here, you do have to ISO. O'Dwyer has both Bonomo and Yaroshevsky covered. You know, talking about how the average EV of a bounty <laughs> pool is 83,000. This is Steve O'Dwyer's shot to potentially <laughs> knock out two players. Yeah, Yaroshevsky and Bonomo both at risk now. And Sturm's hand will hit the bin. 960. One would presume. I mean, he only has 1.1. This is just about all of it if he wants to come along. Just the King of Hearts working with a gutty. Yeah, it's not so much for him about, you know, of course he understands he's going to be behind, but does he perhaps have enough equity against O'Dwyer's hand that it would make it worth it for him to potentially win the two bounties on the line immediately, but also O'Dwyer's as the third, having all of them covered. And these are considerations and calculations, Ali, that we don't normally have without this element of the bounty. Five seconds. Oh. No. Oh. So time banks used, but ultimately Sturm does find the fold, resisting the temptations of those two envelopes. Bonomo in for the main. O'Dwyer and Yaroshevsky. Sorry, you said seven seven. Competing first. It's be for the way. side. And Three of hearts. O'Dwyer's stranglehold Come on, one comes firmer. And he ends up with top two, showering both. Hard, I feel like to, you know, see Stevie not cash a single event in a series. You know, when we look over at his results in London, six caches, I believe, with four final tables, and certainly, of course, the variance. And look at this. Noida with pocket jacks against Antonius is open off of ace jack. This is exactly where he wants to be. Moving all in over the top of the min raise open from the fin. And that's a big chunk of this 410 back on request, but of course Patrick must make the call, especially with bounty considerations. And clearly, yeah, I am, I am. not smitten yeah. with the sight of two black jacks whilst holding ace jack suited. Ace free flop and no diamond out there either. Not a great spot for Antonius. Jacks still best. All Noida needs to do is fade the ace, and he's done it. 
and in this spot, Ace Jack suited is not a light call by any means, but let's think about the flip side of perhaps having a shorter stack. You know, yes, are people going to... One gets lost in the woods, and then the Thank wolves you. start to come and take an interest in what you got going on. Antonius already having tripled. King Jack off suit. Gets it in. Noida. And we've seen Noida have the willingness, of course, to ISO the bounty. And here, decent holding to do. So with, of course, you know, if somebody were to wake up with a hand behind him, a lot of the times they'll contain two overs. He'll still be in a decent spot. And by the way, this is not something lost on the remainder of the field. They know that the typical cutoff jamming range for Noida is going to be widened considerably. Yeah, widened, but still within reason because Noida does have about 27 big blinds, which is, is still a decent stack, you know, not that far away from average stack in the whole tournament. Oh. But Chidwick going to go for it. Looking Ready for the is. tussle a limb with a hand that is actually playing quite well up against the two other hands of his opponent. Yeah, before you go scratching your temple, if you're just joining us, this is the kind of stuff we alluded to in the pregame show that you'll see on your screen that you wouldn't otherwise were it not for the fact that we're playing a mystery bounty. Chidwick's 8-9 suited. Looking for two envelopes as both Antonius and Noida now at risk. 1-5 into the muck already. The king-queen six board giving Antonius top pair. Comfortable lead for the... And a warm welcome back inside Sporting Monte Carlo here in the Principality of Monaco 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series Season 3 Festival Number 2 off and running. The big stuff already in the books. The 40K Mystery Bounty, though, an event for which there is no shortage of enthusiasm. That which is taking place right here behind us. Day two action. We will be playing down to a champion, and so far it's been pretty exciting, as to be expected. When the envelope EV is 83,000 and you don't breach that figure until you're up to eighth, we get pots that play out in ways that we might not expect. In terms of what we've observed so far here today, anything that kind of sticks out to you even in spite of the mystery bounty being present, Maria, as questionable or something to kind of run? Well, I feel like on the feature table, watching a lot of these post-flop hands play out, Steve O'Dwyer really getting mm. in there a lot, involved in quite a few big pots with a couple of other big stacks. You know, against Bryn, there was one hand, and then just right before the break with Soiza. It feels like O'Dwyer's feeling a little more creative than usual. Yeah, no question about it. Currently finds himself sixth in chips overall as you take a peek at the leaderboard inside the Triton Poker Plus app. We do have... Couple of new featured tables. 2.9 million up top for Mustafov. O'Dwyer there in sixth. Last of the 2 million chip stacks. Mustafov, by the way, knocking on the door of 3 million. One of our new feature tables will contain Triton co founder Paul Pua. You see there in blue. See if I can zoom in on that for us. Sammy Balung, who you talked about being a cash game player that is someone who likes to play some pots, also be a part of that recipe. This one could get exciting. Yeah, looking at, of course, some of the shorter stacks here who are, of course, trying to find spots to get the chips in, hoping to double up and triple up at this point. You know, still pretty flat payouts, though. So, again, utility of these stacks, especially as you get even shorter, is just going to be about trying to survive the ladders as you don't have a shot to go bounty hunting. Yeah, it's going to be about keeping the bullseye off your back is exactly... That is what happens when you work your way down into one of these leaner figures. Goldigan and Greenwood find themselves in that sort of plight. Jaffe as well as two new collections of combatants enter our feature table arena. It could be this, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, 
Blinds 25 and 50,000 with the 50K big blind 80, 125K in orbit. The price of poker currently 23 players remaining. <laughs> My chance to get bounty. <laughs> On deck payout, 35,600. There will be three of those before we have a little pay jump. 718,000 will go to the eventual champ, Artur Martirosian now of Russia. I haven't had a chance to observe him much thus far at this festival. He was briefly on a feature table in, I believe, the 125K main event, but How much you know, hasn't out? gone I too much further. <laughs> Before the ante? Uh, no, now it can be. <laughs> now we're like, even? Okay, we'll, we'll assume we're even. All right. We'll figure it out at the end. Cool. It's open. Maybe the app is wrong, it has been wrong on my stack, but maybe Defend they fixed it up break. By Greenwood. 1.135. 973 board, no pair anywhere. A quick check from Sam. Archer, by the way, well respected out there. Just shy of 2 million yeah, in career. Triton Thank earnings. You. 10 caches, two of which he picked up back to back in the 100K and the 30K. 13th and 22nd. Looking to better that run here today. Mike Green would have some designs on this pot with some backdoor prospects. One over card to the board. You said 1.17 behind. Uh, you got it. Yeah. No, no longer. No, not, but uh, maybe they calculate the flop. <laughs> Got our answer as the check fold to the follow through. So expensive. Do just fine. From Marta Rosian. Yeah. Meanwhile, Sam's brother Luke <coughs> got himself involved with a queen high that stays that way. On a King Jack 9 board. Luke defending. 90. Picking up the gut shot and now facing a barrel from bottom pair and backdoor diamonds. Wants nothing to do with it. Quick fold. To Arens, currently fourth overall in chips. And I don't know about you, Ali, but I'm not too familiar with Axel. Ali? Yeah. The Frenchman, I believe, had a deep run in the main, if I'm not mistaken. Investigating. Looks like he was first seen in Cyprus with one cash over five events there, but has only played one other event out here in Monte Carlo and did not finish in the money there. Taking a peek at his Hendon mob. Career live earnings beyond the Triton border. Of over 1.25 million as fellow countryman Imad Derwish opens to 150,000. He looks down at an ace king suited. I don't care what is on the rest of his shirt. I'm a fan of just what I can I'm see of the shirt. Looks like a holiday dachshund. Like Looks it. like 910, actually. The more relevant appearance. Of course, Dervish with a couple of queens. Ready. And waiting. The classic in an almost 2 million chip pot here. For the fate of Ale. Hanging in the balance to King High Board, though. You can see shake of the head from Imad. Prepay in hand. And it would seem with good reason as the queens find no added equity on the turn and don't find a third lady on the river. Is it Holiday Dachshund or is it Where's Waldo Dachshund? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <coughs> Clear. 
fat boy to your shirt? Yeah. Okay. So it was a fourth place finish at last year's World Series of Poker in the $2,500 No Limit Hold'em, which would appear to be that which was on my mind. Also, at a final table in the 1500 the year before that. Did Halle. A lot of viewers curious, Ali, as to when the bounties are going to be pulled. That's going to happen tomorrow, actually, after the tournament concludes. Indeed. Fun little extra sweat for the players that managed to collect some bounties throughout the day today. At the London stop, it was a bit anticlimactic as I believe one of the first people or maybe even the first person to pull bounties pulled the big one. Now I was there presiding over that. You don't even remember? And I don't remember, truth be told. Is Jaffe. How much is it? Ace 10 jamming. Greenwood wants a count. 500 on the board. All in. All in. You can see Greenwood finding King Queen on the button and deciding that that's good enough to ISO what is a bounty on one. the line from Jaffe. Going to be performing decently Two against hits. that shoving range off of 11 Two bigs. Going to contain, of course, uh, all the pairs uh, that Greenwood has two overs to, some of these uh, ASAX holdings where he's live. I like the opportunity to hunt not <laughs> one but two bounties. Engage Stanavo. We get our That's answer. So nice. Hunter. That doesn't sound Holy good for me. Pocket peel. Okay. We like that. Oh, so wow. it's going to so be a three-way pot. So alive. What was that first one, Jans? <laughs> 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 Sorry. I need a little Greenwood. Oh, and Stanavo will face <laughs> off for one and a quarter million on the side. Uh, double bounty. Jaffe. I mean, they have shot at 1.7. No, no, for no, the no. main. Stavar yeah. sixes are in front, but no longer okay. on an ace jack five board where Jaffe has outflopped the field. Well, I mean, I think we'll queen. Stavar. Nice He's too. still in the lead against Greenwood <laughs> for the side, though. Luke with the Broadway gutter okay. and instead hits the queen. This is fine. Classic yeah. spot for Which okay. River Six. Well, it's Jaffe. Yo, Han. Yes. Yo, Han. His Please. ace is still in front. So close. Just kidding. And Stravert comes up seven. empty oh, in both well, spots. Nice fold, Hunter. Very expensive it's bounty hunt yeah. for Johannes. See who comes to you for coaching after the Queen 5. Uh, <laughs> 625. Excuse me, what is the delay on the stream? What is the delay on the stream? 30 minutes? At least it's the easiest format to spin up uh, again. Flipping it back over to the other feature. As the dust clears. Jaffe the triple. Luke Green with the double. Pulled again in the small blind. Has Martirosian covered in the big? Showing aggression with the king six off. Martirosian's got the real king here. King queen suited. Jamming. 
Who cover who? He covered me. Oh, before this hand. Now I don't know. Now I think Gold I covered. <laughs> yeah, now you cover him. Let the snap fall. So far. You see Bold again in the white oh, no. Triton hoodie? That's the one that I wore yesterday mm. to work. And I've noticed I might be the only person left that hasn't removed the drawstring from around the hoodie. And as I think about it, I've never pulled the drawstring on the hoodie, so why do I have it in there anyway? Sometimes when you wash the hoodie, it just no, gets lost. Four, right? So should have, you have you ever washed your hoodie before? So I, should have I don't know if these people are intentionally right? pulling so it off. It might just be a product of... I treat the Triton oh, hoodie with a measure yes, of sorry, sacred idiot. respect. <laughs> Maria, it doesn't go into the wash. Okay. Goes into the dry cleaning bag. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try to do the math. Try okay. to keep that fabric you know as soft as possible. Yeah, I trust you. You're right. It takes Again, a certain amount of courage to also WSB. wear white Ollie when you know you're gonna be on yeah, camera correct. and you do love to snack throughout the day. Yes. I didn't order the bolognese. <laughs> Speaking of the soft fabric on the Triton hoodie, quite soft are these gummies that during the break we worked our way down to the dessert desk and got apparently a Halloween theme, complete oversight by yours truly is the fact that today was Halloween. What do you think those are though, like? An egg over easy? What else could that be? Well, what does it taste like? What's the flavor? I haven't tried one yet. Jan's bottom pair checking over to Halle. Blind versus blind. 50K. Question asked by top pair. And this one isn't going to be over easy as Jans makes the call and out turns Halle Kings induces a quick check hoping that additional barrels are in Axel's future Axel has the type of hand that has enough showdown doesn't want to get check raised in this spot Wondering how often a worse hand calls, like some of these 9x combinations might not love that king on the turn. Check back from Axel. And now that 9 counterfeiting the king's induces in a way. Still king's up. You do imagine that, of course, a 9x could potentially be in Halle's check back range. And some of those Queen X, Jack X combos could mix between taking a free card on the turn or betting as a semi bluff. And this sizing and this bet really targeting the 10x. Yeah, Axel really. Left with no choice but to flick in the call of 200. As played, understandable. You can see him lamenting the turn card. Looking up to the poker gods. Thinking, guess que say. You studied French, right? I did. Oh, I got accounts. So you knew what I'm saying. Proper yeah. Proper sizing for me. Oh, we're very close. You know, that wasn't even a bad accent uh, there, but yeah, well, I got it's, not, it's not the hardest <laughs> of things one, to say. It took me, it took me a second no. to... No. <laughs> I, I love that million, six. meme that went six, around. Okay, one, one point. Where yeah, someone plugged more, yeah. in a sentence in English so should have gone smaller? to Google <laughs> Translate and then had oh, yeah. it pronounce <laughs> the entirety <laughs> of the sentence in French, and it was We're just nothing but uh, three time to the sound the tone <laughs> repeatedly uh, that is kind of funny for a good 45 that. seconds. Sick shit. That is when you realize you're deep into the weeds of French. Mm. 
Jan's getting very liberal with the hands. He's choosing to open from the button. Has the rest of the table well covered. Big stack things. From Arends. Round and round we go. Five-handed for the time being at this feature with 22 runners left in the 40K mystery bounty. Pocket eights for Arends. We'll go to work with less. He's queen suited though for Jaffe. Fresh off that triple. He also won the 50K Turbo Bounty earlier on the series. Just, Just a smidge over half a million dollar payday heads up against Brian Kim. Three hundred and forty thousand. The number dialed up by Jaffe Pre. And oh. Renz gonna jam and a hunt. Oh fuck. <laughs> The pair man. <laughs> <laughs> the pair man out again. Ace in the window. Look, this appreciate it. is a meaty bounty. Repair the situation of too many players at the table. What say again? I said you're here to repair the situation oh, right. of too many players. 3.3 right. million chip pot. This would oh. be good for the overall chip lead. Ace nine like, uh, five and seven. Jaffe. No, oh, six and then seven on the river. Hops in front. The sickos say just a club, just a club. Any club I'll take. Then you gotta... All he needs to do is fade an eight on the end and he's done just that. Nine's full of aces. Jaffe, moments ago. Seats and everything. Like half That's a million what, like, in front uh, of him. Like Nacho or Cayenne, they're usually now, just like, give me like a one in 10 or something like that. <laughs> See, sometimes it's fun to be on the short stack in these things. You flip it back over to the other feature where a pair of threes squares off against a gutter. Martirosian, the troublemaker. <coughs> Good stack at this table is Bulligan. Martirosian second. Greenwood will check call. Yeah, nice to be to the left of the big stack at the table because once they fold, it gives you a wider lane open so wide that Jack or off from the cutoff in there from Artur. Does feel like a natural double barrel spot. You would imagine if Greenwood had some of the strong ace X's and queen X's that you would have heard from him pre-flop. Started the hand with just about 20 bigs. 175K. Second barrel from Marta Rosian. Gonna really have to hang on for dear life with bottom pair. Five seconds. Sam does concede despite having the lead as you get a glimpse of some of the aggressive procedures from Marta Rosian. Now, Maria, I've just gone in on one of these over easy egg candies. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still chewing. The thing is, so, uh, just tastes like sugar, I think. 
it like could, a gelatin fruit It could taste like sort of worse deal. flavor. You know how jelly beans, those jelly bellies have those weird tasting ones, like the licorice one, always one of the more awful flavors in the bunch. Well, black licorice really is something that should be banned as a sweet flavor. Not really subject to debate. Hold it around to the small blind of Steve Jobs. I'm sorry, Sam Greenwood. Not quite a turtleneck. No. I was reaching. Turtleneck not really seen much around these parts. I've rocked it twice. It's seen quite a bit, actually, around these parts. Maybe not the Triton Super High Roller Series, but Monaco. Limp from Greenwood. Gets taxed instantly by Sammy B. Sammy a little more quiet today. Normally, when we play cash games, he's very gregarious, very talkative. Cash game. True. Tournament. Reg closed. That's not the case. Let's get a look at the Golden Triton Trophy. I confess, I'm not entirely clear on what the inspiration for our logo is, but I gotta say, it exudes a sense of richness, doesn't it? Yeah, the oh. color scheme as well. Oh, yeah. I feel like it didn't take a focus group to figure all this out. Oh. Oh. Check it out. Why didn't they just make the table and the rail out of gold leaf. Ooh, like where your head's at. And if you got nine, six hearts, you like where this flop is at. Cut shot straight, flush draw here for Bulldigan. Check back the big with this one. For Marta Rosian, by the way, forgive me. Have it transposed. Martyrosian finding a couple of pots to chip up nicely. Now you don't want Martyrosian with a big stack. That much is for, for sure. Really what you want is to be surrounded by Nothing but small stacks that you can go hunting. Hold it around to Thailand's number one, Punat Punsri. How much is that? That's 10 seconds in, tell me. Okay. Fast Five action seconds. system in play, reducing the pre-flop clock to 10 seconds. Play roll in. Focus thing oh. coming up. How much? Red time bank being um, used for an extra say? 10. Yeah. Yeah. Two players all in. Jam from Punsri, restuffed upon by Sammy B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a great spot for Punat. You see Sammy's reaction to realizing that he's pipped. <laughs> 445k pot, a pivotal one for Punsri as he looks to march on. I put you a six. <laughs> Eight in the window. Good news, but a couple of clubs lurking. Good news for the other players because they want to keep Punstry in on the short stack so they have a chance at his bounty later. That they do. To mention some prospective 
middle stack debilitating realities that exist when you keep a shorty in the mix. Punsri, though, able to hang on and double through Sammy. Still 22 remaining. Thank you. Well, if you knew what was good for you, then you'd heeded our messaging thus far here at this festival. What am I talking about? Heading over to our official staking partners at Poker Stake, who exclusively offer us rake and transaction-free opportunities to buy a piece of some of our Triton heroes and get involved from the comfort of our own homes. Pay them a visit today at PokerStake.com and get in on the action. Sam Greenwood, ace 10. And Rezo Bice. What is that? We, we draw first, I don't know. We draw. We draw. 21 players left. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who busted? Okay, I don't know whether I should defend or not. Defend, defend. Come on. <laughs> I didn't even have a good hand, but you know, like, give me, give me the chance. Defend, I hit a good bit and you Yeah, exactly. 8-6. 10-6-5. Into the muck. Defend. Against Greenwood's wishes. And it would appear that elsewhere in the room, one Lewis Spencer has met his demise leaving us with just 21 players. And that means it's time for a redraw here in the 40K Mystery Bounty where Vyacheslav Buldigin and his compatriot Artur Martirosian are the two biggest stacks at this feature table. Overall big stack, however, belonging to Jonathan Jaffe as we bring you back to the desk, Maria Ho, Ali Najad, and a collection of Halloween candies that we've been talking about throughout that frame right now. Note they're on my side of the desk, Maria. No tongs available to you. You can't go reaching in. But you have some of your own as well. The, the, I like the, what should I, should I eat one? No, I'm going to have to talk. Walk us through it. There was the frame. Not I particularly eventful, but the seat no. redraw becomes a bit relevant, doesn't no, it? No, very relevant in terms of the chip distribution. Should you be lucky enough to find yourself at a table where there's several short stacks, then, of course, the bounty hunting will continue. But I have to say, from that last frame, look at Jonathan Jaffe from yep. the outhouse to the penthouse. No question. Leading the field now, but... Look out, JNT, who started the day with a big stack, still maintains a top three spot. And, of course, JNT has already had a heck of a series, you know, finishing, I believe, in fifth place in the 200K Invitational. You want me to vet you? I think Fifth you're right. or fourth in order fourth to, of course, top Elkie, though, for the all-time money list in France and looking to build, of course, on that lead furthermore. Yeah, no question. So then... We've got a break. We've got some candies to get to. Keep it close, though. Just a few minutes' time. We're going to come back, bring you more from this 40K bounty where a champion will be crowned today. 21 remaining when we come back. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of the GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No <laughs> way. Who did it? Jump, he's going to hit him. Jump, he's going to hit Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. 
Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new betacr.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets betacr.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. And welcome back to Sporting Monte Carlo for continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series. Ali and Maria back with you. And you may note that we are short a couple of candies. I did do a little bit of damage <laughs> on the break. Uh, oh yeah, I guess I confess. Couldn't the sweet resist. tooth is in full effect right now. You talk about resistance. Things that can't be resisted are the bounties that are available out here in this 40K. Half the prize pool stuffed into a bunch of envelopes, 400K. The largest among them, 83,000. We've touched on it several times. The expected value of one of those envelopes, which is why players seem to be caring far less about payouts and pay jumps for the time being, even in the march to the money bubble, more so looking for opportunities to hunt bounties, even in spots where they have not one but two all-ins in front of them where you might think there's strong hands that I'm going to be facing and they don't care because there's 166,000 potentially in expected value up for grabs if you can get lucky. Yeah, some of these have been head scratchers for even the best players trying to figure out, is this a hand I'm supposed to be calling with in this spot? But we talked a little bit about being on the flip side, being a short stack. Yes, you know, you do have that target on your back, but also we have seen somebody like Jonathan Jaffe be able to spin up really nicely right. because if you get big hands, if you're able to hold, then 
within a matter of, you know, a couple of orbits, you can actually have a stack where now you are the hunter instead of the hunted. Well, you touched on the flip side of the frustrations of feeling as though even though I'm all in and I've got a good hand, I'm facing so much opposition. Well, when you do face a lot of opposition, when you hold, you get these big spins. It took just two pots for Jaffe to go from a half a million stack to the overall chip leader at three and a half million. We do have the redraw complete now if we peek Briefly inside the Triton Poker Plus app, you'll get a sneak preview of what's just seconds away from entering your screens and your homes as you continue to soak up this live stream here in the 40K. So then, without further ado, we pass it along so we can take the chip counts officially. First of those two new feature tables is where Jonathan Jaffe is going to call home. For the time being, Soiza obviously disheartened to have drawn Jaffe's table given that he is among the bigger stacks in the room, fourth currently, 2.9 million, but we'll have to contend with Jaffe. And the bounty hunt is on for the likes of Punsri, Haxton, and Stravid, all sub-10 big blinds. Punsri yeah, like, with way the too double often. Yeah. for how often it Just should before happen. the break. Doesn't feel right. I get Something's going on. Spooky. Exactly two. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They made a little pact before they got to this day. <laughs> I mean, it's spooky because Obviously it's Halloween, Obviously, this is like a level it's a little... Oh. So when they color up the ads, it becomes a little easier with so. That was a really feeble yay, just for the record. Doesn't this part of the day make Are you happy? Buddies? What do you mean by this part of the day? When we get a little bit of sunlight in here. Ah, the yay Fine. wasn't for Halloween, but rather the fact that the curtains are now being drawn. Play roll in. As dusk <laughs> is upon us here at Sporting Monte Carlo. Can you come for me? Jam with pocket nines for Arens. That has been the hand of the day. <laughs> Hasn't really been working out for most of the people that have held those nines. Klein did make quads at one point with them, but since has come up empty for different yeah. opponents. 945,000. Yeah. All in. Two players all in. It looks like a jam over the top no. of the nines from Soiza. Very good hands. Offering some protection given how deep Michael is. Jan's happy to spin against an over and an under for two million. All in a call, table one. Flop we go. Jack eight four. Nines sit pretty. <laughs> Turn card giving a gutter to Soiza now along with the ace car. to five. I just need the <laughs> would be the heartbreaker <laughs> for Young. You gotta insult me on live television. <laughs> oh, and oh, there is good. that ace. To okay. add insult to injury. My first ever mystery bounty in my life. Thank you. you. Want to take a picture with him? No. <laughs> uh, not that mean. Well, Michael advising that that's the first time that he has ever picked up a bounty. Axton offering a photo op. Yeah, at least you got a bunch of bounties, bro. Yeah. I had somebody video yeah, yeah. in order to commemorate the very first time I pulled a mystery bounty. And wouldn't you, you know the it? Laps. It was the mint the draw, bounty. Forget them. Yeah. <laughs> they expire. Yeah, <laughs> Not worth the video. <laughs> How many did he get? How many did he get? Two or three? Three, I think it's three. Yeah. Yeah. With a few three. bounties. Yeah. Yeah, he's cashed for like tomorrow. Fourth place, at EV. <laughs> fourth place at EV already. Third place at EV. What those envelopes will be worth? Soiza, though. The pretty big. With that pot, hops right into the chip lead ahead of Jaffe. Didn't take long. Now then, we flip it over to an outer table where boss Paul Fua is on his feet. Why is that? Pocket threes against an ace jack for Julian Sibon. And an ace high flop. Bringing Paul's run to a close as along with Jans mm. Arens. He will be headed for the exit. Arens, by the way, 35,600 for the 21st place finish. Boss, 38,800. 
five seconds. So it seems like you brought to the table late. You only have one of these. Up front, Let's go. 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 Round to new chip leader Soiza on the button. But with Jaffe to his direct left. Sits this one out. Suited big and little for double J. Just gonna rip it, Sam. Sixty right. soft suit. Let's Jonathan sweat it with him. <laughs> 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 Jaffe, making it seem like it was a foregone conclusion that Sam was supposed to call it off there. He's got a good sense of humor, does Jonathan? Oh yeah, so good that for years he fooled no a lot of people in production, time. including me, thinking that he was a dolphin trainer, Ollie, if you remember those forms that they give people during the WSOP to fill out the best about out their occupations, you know, some other personal button. information. This was when Jaffe was lesser known yeah, in the poker true. world, of course. I would have All come right. with something I forgot to give also I have in the marine biology this round. This code is the uh, oh, ace of clubs written. and this one would be eight of diamonds. Whale rider. Oh good, my rep is gonna be after I pull this. Or tamer. Yeah, I know. Not A little less at all. believable. Well, no, as it pertains to poker, then it's very believable, right? Raised to 100,000. King nine suited. Let's see how much belief Soyuz is open will be instilling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like how in the mystery, everybody just rubs their hands together when the action's on them because it feels like the jam is just such an easy approach to take. And this is interesting. Again, some min open. Not with a suited hand. Cold. Does decide to peel because of the suited properties. Unfortunate that he is dominated by Soiza. Hearts smothered. King Queen five. Top pair for Soiza. Way the best of it. Check in front, and so as that reaches out and touches 50k. This one's done. Right? Oh. So as along with Victor Chong, who can be found at Triton Festivals from time to time, haven't seen him here. However, co-owner of the APT, our own Henry Kilbane, serving as commentator for. Michael and Victor's operation. A lot of support has come their way since they purchased that operation from those that they've met along the way at the Triton Super High Roller Series. Meanwhile, we flip it over. One in progress. Axel Halle, who opened with the Ace Queen suited, got three bet to his direct left by Mustafov. 290 ahead to the flop after Axel calls the extra 180. He is the covered stack. Mustafa, fifth overall coming in. 973 over pair. Not a great flop for Axel, but fairly ideal for Mustafa. With the bounty on the line, of course, you expect queens and kings to shove if Halle had those. Oh, and looks like we've got an all-in over here. That we do. Let me bring you up to speed. It looks like Martirosian with king-queen raised it up to 100. Sammy Balloon was the customer jamming with that ace-jack suited. Martirosian would make the call. You saw the board there, 7 9, nine 6 4 And Balloon, able to double through Artur. As we flip it back over to the one in progress. Uh, 
Axel has check called 250,000 on the flop with this ace queen pot growing to 1.2 million as you get the recap on the side slab there. Yeah, what I was saying before we moved to that outer table hand is that Axel's not going to have a lot of traps with bigger overpairs than Jack's here because knowing that the bounty is so enticing to the covering stack, you can fast play those and expect to get a call quite often. Jack still looking pretty good on this run out. Jam from Mustafa with the overpair. And Axel blocking aces, blocking queens, blocking ace king, some of the likely hands that would have found itself three betting against an under the gun open. Cannot take the heat any longer. Mustafa will haul that one in. There's Jean-Noël Torel in red. Came in as the chip leader, as you mentioned, Maria. Slipped considerably off of the lead. Was in second when we entered this frame of play. Now sits in fourth. 50 bigs. Blinds up to 30 and 60,000 now. to Francis Imad Derish here at his very first Triton Festival. He was second in chips behind JNT coming into the day. Now sits 12th of 19 runners. Not surprising, I think, to see some of the top stacks coming into the day have a swinging day because they probably were calling some all-ins, mm -hmm. doubling some people up. Those chips going to be in play in this format at all times. That they are. Stern getting after Halle with three, four off. Normally, this is, of course, an easy shove spot, blind versus blind. But when you know that your fold equity really diminishes because of the bounty, you get a little bit afraid that sometimes these small blinds, of course, are going to be pretty eager to call. However, just lucky that Sturm had bottom of range there. Yeah, Not even jam. a consideration. That a six, four, three, snap into the muck. Axel working the loot bag, by the way. He's got that scarf. Bit of a needle, I suppose, for you, as you are scarfless. Yeah, you know, I see you gave one out to Randy. Mm -hmm. Henry might have one that you've secretly. He does not. One would have needed to have been here at the booth. We know who your favorites are, Ali. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to remember that. That's why uh, the same way that you remember my birthday and Christmas? That's why you don't make the Christmas list mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. King Deuce making the list. Mosbach takes us upstairs. JNT with Canard, which of course is French for duck. Oh, so that's why at dinner you wanted to ask Maureen what the pronunciation was. You know, don't worry about what I'm out here doing, Maureen. Don't put me on blast. 
Wow. Three scoops, <laughs> says JNT. Talk about blasting. <laughs> Mossbach, by the way, up front with this King Do suited, Maria. You surprised to see him opening? Obviously, one of the big stacks in the room. Not too surprised. You know, pressure here with ICM considerations starting to form as we're in the money. Not able to take any heat. One red time by six. Re Razor to his immediate left. Able to take it. Mario with the assist, paying the time bank marker there for JNT. It does need to be said, in case we fail to do it on stream, that Mosbach does have a striking resemblance to Ashton Kutcher. And yet it was he the one that was punked in that last pot. Should have known you were going somewhere with that. To the chagrin. James says that was awful, so, yeah. you know, no need to check what the viewers think. I feel like that's pretty representative of a majority opinion. Producer James is representative of a majority opinion? I think he has his finger on the pulse of, you know, what He's got his finger on dessert think. somewhere back there. Is <laughs> that's my guess. Oh, a couple of kings here for Axel. On the button. Just north of the min. And let's see. More King Deuce suited. These suited combos do like to defend from the big. And instead of a defense, it is just a rip from Bulldogan. Kings against King Deuce. If I'm not mistaken, it would have had to have been offsuit King Deuce. But that is the biggest preflop disparity statistically that one can find themselves in, is it not? Yes, but who cares about the preflop <laughs> equities when you've got 83,000 in uh, bounty equity on the line? Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Which opportunities yeah. on the 910 jack board. Which somebody fall clean? Yes. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> Deuce on the turn. <laughs> Some cause for excitement. Yeah. As clean winners are available to Bulldogan in the form of a duck. And instead, the case king rolls off on the end. Top set for Axel. Fortunate not to have had a spade in Bulldogan's range. Or his actual hand. Obviously, the spade is in everyone's range at all times. Let's flip back over here, I believe. <laughs> We've got some real carnage taking place. There was an open from Luke Greenwood to 125,000. Bryn Kenny ripped over the top of that to 410. Martirosian re ripped to 510. Balloon from the small jamming, and on their backs they go. What is responsible for this? Jax for Lucas Greenwood. Kenny over the top with the king queen. Martirosian with king king. Ace king for Balloon. <laughs> and wow. the ace high flop leaves all others <laughs> in the dust. Not one, not two, but three pelts claimed at once. I can't remember the last time there was a triple elimination on tour. And I mean, just like that, he's probably collected what second place per prize potentially in bounty equity. A quarter million dollars roughly in EV. Okay, not but in quite terms, second. But in terms of the min though, smallest of all envelopes is 40,000. That's a bare minimum 120K cold hard cash that was just picked up by Sammy B there with a free roll at more, leaving us 16 in the field. Awaiting, by the way, the official 
eliminations as we see an ace nine suited for JNT back at the feature awaiting orders from Darish's Queens. We're going to go upstairs and I believe it is for all of it 1.1 but there was a pay jump in those three bust outs between 18th and 17th. So the player with the most chips coming into that pot which would have been Luke Greenwood. He will get 17th place money, 43500 38 8 going to Bryn Kenny and Martirosian. Meanwhile, back over here, we've got another bloody affair taking shape. And a pay jump on the horizon, but who cares about, you know, a $5,000 difference in pay when there's 83K equity in the bounty. Right. Yeah, writing was on the wall here as the classic takes shape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> JNT waving the white flag and you can see a nervy dervish here covered and being hunted in a two and a half million chip pot that needs to go his way if he wants to fight on. Can the queens hold? Yes, they can so far. Jack, Jack, five board. Anti-sweating the ace and the king is Imad successfully on the turn. And on the river as well. <coughs> so, Imad with the double as we flip back over to one in progress between Soiza and Greenwood. Greenwood jamming with top pair. Following up on his open to 120k pre, which was defended against by Soiza. Check fold out of Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just 16 left here. Thank you. This is okay, that. Is it, is so sad to see you go. I'm just running <laughs> terrible. Is full redo at, at 17? Or? At 14. 14? 14? Yes. You have a chance. That's right. Taking a look at the chip counts, Jonathan Jaffe up top at this table, but not the overall chip leader in the tournament. <laughs> Sammy the Bull. All right. Sitting there with a pretty looking 4.7 million chip oh. stack. Oh, yeah. Very Very Ike Haxton, one of those players trying to hang on. Five bigs. Five seconds. Player all in. So is Strava. Like it or not, all in. King eight on all the in. button. Call. How good. Soiza ripping over the top, okay, trying bad, to bad, isolate bad. the Strava 170, but oh, Greenwood no. spoiling the party with a call of his me. own. Soiza got them both covered. I like my odds. To see a bunch of aces. Delighted to see interference in the terms of a king. Is ace two. No, two. Sam, no one calls it a two. <laughs> ace king queen. Five seventy <laughs> in the main. <laughs> on the side, one point two between okay. Sam and. <laughs> <Parker> <laughs> <Suiza>. <laughs> Who's got clear the board and a gutter? Three. One of the eights busy in Stavra's hand. Clear the board. Eight and Jack. Safe. <laughs> peer with the board. King Simple Queen. Request. Not a board. But peer. the river yes. is not. Ooh. And Soiza Ooh, hits the yeah. ten. And we've we got go. another multi-elimination. This time the big girl. Lucky one. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Okay. Up for Greenwood. sale. <laughs> And Strava with Greenwood holding more chips coming into that one. You gave it to Murray. Yeah, 30. 30. Yeah. So he will earn the 48,500 for 15th yes. place. 16th will go to Strava, 43,500 as the brothers Greenwood showered 
in short succession. And with just 14 remaining, Maria, it's going to be time for us to redraw. What I'd love to see is a bounty counter yeah, that's on the I said. side that's of these players' names. Some people really Ooh, getting yeah. up there. Looking lonely over at Soyza's table. And that's because he's not making any friends. Showering two players at once just there and sending himself up the leaderboard in the process. But still trailing behind one Sammy Balloon. 4.7 million and change in front of him. He's your overall chip leader. And we will come back to the desk now and uh, well, they dropped like flies. A triple elimination, a double elimination, and we went from 21 to 14 in absolutely blistering fashion. That was even hard to keep up with, even with the hand histories in the app. It's hard to know, you know, who had what when, but when all the dust cleared, we see that Sammy the Bull is now the chip leader. Jonathan Jaffe following close behind. JNT is still in the top five. Yep. 3.1 million in front of him, just a nose in front of Michael Soiza. So then we're going to step aside briefly as we consolidate three tables down to two here in the 40K. Keep it close. Continuing coverage comes your way right after this. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of the GT Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
crazy. It's a dude. Gigi Poker. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of Gigi Poker. Top traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. Back in Monaco, Alina Jad and Maria Ho with the 40K Mystery Bounty. A couple of frames in the books, down to just a couple of tables now with that big over $700,000 payout up top. But, of course, that doesn't seem to be what's on most people's minds thus far from what we have observed as the bounty hunters have been very successful just before the break. We saw a triple elimination and then a double as well, leaving Jonathan Jaffe, second behind Sammy the Bull, Balung, 4.7 million in front of him. Jaffe trailing just behind 4.6. As you look out at the cast of characters, though, Maria, I ask you, with 14 left right now, if there's any reason to assume that the guys who are the big stacks are safe in any way, shape, or form, because as long as they continue to hunt these bounties, sometimes against stacks that are fairly deep, then they're at risk, and they're taking very thin spots, sometimes taking away the worst of it, just pursuing that 83K uh, in EV. Yeah, there's no real getting off the roller coaster, whether you're on the big stack or the short stack in this type of tournament, because as I mentioned earlier, as the big stack, those chips are going to be in play. You're not sitting back. You're not locking it up. You know, what you're doing is you're trying to fire them in there in order to collect these bounties, and nobody's safe. Yeah, nobody at all. So then, blinds of 30 and 60,000, 60K big blind ante. We do have the consolidated field down to a couple of tables. We're going to find big stack interference in terms of Michael Soiza, third in chips, parking his bones at the same table as Jonathan Jaffe. So that is a bit problematic, though they do have some space between them on the felt. And of course, over on the other table, overall chip leader right now, Sammy the Bull will be operating we will send it back into the arena then as we work our way forward closer and closer to an eventual champion that will be crowned later on here today chip counts at one of our two feature tables brought to you by betacr.eu mine's actually not correct there 20 40 thousand not what we're playing at present. Um, and one both. Mistaken. One in each. We're at 30 and one card in each box. Standby. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Always get a little scared when you go up against the graphics department. You know, those boys run a tight ship. I have to say, I'm pretty interested to see of course, how Sammy the Bull is going to play this big stack. Again, somebody that plays a lot more cash games than tournaments, then you factor in the different options that you have in terms of how often you're going to be adjusting your calling ranges against these smaller stacks, against the multi-way all-ins. Certainly not easy for anybody to navigate, let alone someone who doesn't play tournaments often. And, you know, there's only usually one mystery bounty on the schedule per series for any series these days. So it's not like there's a lot of experience in this particular format for any player, even the most experienced. Yeah, you're right. It hasn't been around that long, as you mentioned, and it does require very specific study kind of get your head wrapped around what the appropriate ranges are with this big monkey wrench that gets thrown into things. O'Dwyer, by the way, playing monkey wrench on this occasion as he is open to 135,000 with a Jack-10 offsuit. Mosbach flatting 
from the small with this queen 10 suited and now Julian is 20 or 10 now it's 20 oh, okay. thinking about whether or not this is a spot five seconds with king queen oh yes use the other yeah. one right the blue one the blue one the blue this is this is only when you haven't acted the red one sweater it's scarf going on blue. Like when there's no action in front of you, because otherwise it's 20 seconds. This one. Oh, that's why I asked. I thought it was 10. That's why I said for. Yeah, but you can't 10. use that one for 10. You can only use it if, if it acts if you're first in. Ah, first so you, so we only have 20 for this. Yes. Yeah. And 10 for the other one is no action. When there's no, no action. This is an additional 30. Yeah, it should be a 30 at this time anyway. Not the 20, oh, and I asked you and you told me 20. Yeah, but it changed a lot of the action. Like I asked you because I was 10, and you put 20, and I asked you how is it 20. It's weird. I'm sorry, but it was really confusing. Um, I will give you whatever you want, but it's really not not good, I guess. What, how much is it? One, three, five. Looks like some confusion okay. with respect to the nature of. Because I send you this one and I ask you yeah. for this one, and you told me it's twenty. That's why I look weird there, for me. Maria. But anyway. Well, Triton, of course, employing it's okay. I'm gonna develop on this one, so then it's gonna be fine. Adjustments for these stages yeah, no. of the you think tournament so? where yeah, you think so. so. That's some good. players might be taking good free flop, of course, on the decision like to stall for pay speak. jumps. 887 with a couple of clubs out there after Julian closed the action with the call. O'Dwyer with the gut shot straight draw. All parties trailing behind King Queen. <laughs> Mosbach checking over. You see Steve eagerly awaiting decisions in front of him. Check. Check. Round of checks, and now a clean jack on the turn will put O'Dwyer in front, but note just how wet it is for Mosbach's Queen-10 suited. Gut shot straight flush draw. Yeah, Mosbach calling from the small blind, of course, can have a lot of these suited, connected, middling cards, you know, 10-9 suited, 9-8 suited. Let's decide to check here with backdoor flush draw, straight draw as well. Check. And O'Dwyer looking to find a little protection. Coordination of this board means that, of course, there's going to be a lot of unfavorable rivers for his jacks and eights. Doesn't really believe that, you know, trips would very often check here. Again, given the texture of the board, would seek some protection themselves. So now Mario, a little less likely to have a hand like trip eights here. The pair on board obviously isn't great for this queen ten of diamonds, but Dwyer having checked back on the flop and suddenly now activating leaves Mosbach expressing some ambitions as he presses this combo draw. Now it blocks 10-9, of course, has plenty of equity if called. And like I said, calling from the small blind will have a lot of combos that contain some of the strongest hands. You know, eight, seven, nine, eight, ten, nine. Jack's the only real improbability as Mosbach would have shoved that pre. O'Dwyer, by the way, going to hang tough in the face of this 710K. Suddenly 1.8 in the middle. Well, O'Dwyer has a pretty key card in the form of the 10 here because blocking 10-9 is nice. Blank 
for the Queen 10 on the end. It is a third club, however. Dwyer blocking some flushes with that 10 of clubs. You know, if we talk about the suited, connected type hands that are going to be calling from the small blind, you know, of course, now Mosbach can't have 10 nine of clubs in this spot. Can't have 10 8 offsuit, so that's not going to be the offsuit combos, just not really going to be worried here about some trips of the offsuit variety. Now the back door flush draw misses, but not the front door. But you wonder if Mo Mosbach is going to be able to go for it here. And that's exactly what he does. You saw him just then say all in. One million with queen high. And now Dwyer has one to chew on. <laughs> and you've got to wonder, you know, what type of hands would Mario do this with? You know, is sevens here pre-flop going to be just a call from the small blind? Would those be a shove? You know, same with pocket eights, you know, hands of that nature that are boated up here. Again, Mario can't have jacks full because he would have shoved that pre. O'Dwyer also blocks jacks of course but that's not really going to be in the range here it's more just about sevens full you know obviously quad eights could be possible but unlikely quad eights might just go for the call on the turn might shove pre-flop as well and even trips of course probably isn't gonna go for it all on the river considering that particular river card considering the fact that they got called on the turn when they check raised Trip certainly shriveling up by the river. So it's really about just the nutted hands, boats. You As know, you touched on, though, that 10 of clubs is so relevant for O'Dwyer. So incredibly relevant in the sense that it blocks straights and some of the most likely flushes that Mosbach is going to call. You know, a hand like Jack 10 of clubs, 10 9 of clubs, not available to Mosbach now. to O'Dwyer, who's expending multiple time banks to work his way through this one. He didn't just snap get convinced by the line. The way this one came down, O'Dwyer open to 135, both blinds flatted. A round of checks on the flop. <clears throat> Check raised to 710 from Mosbach after O'Dwyer bet the 230, made the call, but then concedes on the river. And you can tell he is desperately looking over at Mario for any clue as to whether or not one time went for, uh, that lay down was the right one. Sorry, the red one's 10 seconds. Yeah, the I know, that's why I gave this one. I thought I could have only 10. I just needed 10. Like Mosbach oh, had a little right. smirk available. A little else. Okay. <laughs> I feel like that looks at it all. <laughs> that look was the man who just got away with murder. I don't know. I've seen that look come from somebody who actually had it, though. It's almost like a balanced look. Small <laughs> Don't abuse me, bro. Well, Maria, you were asking for something earlier, and our Crack Backend team has compiled bounty data now available to you. Nice. What's what? Well, what I wanted to know oh, is yeah. who out oh, there oh, has okay. the most bounties, and it looks like that honor belongs to Jan's Aarons, but he is out now with four bounties that he will get to pull tomorrow. Oh. 
We'll have to wait. No waiting, though, for Haxton with King-9 uh -huh. as he shoves it in. The highest number of bounties remaining in the field is three, shared by Sammy the Bull, Soiza, and Mosbach. Leon Sturm now in the cutoff, ace 10. Five seconds. All in. All in. He jams over the top. Doesn't want company. He's all in right, it doesn't just Yeah, yeah no, it doesn't. It doesn't get it. What he does get, though, is a look at a King-9, which is just fine by him. <laughs> you. Spoiler. <laughs> Extra of King-10? 790 in Extra the middle, in the hopes of Haxton as well. Ace, queen, queen. <laughs> and you see oh. Haxton shaking his head. Stern, 98%. Okay. Make that 100. That'll do it for the mighty Ike Haxton, Maria. One of the winningest players to ever do it. Hmm. Mystery bounty format. Claims another one. I'm Mr. 65. Ike's 14th place finish. Well, earn him 48,500. Not a gambler. Haxton has had a couple caches out here in Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm. But what was most memorable for me was when he went three barrels right into Nick Petrangelo's ace king when Ike had a huge stack. I believe it felt like it was in the main event. Not quite sure. The day's a bit blurred together, but Ike tripled against the top of Petrangelo's range. Well, listen, Ike is a guy that we can make a lengthy highlight reel out of <laughs> in terms of spots that he has taken that few others might have had the heart to. To great success, of course. And he has almost 10 million in career Triton earnings, 9.8 now, courtesy of that cash. Could very easily work his way into the eight-figure club before this one's all said and done. open attacking the big blind of the big stack by the way Sammy B Check. neither player hits this eight high two club flop ace high in the lead checking however Steve with the 90k C bet. I can't, how we don't have a screen. What do you want to know? Nothing, but we just don't have a screen. Yeah. With your young guys, you can see. Sammy, not no, no, ready to fold the ace high, especially against the I mean, I mean, I, I, if I want to read something and I dedicate some time to it, I will figure it out. But Aggression that's going to come in the form of C bets a lot. Yeah, I mean, red four on the turn. I, I, and this is that kind of like board texture that really clearly, should be but favoring I can the big blind guess defensive what the numbers Sammy may say. Let's check you know? once more. Let's see whether or not Redwire. Yeah, like, 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 like the blinds, for example. Away. I know it's not going to be... It's going to be zeros behind the three, right? So, But like the, 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 the time until next break, it's a three and a six, I guess. No, it was an eight. There you go. Pretty decent we are. river card for the ace high. Cool. Sure. Pairing deuce, so Dwyer did shut it down. That said, he can always reactivate here on the river. It would seem to be an ambitious spot to take. Queen 10 all. Yeah, you'd imagine that a lot of over pairs are just going to fire through on the you turn. You don't have a three? Has 
chance to give up there. Yep. Waves the white flag. Apparently not. Probably wouldn't sign. have worked anyways. Then you have ace-10, whatever. Well, you would know better than most, Maria, just given your experience having played against Sammy. Yeah, I would say given my experience against Sammy, he would have beat him in the pot. No, okay, maybe not beat him in the pot, but certainly would have called. Well, you should be beating everybody else to our exclusive Triton merch giveaway. If you haven't already, go ahead and type exclamation point giveaway in the chat or scan the QR code on your screen. It's self-explanatory. We have gear, and we're giving it away for free. But you got to sign up. So get in on the Triton Poker Series merch giveaway. I want to see you rocking some of our threads. Which doesn't come cheap, by the way. So. No, you know, but you some real value. You, you get what you pay for. It's of very course. high quality. Cool. <clears throat> Things have been coming apart a little bit for O'Dwyer. Mossbach took a big bite out. Sammy B taking a pot right out. <coughs> <coughs> 20 big blinds still remaining for Steve. Taking a look at the average stack in this tournament, 42 big blinds, so quite deep actually at this stage. Sorry. I didn't have time to look at my cards. Only one sub 10 big blind stack out there, and it belongs to Punat Puntsri. He's already had a double. Race. Maintaining his resiliency. Meanwhile, Julian Sibon. That's why. Queen Jack. Minri's open ace jack for Bold again. He scoots forward. Now has just 17 bigs on the button. How much are you playing? Like seven. Ooh. Five. Feels like Ace Jack should be good enough to, of course, try to ISO Sipon. Hope he has a hand to go with. Really just concerned about the big stack in Sammy's hand in the small blind. The Dwyer in the big blind, less of a factor because he has 20 bigs, so would certainly take a lot of hand. Seems to be struggling with this spot, though. Is it clear? I think it is, but it doesn't appear that he feels the wow. same way. An unexpected muck and one that is what fantastic timing. for Sibon in terms of being dominated. Great and Wendy. obviously fantastic for Bulligan as Bolung with Ace King wakes up and speaks up in the small 320. Let's see Might how Julian. <laughs> Come on, not you. <laughs> you deserve it, actually. 320, you said? Yes. I think it's going to be too much for me. Too much for you? Oh, yeah. Why you don't all in? <laughs> very good hand, very good hand. Julian. Oh, oh, no. the fall. Oh, yeah, I was waiting for him, though. Oh. Thanks for the long. <laughs> You want to do a strike? I go all in, he goes all in, you go all in. <laughs> so, what is the clock? What do you need? Just let you know, like, saying the race, it doesn't mean, like, you can eat here. No, that's why I put directly chips. Is. Sorry? Maybe to go on the last one. I've already got reset, like, two seconds or one to two seconds. Okay, that's why I put. Okay, you. what do you want? You want me to give you a. I'm saying I need to go on okay. this one. Yeah, I know, just like I wanted to do. Sorry, I should have just put one chip when I say race. But. I think it's about the amount. But I guess when you put one chip, then it's a min race automatically. Exactly. That's right? why I did put like the minimum chips I can put. Like. That was really reset. Yeah, yeah, but I know, yeah, for sure I understand what he means. But just like, it's really, really fast 10 seconds. It is. I do, well, you know, it's when called I fast to, action. When I finished to watch my, to look at my card, it was like three seconds. I know, I know. 
it's Sometimes crazy. it's ridiculous. I think now it should be ready. It should be take away. Fine, we should then do the sets. Awesome. But I think that not much point stalling here now. So. Sibon continuing to get his bearings with respect to the time banks. Sturm has been ready to advise. Leon gets himself a walk here. 763,000 in career trade earnings for Leon. His first ever festival was 13? in London. Notched himself a couple oh, of like times along with the final six, table. Uh, like six. At least He's already six, two for yeah. four yeah, here, like including six. 14 oh, no, seven, seven. in the 125k main. Yeah, right. I got a big end you know, these Triton stops just get bigger and bigger with more players either, Sorry. you know, finding themselves here due to having a good run maybe earlier in the year. Obviously, Sturm coming off of winning a bracelet over at the World Series. Or perhaps just enjoying these locations where the Triton events are held, some of the premier places to play. I mean, I've gone on record as saying this is the prettiest room in which one can ever hope to play tournament poker, let alone cash games. Wouldn't that be something? Maybe we should apply for a gaming license in Monaco. 1.7 million. Out here in between Tritons. I'm in. Feels like there should be pretty good action out in these parts. One would imagine. Too much, too much. On the topic of good pretty much all of Leon. it. Rebetting for effectively all of it there over the top of Sammy. Waves the white flag, says too much. Says goodbye to 120k open. Stern, by the way, steely, considering just how young he is. Early 20s, if I'm not mistaken, but one of those guys, mouse in hand. Yeah, I think he's only 22, actually. Let me take a look. A lot of online reps under the belt. See, back when we were cutting our teeth, Maria, you didn't really have the luxury of accelerating your experience levels courtesy of playing online. You had to just get out there and put your hours in in the poker room. No, These and days, <laughs> multi-tabling, multi-sites. Yeah. Hell, multi-accounting sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that type of improvement is a lot more slow and steady than some of these wizards that grew up in the online generation. And yeah, Sturm, only 22 years of age. Incredible. I mean, think about you and me at 22. I mean, I wasn't showing the kind of poise that he is. I still don't have the kind of poise that he does at the poker table. I'm twice the man's age. Yeah, when I was 22, I was firing Limit Hold'em hard at Commerce. Had most of my bankroll on the table on any given day. Oh, yeah. And look at this guy. But we weren't alone in that no, regard. No, of course not. Mas the Bach. reckless behavior, well known, especially in the LA cash game oh, streets. Yeah. It was like a merit patch. Trappy, trappy. And the Austrian here. King Deuce off. Five seconds. This is the worst pre-flop disparity that you can experience in Hold'em. And there it is, 94 to 4. The advantage. Check back from Julian. <laughs> this flop, not one. That rates to give him any trouble. I will mess here. It is a little wet, though. Blind versus blind. I think the kings can begin to put chips forward. Yeah, perhaps just start off with the lead. Sometimes can go for check raises as well. A little bit opponent dependent, of course, in terms of how aggressive the player in the big blind would be in terms of how often they're going to stab when check to in a blind versus blind spot. Now, Sibon showing himself to be in the former. 60K. Mosbach took his chances on Julian doing something like this, but 
do we look for the check raise now or do we flatten hope nothing complicated shows up on the turn? Well, I think Mario just answered that with the swift all in. I just think that yeah. there's too many complicated turn cards on the turn mm. and just enough bet calls perhaps that Sibon will have to continue with some pair and straight draws that will likely pursue that equity in the face of an all-in. Making quick work of the King Deuce is Mario. Okay. Unable to earn any further chips. Mm -hmm. I would have better idea. No? <laughs> I would have not bet, I guess. Beyond, of course, <laughs> those that were fired by Julian on the flop. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would like to play 1,000 to 7. <laughs> We're here for the night. <clears throat> Three now awaits Mosbach's button with action folded around to him, and he will whisper those two little words all in. Has both the small blind and the big blind well covered? Six bigs and 12 bigs, respective, respectively, and Sibon would go with a lot worse aces than this, considering he's down to six bigs, but happy to have top of range off of such a short stack. That he is, as he will stick 480 in there. Mosbach can well afford to hunt a bounty at this price. Oh, yeah. Great shape for Julian. Don't want to get too excited too soon. Although now, sitting even prettier is the ace king on the queen 10 7 board. Deuce is non problematic. Only the three ruins Julian's day, and instead he makes the nuts on the end. So. One, two, three. I think it's 405. You got your double up. Oh, 480. Hmm? You got your double up. I did it. One round, one round later. <laughs> You'll double to 1.1 million plus. I give you a 20. Oh, you want While we do accounting at that feature, we flip on over to the other. Jonathan Jaffe has opened to 200K. With 9-7 off suit, by the way, making use of that second overall chip stack. Penalize him. Oh. <laughs> Slightly shocked. No takers. Yeah. He's really yeah. mucking my cards. <laughs> Slightly shocked. What's going on? <clears throat> Let's put the bounty chip on his bar. <laughs> chips for. Forty bits. It's four bits. No, three bits in a draw. Working our way toward the final table here in the 40k mystery bounty. If you're out there watching us on YouTube, click like. Click subscribe, help us continue to deliver the finest in streaming poker entertainment to your fingertips free of charge. We don't ask much, but we do await what Axel Halle with pocket fours is going to ask for. They are so relaxed. Huh? They are yeah, so relaxed. Down to seven bigs. Chilling. Going to put two of them in there on the very next hand. Every time smiling. Yeah. Axel looks like a man who teaches philosophy <laughs> in like a college somewhere in Provence. You see it. 
Yeah, he's he's out there with the brown leather lavender book bag. essential oils. Right. Rides a bike to class. Basket in front. Bottle of wine. Baguette. <laughs> yes. Always the baguette. His jam of 5.55 now, running into an ace-10 suited for Soiza. He's deep enough to give spins, yeah, and more. he's going to jam himself. <laughs> more than enough hand, more than enough chips, ISOing, and trying to shut out other players. Now, this would be a welcome development, though, if Poonsri decides to go with this hand from the small blind, actually shorter then Halle. Well, that's just the issue, though, isn't it? I know yeah. that at some point, given that you're the shortest overall stack in the field, you're going to have to take a spin. But you hope that you're able to do it in a spot where maybe you can collect a bounty. Ambitious, of course. It would require the demise of others. Oh, but what about Jaffe? A6 suited. And Soiza. I mean, 4.1 I mean, of your 4.7. It's, cr it's crazy to think, but we've talked about how the average EV of one bounty right now is 83,000, which is more than ninth place money. <laughs> you see, you see him just kind of. Uh, now two bounties. But this is two all-ins in front of us. We have to imagine one of these can very well contain a bigger ace. And if that's the case, we have very poor equity. You know, normally you would think it contains a bigger <laughs> ace, but we've talked about just how wide some of these players are ISOing the smaller stack. But a little too much gamble. <laughs> how good? How do you find? It's six suited. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. come on. Caffeine does <laughs> muck everybody. <laughs> Giving him a hard time for suited. taking as long as he did with it. Yeah. Suited. Oh. Anyone for the 10? Me. Me. Nice. Nice. <laughs> so now it's Axel. Uh, took out if I lose. This is like Happy to hear that at least one ace is in the muck, <laughs> limiting Soyza's opportunities jam, huh? to victimize the fours. <laughs> what will be, will be, you know? <laughs> and did you have I see. I see. King Jack King. nine, all spades. Black Ooh. and black. Soiza can still ruin King the spades. party. Everyone gets their money back. Non spade, no, no. ace, queen, or ten. Spade on the turn, however. Five, five, five. Thing is, spade bigger than a five on the end, and they'll chop. Well, Instead, a red five. That would be, that so the flush holds. Didn't deliver the real death flow, though. Axel. Six. Eight, yeah. Six. Uh, sorry, five fifty five. Yeah. That would have been one of the all-time saddest hands of Michael's life. Yeah. <laughs> not really. I mean, I've had worse. 50. Fair enough. Yeah. Stakes or not. Yeah. Yeah. It is what Jaffe it is. pointing out a six was a winner against Soiza for the side. Every now and again, there is a pot that could really break someone. <laughs> I don't know if that was it. I don't feel like that was on the table. <laughs> People were you recovered, however, from issue. your... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One out queens. Yeah, still standing. But you are carrying the trauma. I am deep. Lots of therapy. I should have called. <laughs> so it isn't just the EV that that one outer cost you, but also therapist bills. Yeah, who's going to well. pay for that? The guy who hit the one outer on me? Well, hopefully your health insurance. Don't tell me you're out here without coverage. Well, no, no, I'm covered, but that's because I'm more responsible than the average poker player, which would you believe a lot of them that I've spoken to don't have health insurance. Well, they lead such healthy lives, typically, Maria. Actually, to be fair, those on the Triton circuit do very much share in a largely healthy lifestyle, always looking to optimize, be on peak performance. But the typical poker player, yeah. You're going to need health insurance. 
Yeah, especially the old school players. You think TJ Cloutier was out there with health insurance, paying the premiums? TJ needed craps insurance. That's what he needed. Imad Derwish, King Jack, and open. Soiza, three betting to 500. Two and a half X. We're about to find out how the Frenchman feels about King Jacques. Well, for the smaller three bet sizing, can certainly that. just call C3. It's just about how well he thinks King Jack is going to be performing against the three bet range of Soiza. Of course, King Jack suited would be in there. A little more thought given to King Jack offsuit. Of course, the prospects of having to carry on out of position against Soiza all come together to leave Imad Thank you. folding. And Michael, another pickup. Did get doubled through, of course, by Ale, but has been northbound for the bulk of today's proceedings as you get a look at the trophy. Are those sunbeams coming off of it? Like in the cartoons is usually the leprechaun pot of gold, you know what I mean? Like that's that's hard to pull off. It's just naturally emanating. From Shout out lighting department. Boys doing great work. You think we could light a path? To no. the dessert table? <laughs> 160. I don't think we're going to need any lighting. Dessert table's just glowing on its own. Soiza, looking active, but the A7, within reason. JNT, big blind. Deuces. Saw JNT get real aggressive with deuces earlier. This time playing it as a defend. Ace Queen Jack, top pair, so is out flopping. Should be an easy check fold. So is a announcing 300. No sooner do the words cross his lips than that one comes to a close. Shout out, by the way, to those streaming us live from Thailand. It is... Not exactly prime time right now out in that part of the world. Uh, Currently 12.39 a.m. Staying up late, rooting on Punat Punsri. Anytime he makes a deep run, chat does fill with his fans. As the pot once again fills with Soiza chips. Open to 160 and Fahreddin Mustafov. Black threes. This might be a bad time to feel like pushing back on Soiza. He will set line, however. King Queen suited for Halle on the button. 1.1. Just 14 bigs. Does a flat from Mustafov not look fairly weak? Yeah, it does. And of course, Halle just taking this opportunity to go all in with what he knows, of course, is little fold equity given the bounty situation, but still feels like King Queen suited is a really good yeah. hand. Or less? Even getting called in this spot, as we see he's up against 
pairs, gonna have two overs, suited, connected. Soiza, yeah, yeah ripping nice. over the top, <laughs> just to usher Mustavov's hand further <laughs> into the muck. Yeah, yeah. Nines will be effectively flipping with the king-queen suited. Fahreddin quickly into the muck, 2.6 million in the middle, along with the fate of the Frenchman. Ace King three though, and he hops in front. Flop, pouring a nice glass of red. Suddenly on the turn though, the wine begins to turn acidic, courtesy of a diamond. Backdoor flush draw for Soiza, not available on the end though as the cheese course is delivered. Black force, four side though, a little scary. See, we mixed game players say things like this, right? I mean, I've heard them out there, the two carters, talking about it, but it isn't until you start to play draw games, and I'm not talking Baccarat, in terms of poker, <laughs> that you begin to talk about three and Four siders. By the way, turn my head just in time to catch a glimpse of producer James on his fifth lap of the dessert circuit here in the room. So, like in Deuce, where you would potentially be squeezing. Deuce to seven, that is? Yes. Yeah. Are you scrambling up all of your cards before they pitch you the last one? And then you look one by one. No, I don't. Or do you that. just no, have just it off to the side. Yeah. Squeeze the one. Yeah. But I do like to, especially if I'm drawing kind of dusty, you know, I like to scramble them up just to make sure oh, nobody right. knows what my last card was. <laughs> right. Like, did the you three, make, four, five, did seven. you make a straight or did you make a, <laughs> you know, a wheel? Which one is it? <sighs> you ever do the fifty-fifty, or you know it's one or the other? Yeah. One card pairs then, you, the other does not. And it you makes smoke you nuts. it. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Of course. I'm going to play in your game sometime soon. You should. Come on down. Been a minute since you and I rumbled in the cash game streets. I know, and you know what? Worst case, it's some good content for our commentary. Perhaps I'll have a fun story to share with everybody oh, yeah, next about time. How I got barred from the casino <laughs> that night because you put a beat on me or something. <laughs> Mustafa, ace five. He'll open this one up front. So is a... As now, Been doubled through more than once, but still sits. 2.9 back, 973 board top pair for him. Huh? E. Stop off with the e. quick check back, two tone on the turn. Huh? No, I'm not thinking about it here. Yeah, it decides that he's going to lead on this particular card, even though it's an over card to his pair. Still wants to take the betting lead after Mustafa checked back on the flop. Bahadeen into the muck, still in second, in front of Soiza, and slip down to third, Jaffe, ball stack 4.6, as you see, 4, 5, and 6, all playing under the French banner. With Punzer down to just three bigs, 265,000. Going to need a spin. No shot at that depth. He's not going to have to see five. Lines at 40 and 80. 
with the ABK Big Blind Anti means every orbit is costing 200,000. Those chip counts brought to you by betacr.eu. Most recent elimination is the one we caught of Ike Haxton on tab payout for 13th, 53,500. That payout will stay flat for 12th as well. As right on cue, Punsri has pushed forward. His A7. Receives some pushback from an A7 for Jaffe. Axel. King Queen. He is covered by Jaffe. As a covering stack, perhaps he would be more inclined to make some noise against the three better. Yeah, this is definitely a different situation than when he had the King Queen suited with the flat in between. This time it's already been three bet to him. Of course, Jaffe going to be ISOing quite wide against the very short stack of Punsri. But Halle doesn't really want to take the variance here. Does he mod? No, the French delegation all into the muck. Mustafa, though, big blind already invested. Jack 10 off suit. For 50, yeah? So he will call. Especially closing the action here knows that it's not going to be more. You don't need oh, it. Side pot develops for 370,000. Finish the thought, sorry. Yeah, that it's not going to be more than 450K to C3, no way, so which is, right. you know, reasonable enough for him to yeah. pursue that bounty. Jack-10 plays well against a lot of the range that Jaffe could be ISOing there with. So the two A7s Check. tussling with the Jack-10. Nobody with a diamond on this King-King-5 board. 9.15 in the main. Jaffe still with business to attend to against Mustafa, who checks over. As you mentioned, a little bit in the side pot and the bounty, so worth this bet from Jaffe shut out some random hands that could turn a pair and take away Jaffe's ability to win this bounty off of Punsri. Oh. Jaffe barreling 200. King. Mm -hmm. Hauling in the side and this one will get chopped no matter what. These are just formalities that we undertake. If this is correct, good luck to us. So we were lucky. Obviously. Punsri surviving comes to the delight of the Thai fans. Flipping back over to the other feature. Julian Simon limping the button with an ace two suited. This is a bit unorthodox. Yeah, that's quite interesting. Especially considering, you know, he has 14 bigs. Mindful perhaps of Sammy the Bull with such a big stack and maybe chips that are happy to get in there and hunt bounties. Didn't want to fold, but didn't want to raise either. Yeah, if we're playing for chips, of course, ace do suited. It's just going to be a pure shove off of that stack, but certain implications between being in the money right now and also, of course, bounty hunt. 
ongoing. Saucy bone on that texture. Happy to just ask a question. 80K. Sammy's 10 high quickly into the bin. France showing up, by the way, here. Two tables left. There are four French participants. 30% of the remaining yeah, field. Sure. Jaffe, chip leader, the lone remaining American. Balloon, hailing from Indonesia. Quite a few Frenchmen left in the yeah. mix. All in. All in. How much? Seven, nine. All in here from Bouldigan. Russian on the button with the ace queen. Balloon ace nine dominated. Oh flat yeah. sent. Yashislav. <laughs> Thrilled to be in this position here. Yeah, we saw him pass up on the spot earlier with ace jack offsuit. Now down to 10 big blinds. Really welcome development to have balloon dominated versus situations where he's going to be quite live. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> in between. 10 8 4 board. Ace Queen still in front. Five. Both players hitting the ace on the end, so it is just the nine that needs to be avoided, which it oh, is. <laughs> Did you think it was a nine? <laughs> oh, Actually, I was going to say it's <laughs> seven to me. Like and the ever animated Vyacheslav yeah, Buldigan with a very infectious smile. Given a double there by Sammy. His bounty hunt comes up short. Uh, seven. Uh, seven, nine. JNT makes it 200 to go. Two queens for Punsri now is obviously the time and a good hand to be up against in terms of the queen 10 for JNT. Five seconds. Roll in. Play roll in. Jaffe passed up an A6 suited earlier. Yeah, this one a little different because, of course, you do have JNT opening the action. And so JNT is not particularly points. short. So if Jaffe wants to try to ISO this all in, call. yeah, I was going to say it would probably be a lot of chips to risk. Instead, going to call and hope that JNT doesn't decide to do that. Is the action reopened, though? Whether it is or it isn't. <laughs> the matter being discussed by Jaffe, who, along with JNT, fails to improve on the Jack 5 4 board. Punsri in great shape. Jack of Hearts, a pretty good card for JNT's holding in the sense that the backdoor equity can be ever present on certain turn cards. But both of these hands gonna need a lot of help against pocket queens. Well, with the side pot dry, Maria, these guys are supposed to have that unwritten agreement of just trying to work their way to a showdown and hope that they can get rid of Punsri? 
Yeah, but it's also the balancing act of, you know, not letting your opponent catch up and have a chance to win Punsery's bounty. Janty. Looked like he was deep in thought for a second, but just now realizing that actions on him does check back. <laughs> oh, Jaffe sopping wet seven of diamonds on the turn, nut flush draw, and the open ender. A heck of a turn card for his hand, and we were discussing the merits of, of course, checking through with a dry side, but again, when you balance that with wanting to win Punsery's bounty and getting rid of JNT right now would put you in a better position, of course, going heads up against Punsery's holding. Not a great board for JNT. He's going to let go of the Queen 10. Yeah. Yeah, JNT. A bad feeling. You have Queen Punsery. I do, I do terrified have here, <laughs> as he knows. <laughs> Jaffe has so many outs. Big hands, big hands. 980 in the middle. Jaffe clearing JNT. And getting there on the end. The Jack of Diamonds downing the two queens as Punat will not work his way to this FT. Always such a good sportsman. Immediately shaking hands with Jaffe as he passes the remainder of his stack over. It was always going to be an uphill proposition for him. Jaffe claiming a bounty and a victim here in the mystery bounty. Payday for Panat. 53,500. There's just 12 remain now. It's been nonstop action over here, Ollie, that we've almost forgotten to mention the 50K that's going on in day one of this tournament with 88 entries already. Yeah, I'll tell you what, a lot of the people that have been here since the onset very much wanting to get their beaks wet in that 50K. As things proving quite expensive if you haven't been cashing on the front side of this one. 200K, 125K, 100K. Multiple bullets potentially being invested. As you see Jaffe now, over 70 bigs. 5.6 million in front of him. Soiza back up over 4 million at 51 bigs. And Mustafa rounding out the top three with the log jam from third on down. Of sorts. No clear short stack here at this table. So perhaps the bounty hunts will be kept to a relative minimum after the departure of Punsri. Soiza, cut off open. Jaffe now, heat check, ace queen of spades, small blind three bet, dominating Soiza. You That's probably don't want to take necessarily the offsuit combo here of king queen up against the chip leader. You are in position though. So you do see the call coming in often. You will be left in some very tough spots. So I certainly doesn't want to hit a queen right now. Let's make the added investment for 440K. Ends up with two overs and a gut shot. And Jaffe probably feels like Soyuz is going to have pretty narrow calling range, all things considered, against a player at the table that has him covered. The only 
player at the table that has him covered. Still going to be a part of the range that Jaffe's going to try to fold out some of the weaker middling pairs that would have called you know, sevens, eights, you know, even tens here. Cool. Probably just going to call pre-flop. Jaffe. No. Keeping on the throttle. That's 750 being flatted, adding 1.5 into the middle. And there's the magic bullet. A 10 of hearts on the turn. Soiza with the nuts. But note that a king would give Jaffe Broadway. Jaffe double checking does block king queen. Unblocks diamonds. Unblocks hearts. You know, how many possible sets would Soiza have in this spot? Again, with ICM, might Soiza just be calling pre with jacks, tens, nines, off of 50 bigs? How many two pair combos are going to be in here? Perhaps jack 10 suited, 10 nine suited. A lot of pair and straight draw possible as well. Queen Jack suited, okay. Queen 10 suited. But again, Jaffe does block okay. some of those combos. Does check it, however. SPR just about pot here. For Soiza, two tone. Seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. That's just seven hundred thousand in there. That's sub quarter pot, Maria. Obviously looking to entice some of the draws, preferably not flush draws, of course. And there's some clean outs for Jaffe, of course, as you mentioned. You know, if a king rolls off, that doesn't fill in any flushes. That would be Jin. Pretty decent price here for Jaffe to get to the river. He agrees as he slides forward 700,000 and the two big stacks at this table continue this collision. Lack of a heart and a diamond for Jaffe also could be lending to the notion that Soiza has a flush draw. Board pairing nine, backdoor hearts showing up. Check. Jaffe with a quick fire check. Not Soiza's favorite card. No, and you know, Neither player can love the presence, of course, of that backdoor flush coming in. Certainly the potential for boats all around here. Michael thinking it over would hate to make a misstep here. Just two million back and a whopping four and a quarter million in the middle. Yeah, less than half pot behind for Soiza. Doesn't block any flushes, you know, doesn't block a hand like ace, queen of hearts, potentially. Can you get called by worse? If you go all in here with this particular run out, what about hands like Jack's tens? <laughs> you see a very reluctant check back from Michael. Hates to leave the meat on the bone, but recognizes that there was some real risk to the rewards that he sought there. So. 
Jaffe will head to the break with far fewer chips than he had prior to that altercation with Michael Soiza, who's going to have a very different feeling heading into the break. Get a load of this. 79 big blinds. And now, far and away, the overall chip lead for the Malaysian, 6.3 million. Jaffe, well off the high water mark, 3.6 million in front of him. Blinds, 40 and 80,000 as the players are heading to a scheduled break with just 12 remaining here in the mystery bounty. We bring you back to the desk, Maria and Ali. Headed to this break, pretty standard fanfare, I would say. I call it standard now because we've grown accustomed to some of the implications of the mystery bounty, but we've cooled off a little bit in that respect as the bounty hunts have eased a touch. Yeah, and as these stacks develop in a way where there's multiple big stacks at the table, you know, sometimes the ISO comes not in the form of just shoving, but in a smaller raise, which allows the big blind to get in there as well. And still some of these multi-way affairs when somebody is all in, but the feature table not containing a whole lot of short stacks, as you mentioned. The other table, on the other hand, does have a couple of, you know, sub-10 big blind stacks in the mix, so... Specifically, Julian Sibon and Leon Sturm, the two that you're referring to, Maria, is obviously we'll be keeping our eyes peeled on them. Hold the thought. Let's send everyone to a break. Just about 10 minutes' time. We're going to come back and pick up the action with 12 remaining here in the 40K Mystery Bounty. <laughs> Across the world, so many players. This is a crazy. It's a doozy. Poker broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series the of Poker. poker the biggest event. poker site. Now larger than all of GG Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Bounties in play. Smallest bounty 
worth 40k. You know, a buy-in in this event. But the number that we keep repeating over and over again is the average Only. EV of a bounty, $83,000. So is a jamming two queens over the top of another Jack-10 suited speaking up. Apologies for the interruption. Morton Klein, a couple of fives. Yeah, and who's going to come for Soyuz's bounty? A little less attractive to Klein as he doesn't have Soyuz covered. So, you know, certainly a little worse to be calling off in these spots when you don't have a chance to win the bounty. But Kenny could be interested for 20 bigs. That he could. I don't know Kenny to be one to shy away from a gambling spot. Oh, no. Indeed. He will take the gamble. So he's in great shape here for a double. As he gets bounty hunted. 1.8 million chip pot. Nine of hearts in the window was menacing. Followed by a king and a ten. The queen has some perspective complications. Seven of hearts. And now additional paths to disaster for Soiza. Couple of blockers though. Eight on the turn. But a safe king on the end. And Soiza's bounty will remain intact, and his stack will double, and then some. The tongs are a well, little bit out of grasp. Well, the tongs would give you added reach. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I can't get there because My the tongs God. are actually further okay. away Thank on you. the plate mm, than yes. the actual dessert. So you see my problem here. Although, you know, we do have a break coming up. We also have a producer who can hand you these tongs. Okay. Or he can just walk over to the table, use the tongs himself, eat a piece of dessert, and then walk away with a very smug look on his face. We will remember that, of course. Morton Klein, couple of nines. Today, so <laughs> Mustafov, two queens. Those nines have been ever present here at this feature. Have not performed particularly well, however. King eight, three Almost. board. This time, things Come on. perhaps come looking to like <laughs> they're going to be better for Mustafov. 1.3 in the middle, two outer. <gasps> oh, the four side spade. Not the one that. <laughs> And now Uruguay's Francisco Benitez as the queens and the nines have become themes. Just 11 bigs. This is obviously going to look incredibly right, strong. 390. Yeah, 390. But Sipon yeah. like probably it, but can't fold for yeah. the bounty. Got a quick <laughs> count. You keep Said dead. he didn't no, like it. <laughs> and he really doesn't like I it. Know. Yeah. The displeasure. Yeah, <laughs> but this time I make the king, it. I'm sorry. Manuel is not as good as I am to make the king. On appelle le roi. Petit roi. Même configuration. C'est ça. Oh, right in the window. window. Plus de chance. <laughs> Pour l'instant. Shaco first. With just a stone one outer. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Ask for the wettest card in the deck and receive it. The Jack of Hearts Jack now suddenly now from one out. Two of hearts. <laughs> any heart or that queen. <laughs> and instead, it's the three of spades. Audible frustrations there for Benitez, but obviously a lot better be to be on. Looks like he was first seen in Cyprus with one cash over five events there, but he's only played one other event out here in Monte Carlo and did not finish in the money there. Taking a peek at his Hendon mob. 
career live earnings beyond the Triton border. A little over 1.25 million as fellow countryman Imad Derwish opens to 150,000. He looks down at an Ace King suited. I don't care what is on the rest of his shirt. I'm a fan of just what I can I see of the shirt. Looks like a holiday dachshund. Like Looks like 910, actually. The more relevant appearance. Of course, Dervish with a couple of queens. Ready. And waiting. The classic in an almost 2 million chip pot here. For the fate of Ale. Hanging in the balance to King High Board, though. You can see shake of the head from Imad. Prepay in hand. And it would seem with good reason as the queens find no added equity on the turn and don't find a third lady on the river. Is it Holiday Dachshund or is it Where's Waldo Dachshund? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Leave one of the first people or maybe even the first person to pull bounties pulls the big one. Now, I was there presiding over that. You don't even remember? And I don't remember, truth be told. There's Jaffe. How much is it? Ace 10 jamming. Greenwood wants a count. <coughs> All in? All in. You can see Greenwood finding King Queen on the button and deciding that that's good enough to ISO what is a bounty on the line from Jaffe. Going to be performing decently against that shoving range off of 11 bigs. Going to contain, of course, all the pairs that Greenwood has two overs to, some of these ASAX holdings where he's live. I like the opportunity to hunt not <laughs> one but two bounties. Engage Strava, we get our answer. So nice. Hunter, that doesn't sound oh, good for me. You park appeal. Okay, we like that. Oh, so wow. it's gonna so be a three-way pot. So alive. Cool. What was that first one, Jans? The queen. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Let me do this. Greenwood Good and Strava will face <laughs> off for one and a quarter million on the side. Wow, uh, double bounty. Jaffe. I mean, they have shot at 1.7 no, for, no, for the main. No. Stavros yeah. sixes are in front, but no longer okay. on an ace jack five board where Jaffe has outflopped the field. Well, I mean, I think we'll queen be pretty nice. He's too. still in the lead <laughs> against Greenwood for the side, though. Luke with the Broadway gutter okay. and instead hits the queen. This is fine. Classic yeah. spot for Which oh, the River Six. Oh, it's Jaffe. Yo, Broadway yes. draw. <laughs> Yo, Han. <laughs> Welcome back for continuing coverage of the $40,000 Mystery Bounty Day 2, playing down to a champ. 39 began the day, 27 were in the money, and now we find ourselves with just 12 runners. Ali Najad alongside Maria Ho bringing it to you. Just a, a little while left, potentially, between now and when we're going to be getting to the final table. 12 runners, and as we look out at the chip counts, though, it is Leon Sturm with five big blinds, he and Julian Sibon, the only two in that really threatening position of having to jam or get out of the way. But nevertheless, the fact remains, the bounties, the targets on your back, things could open up, wheels could be greased. Yeah, people at that table loving that at their table there are two short stacks and we're still kind of at the point where, of course, the bounty is going to be worth more than the pay jumps that they're receiving on this end. Now when we get a little bit closer to the final nine and the final eight, then that money is going to be a lot more relevant in terms of how you want to choose to, you know, use your stack, whether you're willing to call it off at that point. But 
Some interesting storylines I feel like are developing. We have Mario Mosbach still in the mix who missed out on his first Triton title, finishing yep. second in the Invitational. Jonathan Jaffe with a big stack and actually winning the 50K Turbo Bounty earlier on in this series. Yep. And Sammy Belong, second in chips, you know, relative newcomer in general, not only to the tournament scene, but high rollers as well. Somebody to look out for. Yeah, no question about it. It's going to be $718,000 going to our eventual champion, 484 to second, 333 to third. But the on-deck payout at present is 53,561.5 if you can nose your way into the top 11 in 8K pay jump right now. But, of course, as you touched on, the envelopes and the bounties, that which are being hunted as the blinds move to 50 and 100,000 with 100K ante. That's your entire field across two tables, six on each, and a very different and somewhat enviable situation on the red table with those two shorties, both situated there, as you touched on, Maria. Conversely, on the blue table, really, the cluster between Mustafov down to Tohel. None of these guys forced to be jamming pre. Soiza, a lovely spot to be in as your overall chip leader, having taken a bundle away from Jaffe, who slips to third behind Balloon. I hope I sniped the last one. And there is your chip leader, Malaysia's Michael Soiza, king queen in the hijack as we get things back underway. <clears throat> Just the min raise open here. Five seconds. Jaffe wondering if Soiza off of the big stack might be opening a little bit too wide here. And Jaffe going to test that theory right now with the three bet. Saw Soiza right before break win a big pot against Jaffe with King Queen. This time has Jaffe covered. Owen. Three bets to 575 as Jaffe desperately trying to reclaim the chips that he lost just before the break, but gets a helping of Soiza's King Queen which jams and further in the wrong direction goes Jaffe. We flip back over to Sammy the Bull and Company. Oh. He's the mayor at the red table. Oh. Leon Stern, shortest stack in the field, cut off A6. Is now the time. 450. Race to 450,000. Sure looks that way. Not an all in, but Fold. a most. Fold. All in. 50 and 475 there. Bulldigan says, hey, give me in. that extra quarter and let's take a whirl. Nice for Bulldigan to be able to close the action here in Sturm. Just going to take a little time on the brink of perhaps a pay jump here between Fold. 12th and 11th. Well, Doesn't table. see anything brewing on the other table, so let's uh, the quarter in, and you see Vyacheslav saying, eh, I'll take it. I'm Three to two both, dogs. Both of out. Is king, so. Thank you. Are king? Are king? One point one million one. chip pot. Three. Yeah, Sturm, hold. Very Fox. much so. On an ace jack deuce board. Yeah. Top pair. Yes, indeed. Could leave Bulldigan yes. drawing dead, but instead oh, the eight on the turn now gives Vyacheslav five outs. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't one of them, no. It's crazy. We probably get a little sweat. And Leon's bounty remaining intact. Uh, that double. And Bertrand is good. You. Put him in front of Julian Sibon. Who now sits on the short stack behind Stern. Flipping it back over to the other feature. We find another ace high versus king high altercation. JNT. Flatting. The Mustafov open. Pre. Ace jack four board. 
Checks his aces. Yes. It feels like Mustafov here is going to be firing quite often on that flop. Perceived range of JNT. Going to be somewhat weak. Well, hang on now. A little 100K sprinkling on the flop, which was designed mostly to just take it then and there. And Mustafa picks up a diamond draw. Does check back to realize that equity. Now hits a king on the end. JNT not going to value bet the ace. Chuck. Mustafa not going to bite. Oh. Yeah, just too much showdown value on the river and feeling like when JNT continues, they're going to have a lot of ASEX. Didn't want to take himself to value town there. Just shy of the average stack of 2.7 million. Fifth overall. Came in chip leading on the day. I will see if you bluff Fellow me. countryman Imad <laughs> Dervish <laughs> was second. You can see, no problem. Yeah, uh, uh, of course I can see. <laughs> I, yeah, no bluff. No bluff? I know, I know. Yeah. And I think. Bounty format, of course, favors some of these players that have higher V-pips because, you know, patience being a pretty important part of tournaments, but you don't really need the same level of patience in this type of tournament as your standard fare. Okay, let's see. Ace. Ooh, not bad. Copy, pasta, call. Ace king. Oh, fuck. Derwish with a couple of fives. Ripping it in there and Soiza. Out of the big, waking up with an ace king, ready to go for a spin. This is a four and a three quarter million chip pot out of nowhere. And without the presence of the short stacks on this particular table, Darish is trying to take his fold equity there, BVB, but ace king. Non compliant pre and unimproved pose. Imad just fine with it as it stands. Turn. Okay, six, chop, chop. Fair. Isn't troublesome. <laughs> Nor is the river. <laughs> nice double up. <laughs> so Imad <laughs> can exhale. Yes. Yeah. Coupled with the masseuse, tension levels reducing. The masseuse didn't even do the, the step back and wait for the run out. She just kept right on going. It was well, I appreciate she felt that. Like, you know, yeah. we pay by the minute out there, Maria. You know, the step back. What's that? The one I hate is when they're working the phone with one hand and then using one hand on you. And I'm telling them, listen, that's fine. But I'm paying half price for as long <laughs> as you're out there texting with one hand, massaging with the other. Well, usually they do that and they think they're slick about it and that you don't notice. No, no, no. But you do. You're oh, on. Yeah. You're on top I'm all of it. Over it. Yeah. For sure. You can't tell when there's only one hand back there. No. Sometimes they try to fool you by putting the knee, and then the hand, and then taking the other hand off for a second. What sort of charlatans are you allowing to lay hands on you in the poker room? You've never seen a oh, knee to the back in these chair I mean, massages? In, in, in <laughs> UFC, <laughs> I, I, a knee to the back? <laughs> I did ask one therapist to give me her best rendition of chiropractic work, and she did bring the knee, which was effective in making me require another massage the next day. <laughs> we did get some snap, crackle, and pop, but short-lived was the relief. <laughs> What's Darwish calling for here? Not 10-8 suited. 
my phone is my phone. Jack seven for Michael. Test the waters against Mustafa. Happy to check back with Queen High. King nine deuce board. Neither player connecting. So Isa could, of course, be limping in with some of the stronger parts of his range. Sometimes we'll have traps. And should, in theory, have some more ace axes than Mustafa. Hundred K probe from Jack High. Mustafa does call, and clearly he is just not buying that the King X combos are involved in the Soiza limp range. As such, wants to find the turn and find out whether or not Soiza's got another barrel, which he doesn't. Ace could be tough for Mustafa to rep, though, so he does check back. Has the best hand with Queen High until the seven rolls off. Now Soiza with showdown value in the form of fourth pair. Your hands are lucky. That's why I told you. Seven. Unbelievable. Unlucky. Check, check on the end. And so is a seven. Does show down for the winner. Steadily, we work toward the final table here in the Mystery Bounty. Pleased to have all of you with us, regardless of time zone or locale. Hope that you're enjoying this coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Third season, second stop. Current player of the festival, Matthias Eibinger. Trying to work his way up the season three leaderboard. 200. Meanwhile, Soiza working his way up in range considerably on the button. 200,000 announced from the Queens. Soiza very liable to be opening much wider, okay. having the small and the big blind covered in this spot. What does Jaffe want to do with 30 bigs and ace jack offsuit? Oh. Yeah. Jams the 2 9 and Soiza. Queens, Queens. All set for him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Kings for a minute. This? Shit. Just Queens. Are good. What the fuck is this? Michael has been Jaffe's nemesis. Almost 6 million chip hot. Somehow breaking out here. 5-4 rainbow board, though. Breaking Jaffe's spirit for the time being. Turn fails to produce the needed ace. And now Jonathan Jaffe, who not long ago was the overall chip leader, has just three outs, wants to stay alive, and the six of spades is not one of them. So Jaffe. Says his goodbyes as JNT wants to make sure he gets a handshake. Disappointing, Maria, for Jaffe. It really came apart swiftly for him. Yeah, just ran into <laughs> Soiza, who just happened to have a huge hand there, but also in that king queen versus ace queen confrontation, of course. Not much he could do. The price. So perfect for him on the turn call with Ace Queen. Just didn't connect on the river. And Sibon, sigh of relief as he is a recipient of an AK pay jump. That he is. 
Jaffe. Taking home 53,500. Next two payouts, 61.5. So is a up and over 8 million now, by the way, as we flip back over to the other feature where we find the short stack. Leon Sturm putting a million forward with King Queen. Mario Mosbach hijack pocket eights. Looking for the count. And more so looking for the bounty. Mosbach fortunate to still be Play in as he took sixes against sevens against nines earlier and made a straight. Yeah. Okay. Claiming a double elimination and looking for even more bounty money here as his king queen does jam over the top. You see king jack and ace three into the bin behind. I'm glad it's a flip. Uh, Leon. Saying it's glad it's a flip, but <laughs> the coin you turned in, in favor of Mosbach. There's a bit here. Someone busted already. Oh, in a call, table one. Oh, that's a real flip. I fall at King Jack. <laughs> Let's go. I still have more. <laughs> well, I don't think Sturm wanted to know that. No, not at all. Sammy advising him that remaining deck. That's it, a block. Short one again. king. Oh. I don't feel particularly strong eight, about this one. Ace, eight, seven. Um, Leaves the odds low. That would be good. Sturm saying, I don't feel particularly good about this one. And now yeah, it is official. Thing. He is the uh, next casualty. Right, yeah, the right behind Jonathan, Jonathan Jaffe. Out goes the young German. In 11th, pay jump secured though, 61,500. Adding to the two caches he's already had here at this festival. Mosbach adding to his stack in the process. How are you? How would you like the pub? You like it's it? It's up the leaderboard. 3.6 million. Good for fourth overall. Average stack about 30 big lines right now. More people below that mm -hmm. waterline. <laughs> and, and lost. Sivan running out of options as the big blind is coming around next hand. Decides to wait it out. He's pulled again. Time. With the ace, eight suited. Five seconds. Time. Torching a couple of those. Five Unopened pot pre-flop right. time banks. Before his tanks roll. Oh. One four. One point four. Oh. Oh. I just takers. I just it's so fast. Right? Yeah, oh, it's crazy. so fast. It's crazy. I think it's I really need to see. <laughs> and even even more with Mr. Bouncy, we should have more time. All fast. Cutting red. I guess. So he's got the right idea. He pulled the drawstring out. I think when I get home, I'm going to do it too. You know? You don't need the drawstring. you got to be a leader, not a follower, Ali. Oh, wow, this guy must have. He got I didn't mixed think it was well. that serious. You know, I'm sure you've never taken a fashion cue from anyone, Maria. It's always been original assemblies. If your oh. friends jumped off a bridge, would you? I mean, what made them oh. jump? Is there something good down there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Me too. Perhaps, you know, a Michelin star underwater That's dining funny. experience. Now I feel like you've been rummaging through Instagram oh. 
stumbled onto the Dubai rabbit hole. Don't they have something like that out there? Maybe in the Maldives, I think, there's some kind of underwater restaurant. Oh, Dwyer, limping the button here, Maria. This is an idea with 10-8 off suit. Five seconds. Note the stack depths behind him. See, Bowen in the big, incredibly short. Osbach, happy to flat and just look at the dustiness of Julian's kit. <coughs> Jack's back. Sorry. Off we go to the 9-4-3 board and Sibon has the best hand. Checks and an uncomplicated turn for Julian's purposes. Can he ever just assume the three rates to be good here and get it in knowing that people are going to hunt him, or does he need to preserve that stack? That's a really great question. It's certainly very tricky up against two op opponents. If it were heads up, might be a different story. Could feel more comfortable that limp from O'Dwyer on the button, presenting some traps as well. Check. Check. Second round of knuckles, and that queen could be a little bit scary under normal circumstances, but it has not connected with the opposition. Will Mario or Steve seek to bluff at it? And a real investment from them pre-flop. Sibon trying to show down now with this check on the river. Well, don't let 400K just sit out there in the middle and think that <laughs> oh. O'Dwyer's not going to go after it. A hungry man. <sighs> Five and a quarter. Exactly enough to cover Seabone. That's not an accident. And I also mentioned that, of course, O'Dwyer can be limping the button with some traps there as well. You know, some of the strongest hands might want to bet on the turn, though. So it's really just feeling a little bit more polar to queen or nothing. I can't really imagine that O'Dwyer's going to check twice with a significant piece of the board on the turn with some of those straight and flush draws possible. Quite hard to pinpoint a range for O'Dwyer. I mean, it kind of does feel like he just hit the queen, doesn't it? Yeah, the pre-flop range with the limp is what is very difficult for Sibon to be able to hone in on at this point. Again, some traps available but also some middling cards similar to what we see O'Dwyer's actual hand being in this spot. But Sibon wondering why some of those hands wouldn't maybe start bluffing on the turn. And it looks like Sibon does make the call. For his tournament life, Julian Sibon sniffing that one out in the face of the overbet from O'Dwyer, who obviously Gave it all he had there. Recognizing 10 high didn't have showdown value. Yes. 
Credit where credit is due for Julian. Here it is, first ever Triton Festival, second ever event, failed to cash in the 30K7 max. Definitely try to make up for it and then some here, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Over 61,000. Do you still have a running bounty tally going? Not a running tally. Just have the line that the back end team put together for us. Soiza is likely to be leading the field in bounties, though, now. Was at three earlier, but has knocked out Jaffe and, I believe, one or two other players since then. Five seconds. Race to 200,000. Ten remain. Osbach attacking from the button. Julian won't put the newfound chips to work. Oh. Hold again. Let's it go. Quite tense. Maria, right now, uh, you know, the bounty hunt was on. People were freewheeling. The chips were getting in quite often in all sorts of spots on the march to the money bubble. And even once it burst, but just a function, I suppose, of stack depths as those bounty hunts are pricey at present. Especially with Sibon having doubled up to 14 bigs. Payout's also getting more significant and, you know, as some of these pay jumps start becoming a little bit more meaningful to these players, then the bounty hunt might take a backseat to that. As we know, the average bounty worth about 83,000. But when we look at eighth place plus guaranteed payouts of more than that, Six hundred. Six hundred. Well, now Julian, ready to party with an ace ten on the button, no less. How much you have behind? One point four total. One point four total. Six x, and Sammy, in the big with an ace jack suited, Maria. Sammy's been a little bit quiet since, you know, he got the chip lead earlier with a double limb, well, triple limb. See? That quiet silence broken in the form of a covering three bet. Mm -hmm. Good luck. And Julian is going to dig in. Sabone, who worked so hard to get those total. chips. Yeah, he said 1.4. So yeah, I said on him. Now finds himself dominated against Sammy. Very deflating to get shown an ace jack in this spot, but note that he still has 23% equity. Almost 3 million chip pot here. Can Julian set off on a spin? Does swap himself a gut shot to Broadway, but the two team? hearts oh, out there, and the ace jack looks good. Jack blocker for Sammy. And it's just the three remaining hooks that will salvage Sibon instead. A five on the end, and just when the Frenchman thought, perhaps languishing on a short stack, I've gotten my double, wins at my back, out the door he goes in 10th. As this is. On a roll. Cooler, cooler. We'll get back to that in a second, but pay jump now for ninth place as 
Julian Sibon takes home 61,500. I wish I run this good in cash game, PLO. I win two million, three million already for sure. <laughs> 72,000 for nine. I know it's but this is a seven nine max nine tournament, so actually the final eight. table uh, will be eight players. Uh, yeah, I guess it's a seven handed tournament, it's eight. Or, sorry, what is it? Uh, I'm just now noticing, Nanko. but is that an ace of spades tat on Sammy's right wrist? Yes. That's a real commitment. I think I asked him about that one time, and, you know... I mean, you're not messing around. Even though it's a little... Right. Even though it's a little what? No, I'm saying even though it might be a little cliche for a poker player to How have much the ace up the right? sleeve, it doesn't hurt. I'm just saying the man loves the game if he's willing to walk into a tattoo parlor and put the ace of spades on request. <laughs> Folded around to Sammy in the small. Limps with King Three offsuit and middling cards for O'Dwyer. Feels good to just see three for cheap. Jack, ten deuce and much like most of the dating apps out there, both players failing to make a connection. <sighs> Albeit there is a gut shot straight draw available to O'Dwyer. Sure. Checks back. Now hits the seven on the turn. Suppose this is akin to just getting that first message replied to right when you were gonna give up. Yeah, if you're on Bumble, you might be left waiting for them to message you first. Got to extend the 24 hours in that spot if you're enthusiastic enough about the situation. Balloon checking. Again, O'Dwyer with the check back. One last 50. knuckle out of Sammy and Steve. I give you more than a walk. <laughs> feeling confident enough to ask him out. Give you more than a walk. The 150. <laughs> Doesn't get called. I was working hard at the dating analogy through that one. That, you know. I was going to take it one step further and be like, does Sammy look like the kind of guy that likes long walks on the beach? Where would you take Sammy on the first I'm going to just be honest. Sammy, no. He does not look like the kind of guy that likes long walks on the beach. He looks like the kind of guy that likes long sessions in a cash game. Or in the tattoo chair. I don't think that tat took too long. That ace of spades. Felt like some pretty run-of-the-mill standard fanfare. Far from a run-of-the-mill day. <laughs> Michael Soiza <laughs> over at the other featured table as we flip it to check in on him and company. Oh, aces. Are you ready? Already, huh? Seems a little unfair. That it does. Oh no. So uh, making it 200 to go, small blind, king 10. Is the oh no a bit premature, Maria? Or do you feel like JNT so. wants to get it in? All right, it is forceful, but it is a flat. The man doesn't really like to fold for very long. Gets a little antsy. Doesn't want everybody else to have fun without him. Note that his flat invites him out to take the price with 6-4 suited. As Suiza has company. 10-4-3, both blinds connecting with this flop. Trouble on the horizon for Team France. One million. And you see JNT leading right out. One million into 700 and over bet. One million. And a big chunk Dollar, of his two six uh, back. One million dollars. <laughs> and this is gonna save Darish from continuing, but Soiza looking to get the rest of it. 
And as you mentioned, that commitment from the big bet sizing from Terrell. See how he wants to play it, though. Rainbow texture. Ace is just in such great shape here. He doesn't have to ask for all of it here and now, does he? Unless he's scared of an overcard coming off sometimes, and that might be killing his action. But giving JNT just a little bit of rope. <laughs> <laughs> JNT recognizing that he's in the octagon with Soiza now. And that nine isn't going to look scary. Yeah, there's the all-in that you felt like might have been the case, and Soiza plays this one to perfection as he snaps and advises JNT. And he is going to be up against the aces. Not wanting to slow roll, Mike. King 10. Instantly let JNT know what he was up against before they officially were asked to get on their backs. JNT does have five outs to spoil the Soiza party, though. Three of diamonds isn't going to do it. Thank you. My friend, you cure. And Michael Soiza eliminates Jean Noel Torrel. JNT's ninth place finish will earn him $72,000. Yes. Here. Nice wife. At a festival in which he already picked up a seven figure score in the 200K invitational, finishing in fourth. The other storyline, of course, though. Soiza. You want to win the heads up? Now, uh, I w you ask me if up I want to win the and over up. 11 okay. million in top, top. chips. A runaway chip leader who brings us to the final table. Eight remaining. Lines 50 and 100,000, and there is a look at that tally of 11.8. Nobody even within sniffing distance. Remaining at his table, which will be consolidating momentarily with the other table in the field. And as that matter is attended to, we bring you back to the desk where momentarily Maria and I will be handing things off to Henry and Randy for the home stretch as we work our way toward a champion. Final table set, though. Soiza looked like for a time was on the downswing. Roller coaster ride now very much on the upswing. And one thing that we know about him is he is tactical. Not going to be making a lot of mistakes out there. And once the payouts are getting bigger, Maria, we restore a sense of poker to the affair. Yeah, and continuing the theme, I feel like, with all of the final table so far, having a runaway chip leader, and this time with that extra element of the bounties in play, but as you mentioned, tempered a little bit by the fact that now the pay jumps are much more significant, a pay jump for every spot. Now yep. every elimination is going to be more money in these players' pockets, so a little bit less bounty hunting happy, but yep. still managing to keep an eye on that extra little bit of value added. The eighth place score of $88,000 finally trumping the 83K EV in each of those bounty envelopes. Ninth place finish for JNT, as we mentioned, 72,000, going to be going to the eventual winner. Shortest stack in the field at present. Belongs to Vyacheslav Buldigan. Just 14 bigs for him, but obviously something to work with. So then, on that note, Maria and I will step aside. It's going to be about a 25-minute break for those of you at home. So go grab a snack, do what you got to do, but make sure you set your alarms and come back and see us as this one still has plenty of runway left and much to be excited about. So then, we bid you adieu and uh, enjoy your break. We'll see you in 25. GG Poker. Across the room, more so many players. This is a crazy thing to do. GG Poker. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World Series it's the of best Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Larger than all other GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jump, it's good. Jump, it's good.
your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all new betacr.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets betacr.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Straight flush we've seen this series. Oh, oh, oh my. my god! Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Igor wow. just devastated. Unbelievable. Whoa. I was about you Whoa, said this, still chop out. This is in the series. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we say it as a as a perfunctory <laughs> map. <laughs> Side pot of three hundred K between not too bad. Spencer and Adams. We see clarity on the flop. Oh. And it is provided in the form of 10 Jack Queen. Spencer has a clean draw to the straight in the form of the nine. Seven would work for him as well. Adams fours in front for the side for the time being. Rock on. <laughs> Strong, Can't eh? find the backdoor clubs, but the ace, king, or eight would work for him. Can Adams hold on? He cannot. An eight on the end. And that will give Spencer the side pot, while Ragnar will triple. <laughs> oh, well. Decent I'll result for, the for Spencer, you see the eight, you didn't, you didn't does collect Adams' I was just thinking bounty about here. Balls, I was mm. yeah. Having him available, six $100,000 bounties, and that wraps up the six-figure bounties in play. Smallest bounty worth 40 k You know, a buy-in in this event. But... The number that we keep repeating over and over again is the average Only. EV of a bounty, $83,000. So he's uh, jamming two queens over the top of another Jack-10 suited speaking up. Apologies for the interruption. Morton Klein, a couple of fives. Yeah, and who's going to come for Soyza's bounty? A little less attractive to Klein as he doesn't have Soyza covered. So, you know, certainly... A little worse to be calling off in these spots when you don't have a chance to win the bounty. But Kenny could be interested for 20 bigs. That he could. I 
I don't know, Kenny, to be one to shy away from a gambling spot. Oh, no. Indeed. He will take the gamble. So he's in great shape here for a double. As he gets bounty hunted. 1.8 million chip pot. Nine of hearts in the window was menacing. Followed by a king and a ten. The queen has some perspective complications. Seven of hearts. And now additional paths to disaster for Soiza. Couple of blockers, though. Eight on the turn. But a safe king on the end. And Soiza's bounty will remain intact, and his stack will double, and then some. The tongs are a well, little bit out of grasp. the tongs would give you added reach. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I can't get there because My the tongs are actually further okay. away mm -hmm. on the plate than yes. the actual dessert. So you see my problem here. Although, you know, we do have a break coming up. We also have a producer who can hand you these tongs. Okay. Or he can just walk over to the table, use the tongs himself, eat a piece of dessert, and then walk away with a very smug look on his face. We will remember that, of course. Morton Klein, couple of nines. Mustafa, nines so <laughs> of two queens. Those nines have been ever-present here at this feature. Have not performed particularly well, however. King eight, three oh. board. This time, things Come on. perhaps come looking like they're going to be better for Mustafov. 1.3 in the middle, two outer. <gasps> oh, the four side spade. Not the one that. <sighs> Ways Francisco Benitez as the queens and the nines have become themes. Just 11 bigs. This is obviously going to look incredibly right, strong. 390? Yeah, 390. But Sipon I don't like probably it, but can't fold for yeah. the bounty. Got a quick <laughs> count. You keep Said dead. he didn't oh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> he really doesn't like it. Yeah. The displeasure. Yeah, beeping. <laughs> but this time I make the king, I'm sorry. Manuel is not as good as I am to make the king. On appelle le roi. Petit roi. Même configuration. C'est ça. Oh, right in the window. Plus de chance. Pour l'instant. Chaco first. With just a stone one outer. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for the wettest card in the deck and receive it. The Jack of Hearts Jack now suddenly now from one out. Two of hearts. Any heart <laughs> or that queen. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> it's the three of spades. Audible frustrations there for Benitez, but obviously a lot better be to be on. Looks like he was first seen in Cyprus with one cash over... Five events there, but has only played one other event out here, Monte Carlo, and did not finish in the money there. Taking a peek at his Hendon mob. Career live earnings beyond the Triton border. Of over 1.25 million as fellow countryman Imad Derwish opens to 150,000. He looks down at an ace king suited. I don't care what is on the rest of his shirt. I'm a fan of just what I can I'm see in. of the shirt. Looks like a holiday dachshund. Like Looks like 910, actually. The more relevant appearance. Of course, Dervish with a couple of queens. Ready. And waiting. The classic. In an almost two million chip pot here. For the fate of Ale. Hanging in the balance, the king high board, though, you can see shake of the head from Imad. Prepay in hand. And it 
it seems with good reason. As the queens find no added equity on the turn and don't find a third lady on the river. Is it Holiday Dachshund or is it Where's Waldo Dachshund? Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Leave one of the first people or maybe even the first person to pull bounties pulls the big one. Now, I was there presiding over that. You don't even remember? And I don't remember, truth be told. Is Jaffe. How much is it? Ace 10 jamming. Greenwood wants a count. 500 on the floor. All in. All in. You can see Greenwood finding King Queen on the button and deciding that that's good enough to ISO what is One a bounty on one. the line from Jaffe. Going to be performing decently Two against hits. that shoving range off of 11 one bigs. Going to contain, of course, yeah. all the Seven. pairs that one. Greenwood has two overs to. Yeah. Some of these uh. ASAX holdings where he's live. I like might the opportunity <laughs> to hunt not <laughs> one but two bounties. Engage Hunter. We get our this answer. So nice. Hunter. That doesn't sound good for me. Pocket peel. Okay. We like that. Oh, so wow. it's going to so be a three-way pot. So alive. What was that first one, Jans? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Let me do the Greenwood. And Strava will face off for one and a quarter million on the side. Wow, double bounty. Jaffe. I mean, they have shot at 1.7 no, no, for no. the main. Strava yeah. sixes are in front, but no longer okay. on an ace jack five board where Jaffe has outflopped the field. Well, I mean, I think well, Queen Strava. Be pretty nice He's here. still in the lead against <laughs> Greenwood for the side, though. Luke with the Broadway gutter okay. and instead hits the Queen. This is fine. Classic yeah. spot for Which okay. River Six. Okay. Gets Jaffe. Yo, Han. Draw. <laughs> Yo, Han. Those Queen. aces Ooh. still in front. So close. Just kidding. And Strava comes up seven. empty oh, in right. both wow. spots. Nice fold, Hunter. Very expensive bounty hunt yeah. for Johannes. See who... Folded around to Thailand's number one, Punat Punsri. How much is that? That's 10 seconds in. Okay. Fast Five action seconds. system in play, reducing the pre flop clock to 10 seconds. Play roll in. Oh. How much? Red time bank I'm being used for an extra side. 10. Yeah. Two players all in. Jam from Punsri, restuffed upon by Sammy B. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and a great spot for Punat. You see Sammy's reaction to realizing that he's pipped. <laughs> 445k pot, a pivotal one for Punsri as he looks to march on. I put you a six. <laughs> Eight in the window. Good news, but a couple of clubs lurking. Good news for the other players because they want to keep Punstry in on the short stack so they have a chance at his bounty later. That they do. Not to mention some perspective. Really feeble, yay. Just for the record. Doesn't this part of the day make you happy? What do you mean by this when part of the day? When we get a little bit of sunlight in here. Ah, the yay wow. wasn't for Halloween, but rather the fact that the curtains are now being drawn. Oh. In. As dusk <laughs> is upon us here at Sporting Monte Carlo. Can you come for me? Jam with pocket nines for Arens. That has been the hand of the day. I mean, hasn't really been working out for most of the people that have held those nines. Klein did make quads at one point with them, but since 
has come up empty for different opponents. 945,000. All in. Two players all in. It looks like a jam over the top nope. of the nines from Soiza. Very good hand. Offering some protection Steve. given how deep Michael is. Jan's happy to spin against an over and an under for two million. To the flop we go. Jack eight four. Nines sit pretty. <laughs> Turn card giving a gutter to Soiza now along with the ace to five. I just need would be the heartbreaker <laughs> for Jan. You gotta insult me on live television. <laughs> Is good. that ace to okay. add insult to injury? My first just north of the min. And let's see more king do suited. These suited combos do like to defend from the big, and instead of a defense, it is just a rip from Bulldogan. Kings against King Deuce, if I'm not mistaken, it would have had to have been offsuit King Deuce, but that is the biggest preflop disparity statistically that one can find themselves in, is it not? Yes, but who cares about the preflop <laughs> equities when you've got 83,000 in bounty equity on the line? Oh, oh. oh which opportunities yeah. on the 910 jack board. Somebody fall to Oh. Oh. <laughs> Deuce on the turn. <laughs> Some cause for excitement yeah. as yeah. clean winners are available to Bulldogan in the form of a duck. Oh, and instead, yeah. the case king rolls off oh, yeah. on the end. So Awaiting, by the way, the official eliminations as we see an ace nine suited for JNT back at the feature awaiting orders from Der Riesch's queens we're going to go upstairs and I believe it is for all of it 1.1 but there was a pay jump in those three bust outs between 18th and 17th so the player with the most chips coming into that pot which would have been Luke Greenwood he will get 17th place money, 43,500. 38 8 going to Bryn Kenny and Martirosian. Meanwhile, back over here, we've got another bloody affair taking shape. And a pay jump on the horizon, but who cares about, you know, a $5,000 difference in pay when there's 83K? equity in the bounty right. yeah writing was on the wall here as the classic takes shape okay. <laughs> jnt waving the white flag and you can see a nervy dervish here covered and being hunted in a two and a half million chip pot that needs to go his way if he wants to fight on. Can the queens hold? Yes, they can so far. Jack, Jack, five board. Anti sweating the ace and the king is Imad successfully on the turn. And on the river as well. <coughs> Ace three now awaits Mosbach's button with action folded around to him, and he will whisper those two little words. All in. Has both the small blind and the big blind well covered? Six bigs and 12 bigs, respective, respectively. And Sabon would go with a lot worse aces than this, considering he's down to six bigs, but happy to have top of range off of such a short stack. 
That he is, as he will stick 480 in there. Mosbach can well afford to hunt a bounty at this price. Oh, yeah. Great shape for Julian. Don't want to get too excited too soon. Although now, sitting even prettier is the Ace-King on the Queen-10-7 board. Deuce is non-problematic. Only the three ruins Julian's day, and instead he makes the nuts on the end, so. One, two, three. I get 405. You got your double up. Oh. Hailing from Indonesia. Quite a few Frenchmen left in the yeah. mix. All in. All in. How much? Seven, nine. All in here from Buldigan. Go. Lone remaining Russian on the button with the ace queen. Bolung ace nine dominated. Oh, Flat yeah. sent. Yashislav. <laughs> Thrilled to be in this position here. Yeah, we saw him pass up on the spot earlier with ace jack offsuit. Now down to 10 big blinds. Really welcome development to have Balloon dominated versus situations where he's going to be quite live. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> in between. Ten eight four board. Ace Queen still in front. Five. Both players hitting the ace on the end, so it is just the nine that needs to be avoided. Which it I'm is. <laughs> Did you think it was a nine? <laughs> oh, Actually, I was say it's <laughs> seven to me. Like and the ever animated Zashislav yeah, Buldigan with a very infectious smile. Is obviously the time and a good hand to be up against in terms of the Queen 10 for JNT. Jaffe passed up an ace six suited earlier. Yeah, this one a little different because, of course, you do have JNT opening the action. And JNT is not particularly short. So if Jaffe wants to try to ISO this all in, yeah, I was going to say it would probably be a lot of chips to risk. Instead, going to call and hope that. JNT doesn't no. decide to do that. Is the action reopened, though? Whether it is or it isn't. The matter being discussed <laughs> by Jaffe, who Along with JNT, fails to improve on the Jack 5 4 board. Punsri in great shape. Jack of Hearts, a pretty good card for JNT's holding in the sense that the backdoor equity can be ever present on certain turn cards. But. Both of these hands going to need a lot of help against pocket queens. Well, with the side pot dry, Maria, these guys are supposed to have that unwritten agreement of just trying to work their way to a showdown and hope that they can get rid of Punsri. Yeah, but it's also the balancing act of, you know, not letting your opponent catch up and have a chance to win Punsri's bounty. Yeah. JNT. Looked like he was deep in thought for a second, but just now realizing that actions on him does check back. <laughs> oh, Jaffe sopping wet. Seven of diamonds on the turn. Nut flush draw and the open ender. A heck of a turn card for his hand, and we were discussing the merits of, of 
course, checking through with a dry side. But again, when you balance that with wanting to win Punsari's bounty and getting rid of JNT right now would put you in a better position, of course, going heads up against Punsari's holding. Not a great board for JNT. He's going to let go of the Queen 10. Punsari terrified here, as he knows. <laughs> Welcome back to the sporting here in Monte Carlo as we have ourselves another final table coverage just around the corner. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, stepping in for Arlene Jard and Maria Ho. And Randy, it's time to go bounty hunting at this final table. Michael Soizer on the hunt for his third Triton trophy. And it was actually Soizer that got us down to this FT, playing a monster pot against the fan favorite, JNT, who Flop top pair in a single race pot. All the money found its way in on the turn. Soiza with numero uno, pocket aces, holding across turn and river to eliminate JT on the bubble. And with that departure, we're down to the FT, Randy. 88,000 guaranteed, bounties galore. Let's go. Yeah, so the bounty, the top prize is 400,000, right? 400, and there's three 200,000 prizes and uh, the lowest one being 40,000. But they've done a little calculation. The average equity or expected value of one bounty is 83,000. So that's going to be very important in determining the decisions at this final table. What does that mean then for us? You know, we've spoken about how impressive players have navigated the ICM. Is there a change here with the with the bounty effect? There's definitely a change, um, but now that we're at the final table where pay jumps are significant, right. there's a little bit of a pullback on how hard you go for the bounty. But of course, if someone's sitting on a couple blinds, you're, you're going to go for it because it's just worth more than even the pay jumps at times. I mean, that's a great point. Everyone guaranteed 88,000. Next ladder up to 121,000. All eyes on a top prize of 718,000. But as Randy correctly pointed out, you collect a few bounties. Top prize of 400k, a couple of 200k bounties out there. Who knows? I mean, could pull out a million Happens. as we <laughs> throw it down. Luca Vivaldi going to introduce the final table of the 40k mystery bounty here in Monte Carlo. 162 entries in this mystery bounty event. We're down to a final table of eight. They're going to compete for a first prize of $718,000 and the coveted Titan, tri Triton, pardon me, title. And more to come tomorrow in the mystery bounty ceremonies. We're going to have 3.2 million to be awarded. Please allow me to introduce you to the final eight. In scene number one with 5.5 million, from Indonesia, please welcome Sami Bolu. Sami, the Bulldog. Triple KO with the Ace King to propel him on his journey to this final table. Scene number two from France with 2.4 million. Please welcome Axel Ale. 24 big blinds coming in fifth. The Chips hoodie is up. All business now for Axel. Scene number three from Bulgaria with 1.8 million. Please welcome Faredin Mustafov. Mustafov, part of the Bulgarian contingent that seem to be growing here at the Triton Super High Roll Series, looking for his first title. Scene number five from Ireland with 2.4 million. Please welcome Steve O'Dwyer. Steve-O, Steve-O, fresh off his second trophy in the 50K Turbo, another final table for O'Dwyer. Scene number six for our cheap leader with 12 million from Malaysia. Please welcome Michael Soiza. You know what's up with that man. Two-time Triton champion, overwhelming chip leader, Asian Poker Tour co-founder, looking for title three. 
Seat number seven, 1.4 million from Russia. Please welcome Vyacheslav Buldegin. One of the funniest guys on tour, and he backs it up with his poker playstyle. Online poker legends joining us once more in Monte Carlo. Seat number eight from France with 3.8 million. Please welcome Imad Dervish. Someone I am unfamiliar with venturing out to a Triton Series for the first time does have a cash in the 30k. Let's see what he brings in this 40k mystery bounty. Last but not least, from Austria with 3.4 million in C9, please welcome Mario Mosbok. 3 million in Triton earnings. Second in the 200k invitational for 2.69 million for a career best. Mosbok looking for redemption here in the 40k mystery bounty. Right, gentlemen, the bottom has been drawn to seat number seven. We still have two minutes of level 21, 50,000, 100,000, 100,000. Best of luck, Pavel, shuffle up and deal, please. Pavel, shuffle up and deal, please. The announcement from Luca Vivaldi. Still two minutes left on the clock at this blind level average stack. Currently 41 bigs, but of course about to increase. So all eyes going to be on the Bulgarian and the Russian. Both sub 20 bigs. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. And Randy, I have to ask straight off the bat, looking at them chip counts, anything standing out there? Clearly it's Michael Soys at 2x the second place, more than 2x. And We've had every single final table a massive chip leader come into the final table, right? But they haven't been able to close it out. That is true. Well, so is the it The curse done. of Monaco, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe, but we got to say, there are bounties on the line, and Soiza is definitely going to be bounty hunting. He's got the chips to go and take that risk. I, for one, am ridiculously excited for this one. Whenever you throw some bounties into the equation. As things stand, a couple of players out there that have been unable to acquire those bounties, Randy, Imad and Axel, the two Frenchmen, bountyless, Soiza with five, Sammy the Bulldog with four after getting a triple KO, Mario Mosbok with four as well, Odwire Mustafov with two apiece. What's VBB crazy is, is the triple one. KO is worth Expected value, what, $249,000? Did, did you work that one out, Randy? I did, I did. I love it. But that's pretty amazing, right? Because, uh, what, 249000 is like guaranteed four and a half place, uh, which that's is pretty amazing. crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Oh, right off the bat. So, Vyacheslav, three betting, two queens, and the thing is, the bounty format might get Soiza interested in continuing. Imad with a little bit of posturing, perhaps just hoping that that blind level increases in this hand. He's going to be on the big. All in. Small edges as Soiza jams into VBV's three bet. You hear Soiza ask how good VBV. With the honest response, hand number one, Randy, all in, brought to you by betacr.eu. Everyone else looking for that 33k ladder. No way. And Russia's very own Jim Carey looking to hold. Looking likely. Diamond for sweat. On the ace for three. So is there asking for a diamond for a cheeky sweat? Couldn't begrudge the two-time champion. Let's see if the poker gods oblige, as they do. Nine of diamonds now presenting additional opportunities for the two-time champ. Red, but not the right kind. He's too lucky. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Always sweaty, but VBV ultimately holding with the pocket queens to double up. And with that, goes from eighth in chips to fifth now, joining that cluster of middling stacks. Yes, it's nice to double up when you're a short stack, but it's even nicer in the bounty tournament because now he can hunt some bounties himself. 
VBV the Bounty Hunter. V Bounty V. What yeah. does a V stand for? Vyacheslav Bounty Veteran. <laughs> bounty Veteran, there we go. Like it. Lines going up to 50k, 125k. Bad news for the Bulgarian fans out there as Staffov dropping down to around 13 bigs now with this blind level increase. First spin of the wheel. Hand number one, as we expected. Soiza, slight dent to his stack, but still the overwhelming chip leader. It's almost double what Sammy the Bulldog has in second as Dwyer with a precarious spot. He's in. 20 bigs from EP. <coughs> Apologies, low jack, forgot we're playing eight handed. Well, Imad Darish, 10 9 of diamonds, very playable. And whenever you have the covering stacking, you've got these kind of. Oh, uh, he is on a button, isn't he? For some reason, I thought he was in the big, but he's actually going to lay it down. But I was going to say in the big blind, definitely defending. Sammy with an ace on his sleeve and an ace in his hand. <laughs> he does. I just noticed that. Wrong ace, though, that he's holding. Perhaps that's the one he wants to come on the flop. You think? Not quite. Not this time. Jack four, deuce one over the Stevo's pocket sixes. Great texture for all the wire. Just one over card. Should want to protect his hand. It's better to kind of check call these flops of ace high if you're up against a late position raise, but Odwar is quite early in plus two. So a nice lay down. Three more Hold'em events here in Monte Carlo, including this one. After this FT, Randy and I will be picking up coverage of the penultimate Hold'em event, the 50K 8 Max, tomorrow. We've got the 25K GG Millions. And in your favorite game, the four card. Oh, the four card Hold'em. comes Mario Mosbach. Got the A7, have been having a phenomenal series. As earlier he won, well he got second in the 200K, 2.7 million. Record cash for Mosbach. Really caught our eye the moment he burst onto the Triton scene in Vietnam earlier this year, played five events, cashed three. And just his, his presence at the table, ever stoic and composed. He's a tough one. Here's Always Alex Halle, oh, Axel Halle. I'm all in. Wow. Look at that. That's aggressive because he's got the shorter stack and Mosbach's got more incentive to, to find a call with his range. Not A7, but what a nice play as that's gonna chip him up a bit. The strategy is very different at these bounty tournaments. Just a lot of different elements going on. Trying to position yourself to cover other stacks. Realizing 
position is quite important because you want to be in position against the short stacks, quite frankly, because that's how you have the best opportunity to re-iso and try to cut people out. Over-unders on the most bounties collected by a single player. I think it was Strava in London that collected like nine or something ridiculous. He had quite like a that. lot, yes. Um, Weasel had a lot when he That's shipped right. the tournament. Yeah. Soiza currently on five. Soiza can just technically knock out everyone and then have a record number for sure. He's currently on five, like you just mentioned. Here's Darewish, a seven. He is a Triton newcomer. Cashed in the 30K for 18th place for 54,000 so far. Very playable Queen Jack suited in position. Not as chatty, Randy. It's a lot of money on the line. Even more than what the prize pool says, of course. Look at this play. Sammy the Bulldog with a playable hand but does get out of the way. No fear, Mario. Cut off against Hijack. What does Imad want to do here? A7, note the three bet size. Doesn't have to go big with ICM. Two and a half X. As long as he knows his opponent is opening this wide off the hijack, then this three bet just prints. Incredibly wide open, isn't it? Yes. Especially with the covering stack on the button. You can play looser when you have the covering stack, but A7 also is just often dominated, and even if it's not, it's just so hard to flop a piece you like post-flop. Looks like he's going to flash to A, so respect. What are your thoughts on that, Randy? Which part? Final table, I know, obviously, with the delay, information is going to be fed back, but showing the ace, hijack open. I don't know. I mean, depends on how he plays off of it. GTO Wizard, how do you play off of it? The number one app for poker players around the globe. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Analyze your played hands, practice by playing first GTO. Solve any spot in the game with the GTO Wizard AI. You can join the exclusive membership giveaway. Stand a chance of winning one of our premium subscriptions and some GTO Wizard merchandise. Scan that QR code, click the link. This would be a fun one, actually. This event, hands like that A7, that Queen Jack. Plug it into GTO as to see what comes back. A walk old wire. Soiza's actually had a pretty decent Monte Carlo, two final tables in turbo events, a fifth and a sixth. 
Now here's his third final table of the event. Faradeen Mustafa, ace 10 and a button. He might just open rip this one. There we go. Story checks out for 12. And because he's the shortest stack, players actually look him up a lot wider. So we'll pick up there for the staff off. I want the ace, I have no ace. I want also you can't say. You hope I get an ace. Joined us in Cyprus of 2022. Played three events. They came second in the 25k. Eight max for 557,000. His maiden event came second to Patrick Antonis, if you recall that hero call that went viral <laughs> around the world. Triple barrel bottom pair. Yeah, he was the one trying to deal the bluff to Patrick Antonis, who made the incredible call. Yeah, that was. Uh, that one was picked up by the likes of Doug Polk and Joey Ingram. Seen by a lot of players. Haven't seen him since. He was still recovering from that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Just kidding. He won, he won a good amount of money there. He needed to take a, a year before joining us in Monte Carlo. Did secure a second cash in the 30K for 51,000. Oh, Step off Two back. Again. Another hand here. That's going to get... He doesn't want action. He's going to get through Soyzer and he's going to get through the big blind. <laughs> he solved the game. Just push every hand. Still the short stack. Chipping up slowly now. One double for Mustafov would double up to third in chips. That's not tightly knit. Actually, what he really needs to do is just cover. Axel Halle because he's got direct position on him, give himself an opportunity to collect a bounty at least. Tens for Mosbach under the gun. Such a precarious spot. Fourth in chips with three players behind that have him covered, but Mosbach not shy. Tens way too much of a hand to start thinking of playing nitty. Yeah, he actually really wants action from the short stacks if possible, but perhaps not against the player who's got him covered, the tournament chip leader, Queen Jack suited. So is it going to try to take a flop? Yeah. Oh. You start with 3.3, 3.4. 3.4, yeah. So we got some post-flop going on. So is it out flopping the tens and Randy only a lone overcard to the pocket tens of Mosbok. 800k in the middle, feels like he's destined to lose more chips here. Not surprised to see Mario check the flop out of position like, with the chip deficit. He needs to play pot control. Plus, you wouldn't really expect him to see bet that much anyway, it's just because his opponent will be able to float very wide, it'll be tricky to play. 250. It's going to be hard to win, but he really cannot fold to this small bet. Especially against the chip leader. Someone as capable as Michael Soyser, two time Triton champion, third on Malaysia's all-time money list. That's actually a great card.
for Mario because it's less likely he loses more chips in this hand. Say it came lower than the queen, then Soiza can safely value bet at least one more street. Mosbrook hasn't checked yet. He's just trying his best to make it seem like maybe he should lead uh, confused when if he has an ace, therefore trying to get Soiza to check it down. Potential lead card, but not with this not with exact this hand. holding. No. Maybe if he would check hold like a king X of clubs. Right. Wow, seems to I'm know exactly surprised. Where he's at. That's pretty sick. Not fearful of the ace. Yeah, third pot. And is this Soiza kind of dictating the size of the pot? Betting 450, plan to check back a lot of rivers, deny some equity. He's definitely going to check back the river unimproved. And it doesn't allow his opponent to kind of set a bigger price on the river. And it seems that got the tens out. Didn't want to play that guessing game. Yeah, he saw Mosbox's facial expressions there. A little bit of a grimace. It's always tough when you come up against elite competition like Soiza. So easy for one to level themselves into thinking that he's up to no good, just abusing the ICM leverage he has over the rest of the field. Soiza extends, top of the chip counts. 32 big blind average. Soiza sat on 87 as Axel Halle passes up on one of the prettiest hands one could be dealt in, no limit holder. Yes, but actually the suited connectors go way down in value when you're short stack and you're playing a bounty format, given that you're going to get isolated a lot more and you just can't defend. VBV. Do you remember the interaction? Which one? With Vyacheslav with Patrick Antonius in Vietnam. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. They sat side by side at the start of the series. And obviously they've battled like infinite amounts of hands online over the year, uh, online over the years. We're talking way back 2009, 2010. But don't think they'd ever met in person. Obviously VBV recognized Antonis, but Antonis had no idea who Vyacheslav is. And Vyacheslav was like said to Patrick, "Hey Patrick, nice to meet you, I'm Vyacheslav." He's like, "I VBV, I VBV." <laughs> and Patrick's like, "What?" He's like. IVBV, <laughs> you me, IVBV, we play online, IV, and Patrick's like, oh, you're VBV. <laughs> it was really funny. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit of like a language barrier kind yeah, of yeah. moment, but like, <laughs> and as soon as Patrick recognized yeah, it was like who the, it was, the light like, bulb clicked. they were like oh. best of buddies, man. It was so cool. That's what they're playing for. The golden <laughs> trident <laughs> trophy. VBV, uh, triton champion. Not easy. 3.4 million in earnings, nine caches, one title. Final table here in the 50K. Had five caches in Cyprus. Didn't join us in London, but those caches in Cyprus included a win in the 50K seven max. BBB currently sitting on one bounty in this tournament. Ace Queen now from Michael Soiza, good start. This is a bounty hunting type of hand. He's actually probably screaming for action behind him from the short stacks. Bit of a sigh there from that patience is a virtue, my friend. Marathon, not a sprint. Sammy the Bulldog. Suited King. Good Triple KO, bro. Triple KO. That I is insane. You, quarter million dollars in value right there. Could be worth more if he pulls the 400, 200, 200. No connection both ways. 
This is number one versus number two in chips. Although Soiza does have more than 2x in his opponent's stack. Sure. If he bets this flop, he's going to have a lot of intention to bet a lot of face card turns, but he does hit that ace. Yeah, Would think hands. this hand's over. Put a wrap on it with a little bow. Soiza turning top pair, going to eclipse the 11 million chip mark. 32 million chips in play. Soiza with around a third of the chips. But as we mentioned, on the break desk, mm. theme of this series so far, runaway chip leaders coming into the FT, holding the chip lead throughout the final table, but unable to close out the event. We've seen it in four final tables now. The 200K, Mario Mosbach was the overwhelming chip leader, came second to Dan Smith. The 125K main, Adrian Mateos, held the overwhelming chip lead from around about 24 players left, all the way down to three-handed, ended up coming second to Mateus Simon and then in the 100K, again, Nacho Barbero, overwhelming chip lead, came second to Christoph Vogelsang. Similar situation last night in the 30K. Malacca style couldn't convert. The overwhelming chip lead, the Bulgarian Ogdan Dimov, overcoming him three-handed and heads up. See if Soiza can put an end to the chip leader curse here in Monaco. So you're saying if you're a betting man, you wouldn't bet on Soiza to win this one? No comment. <laughs> well, here we go. Two jacks in position. People can put their money where their mouth is over on betacl.eu. Just saying. True. Mosbok has actually bled down a bit. 21 bigs. Mustafov's closed the gap. This, the chip counts. This is a hand he wants his opponent to get it in with him. He's got the covering stack. Maybe he three bets small to try to induce. Get some crying calls out of speculative hands. I like this bet. Oh, it's really small. Just 525k. And Sammy was thinking, I'm in this hand, but I don't know about now with a three bet in front of him. Sammy the Bulldog remains disciplined. Axel. Can we get out of there, see how Mustafov proceeds. Osbok giving off the illusion that he can three bet fold at the stack depth. Does Mustafov want to push his perceived fold equity? He's going to take line. a flop here. Feels like he the price the is amazing. His hand's a little bit troublesome. How many do you have? How many do you have so far? Well, is it troublesome now, Randy? Extremely. He's going to get all the chips in, no matter what bet size Mario goes with on the flop. Nine, eight, four, two clubs. Top pair, top kicker. Absolute disaster for the Bulgarian. Aradine Mustafov knows that Mosbok's going to have plenty of hands that are going to bet fold. See, Mosbok has the actual goods here this time round. Has clubs covered as well. Did he just? Did he just say all He's he did? In. He said all in, Randy. We bounty hunting. Mosbok wasn't thrilled about it, understandably so, on that board. Up against the under the gun. Hear the reaction from the players as well. 4.4 million in the middle. Four doesn't really change anything, Randy. Mustafov still looking for an ace or a nine to double up. 
doesn't find it on the Deuce of Spades River. Clean run out for Mario Mosbok's pocket jacks as he moves up to second in chips with seven left and in the process eliminates an incredibly tough opponent. Mustafa fourth on Bulgaria's all-time money list, joining us for the second time, adding another cash and another final table. He's got a 100% cash rate here. And he also does. takes home two bounties on top of his prize. Okay, 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 so not bad. The money machine going to continue churning tomorrow, perhaps, for Mustafa. Two pulls at a top bounty. 400,000 and for now, going home with 88k. And with that departure, everyone now guaranteed a six-figure payout, Randy. And you know what else? Mara Mosbach, the bounty hunter, guaranteed five bounties now with that elimination. Tying What's that worth? Michael Soiza. It's worth around 400k. Five equity. times 83,000, just there north of 400,000, looking good. 415k in EV. I didn't use the calculator for that. Well done. Thanks. Do you want a prize or something? Yeah, a medal. <laughs> I mean, Is there a, a medal, medal shop a medal. around? A little trophy. Captain, although be careful. A trophy shop around here. Might set you back a few thousand bucks. Can Mario's I back. To take it for me? I'm not lucky with this kind of stuff. You can. Oh, you can? You can yeah. <laughs> I take them in zero. <laughs> My first time drawing, so I won. Osborne straight back in the driver's seat. Pick up Seems the blinds like and the big blind ante. <laughs> Flipping, not, not speaking. Not drawing. Quite a trip. <laughs> For his click, Rosbot coming second in the 200k. Ibinger taking down the main. Vogelsang taking down the 100k. Fedor made that final table of the 200k as well. It's given me real 2015, 2016 vibes when the German and Austrian crew toured the globe and seemingly won everything there was to win. Rainer Kempe, Sontheimer, Stefan Schiabel, Fedor Holtz, who else was there? Mulocker, <laughs> Rankemeyer, but yeah, okay. but do you Are remember you like, like the whole No, but they were, you know, like the click, you know, they were going around, it was crazy, man. <laughs> Julian Thomas, I remember. Was there was, there was a lot of them. But yeah. every FT, you just have all the Germans on the rail, because yeah. like another one of their buddies is, FT, the huge one, is so Halle. With a rejammable oh. hand. Definitely rejamming this one. 19 bigs. Oh. Let's see how greedy Mario is feeling. Nah. Phase 10. He's in a comfortable spot. Bigs, I think. Second in chips. Doing his thing. You've mentioned it time and time again at different FTs, only to force the all-ins yourself. Plus, if let's just say he does gamble there and calls and loses, it actually puts him in a bad spot as he won't be covering that many players anymore. Couple of disciplined folds this time. It's going to look to activate with the pocket jacks. Couple of shorter stacks behind. Axel, an incredibly observant customer, by the way. Something I have noticed. Oh, he might have hooked the victim here. He's got two eights. They're pretty deep, so I 
wouldn't ever think they would be getting this in pre. So I should be looking for a spot to try and set mine this one. Naturally. Oh, Soiza. sorry. And this is a massive opportunity for Sammy. Wow, this is a 37 big blind effective jam. This is a big misstep. If Sammy can find a call. It's scary though, right? Because you're sitting in third. It's a big jam. This one is so is it perhaps found the right customer to actually jam against if he's going to get bigger pairs to fold. We've seen it already. We saw Nicky P fold the jacks incorrectly in that 200k, I believe. I don't know if I could lay this one down. I'm never expecting Soiza to do this with queens, kings, and aces. Maybe ace, king, I can see, but I'm willing to take a coin flip if I am a slight favorite. See Sammy the Bulldog scanning around the table, looking the other stacks. Again, kind of going back to that forcing an all-in. Randy, you mentioned the ace, king, but what about some of the ace, queens, king, queens? Sure. And if we are a sh oh wow. My. What a fold. Soiza. He got away with that. Soiza's gonna see that one. That's dirty. I think I'm leading. But these are so many short stacks. <laughs> Lucky eights. I think if you didn't call that means you're not leading. I might be leading. Oh. Wouldn't be saying that. Would not be letting Soiza know. That I folded pocket jacks in that spot. Small pay. No, big. Big pay. Not too big. <laughs> big I call. <laughs> Not too big. Pocket jacks. Uh, this is yours. Yeah. I was always un under the impression, Randy, I'd that pull. I'd pull. Jacks was a big hand. Soy's a Retains the chip lead. Anyone else you feel like? Anyone else, Randy? Anyone else? And Soiza, <laughs> Soiza's down in the middle of the pack. I don't know if Soiza realized how lucky he is in that spot. Well, Sammy said big pair, but not too big. And I think that's enough for Soiza to know that he got at least nines or tens to fold. Right, yeah. Probably doesn't expect it to be pocket jacks, but. Right. Wow. What a moment for the two-time champion. Just goes to show the power of leveraging the ICM, Randy. We've touched on it on so many occasions. We've seen it executed to perfection throughout this series. We know this man won't be folding unless there's somehow multiple all-ins behind. <laughs> BBB. He cracks you up? A little bit of a smirk there, and you know the thought loop that was going through his mind. Ace-5 could do something out of line. Little raise and take, Steve O'Dwyer. How many hundreds of hours of highlight reels do you think there are in the YouTube ether of Steve O'Dwyer Steve over the last decade and a half? How long has Steve O'Dwyer been playing poker? It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's insane. How many titles has he won? It's just I mean, this, there has to be dedicated YouTube videos to that man. Gamble. Maybe. Let's see. If, you win, if, I, if I win... Steve Edouard's hand and mob. 14th on the all-time money list. A win here today would eclipse the 40 million in live earnings, Mark. When do you think his first recorded cash was, Randy? 
Uh, I'm having to scroll <laughs> way back. It was uh, definitely in 2003. 2007. That's close. Whatever. Close. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we'll take it. 2007. King Jack suited down for, for Dwyer. All disciplined. Trying to think what I was doing in 2007, Randy. Were you born yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sammy going to take a flop here. Suited clean. Top pair for Axel. Swing and a miss. Poor Sammy. Maybe Axel actually checks back to this flop with a say. Is that your hand? Certainly. Betting a flop is the default. Oh, the entry, okay. Coming soon, the hand is too bad. You, you can see Jack 10 suited. <laughs> Jack 10 suited coming soon. Yeah, he's not really looking to just bet, get it in on the flop. So, kind of want to just check some of these down, call two streets, or bet, bet it yourself. I was shot back. <laughs> Sammy thinks he's got a live out to the five, but we know that would be trouble. That would be disastrous as he does. Probe for half pot. Very comfortable call for Axel in position, especially draw two to five. Oh, did we say the five was going to oh. be a bad card? It's a non-diamond five as well, Randy. 1.3 in the middle. Sammy the Bulldog thinks he's just rivered the ginnest of cards. Axel just playing this one to perfection. Yeah. Allowing Sammy to catch up. Definitely a dry gin card. Okay, on request. So we know what that's going to be met with. Yeah, the main question is what size to go for. I wouldn't mind him just clicking it really small just to try to get some crying calls occasionally. A jam would really dissuade your opponent from calling of anything. But he might so jam, we'll see. Just depends on what he thinks a three would do, although it's pretty hard for Sammy to usually have a three in this spot. Wouldn't expect him to defend three besides ace three, but queen three of hearts is in there. What a disastrous turn of events for Sammy the Bulldog. Had that triple KO. I guess he is going to do the all but one. Folded the jacks incorrectly against Soyza Pre just a few hands ago. It's just a downward spiral. I know the eight may seem unlikely to Sammy from under the gun, but then again, what? why would Axel ever make a heroic bluff here? when you should have a lot of 8Xs from the big. He said pocket 8s. I have to ask a bit of a dumb question here, Randy. There is no dumb question, but go on. Axel's left 25K behind. Sammy has the third nut straight. Is there ever a world with the bounty implications that instead of calling, we go for it all? Or do we leave Axel with the 25K back in the hopes that we're the one that gets it on the next hand. On this board? Oh, he's made the oh, call. Wow. On this board, I was going to say he probably shouldn't jam. 6.2 million chip pot for the Frenchman. And the downward spiral. Sammy the Bulldog. 
<laughs> still smiling, still laughing, but a nightmarish start to this final table. He got max value. Brutal development for Sammy, who's now the immediate short stack Randy after a couple of hands not going his way. Folding the jacks against Soyzer's pre-flop jam. Now rivering straight on the straight against the Frenchman, Axel Halle. Who still remains bountyless. Joined us for the first time in Cyprus this year. Cashed one event out of five play. Played the 30k here. Did not cash, but adding the final table and a record cash to his Triton track record with this run here in the 40k Mystery Bounty. For those of you just joining us, Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, stepping in for Arlene Najard. Just heard him. Okay, I got lucky. Tell the table that he folded jacks. Just in case the whole jacks, you know. Yeah, he's definitely going to be replaying these hands. But he still has some chips to play with. Here comes Imad Derwish. Loves these raggy aces, doesn't yeah. he? To be fair, though, he's in a little bit of a later position in this hand. Oh, bounty opportunity as well. All in. All in. Sammy the Bulldog. Going to take the re-jam spot. You don't love it, but if you f open this hand, you're going to have to expect the short stack to jam. Man from Indonesia taking the re-jam spot. Got to give him credit for having the heart. Gets shown the bad news, but... Oops. 53.46, all in, brought to you by betacr.eu. And you know, Randy, I'm an impartial man in the booth, but a little part of me, I'd like to see Sammy stick around with us for a little while longer. Going to be tough it's on that be board. Very hard for him to stick around. Looking for a jack. Perhaps one of the ones that he pitched. Against Soiza. That's the Queen of Hearts. Does that now give card. additional chop, chop. outs? Yeah, some yeah, chop yeah. outs as well. Happy to take the chop. Now he's calling for the 10 as the five of spades completes the run out, Randy. And we are going to lose Sammy Balung from Indonesia, who's got the monkey off his back. First cash at a Triton Series. Played the 250 Luxon Invitational in London. Rocking up here in Monte Carlo for the 40k Mystery Bounty and adding a final table to his Triton track record. And one for the highlight reel. A triple elimination. We'll be seeing him heading up to the main stage tomorrow to collect four bounties. Four but three of those collected, as you mentioned, in one, one hand. single hand, when he had ace king and just destroyed the two kings and other big pairs. Heart of gold, Sammy Belong. Hope to see him more at a Triton Super High Roller Series. Incredibly friendly and chatty guy, both away and at the feature table, representing Indonesia here. Bowing out first of the six figure paydays and with that you heard the frenchman imad do we say that's his first bounty let's not say his name just let's just remember me and you <laughs> what's his name i don't remember I 
forgot to tell you. Imad Derwish has his first bounty now. You said it, didn't you? <laughs> Put it here, man. Uh, listen, I want to just express. I was to just the looking viewers. at my notes, and you're I was good, like, "Oh good. wow, what a <laughs> what a find!" Listen, dude, we've both been doing this job long enough to know that occasionally we become hard of hearing. We tune out, you know, in one ear, out the other. It's understandable when you're in the driver's seat for twelve hours. You Thank know? you for trying to save save me there. I, I mean, I think it's uh, it's understandable, and also I know that bounty can pay for that massage. I guarantee you that. <laughs> for how long? <laughs> I love how you clocked it straight away, though. That's fantastic. Oh, I hope the marketing team clip that. So, little please funny, don't. really, please don't. Little funny. Uh, what's it called? Uh, spoof, spoof reel. Six-handed, two eliminations, relatively quick, given how deep we were. Yeah, it's just the, this FT. the bounty format does make things faster, as you saw, like the Ace Deuce making a call there. If it wasn't a bounty tournament, that one most likely hitting the muck. But Axel in great shape, 5.8 million. Remember, he had so few chips. Still, no bounties for him. Fun flop for these two hands to somehow collide. Eight, six, four. Slice with the two overs. Gut shot to the ten high straight. Axel does not want to see a seven. As the king of spades rolls off on the turn, completing the rainbow. See how Axel wants to proceed. A bit of a fun one here in terms of range v range. I think he should be pretty content trying to check it down as played. Just because he probably doesn't think Soiza would fold a pair, even with the king coming along. Mandatory bluff now for Soiza, or is this just one where we I, can... I wouldn't say it's a mandatory bluff. It depends on what he thinks of Axel's range. So for him to reach... For chips right now, belie he believes it's ace high. That won't call bet. So he's trying to get a cheeky one third bet on the river through, just targeting those high cards that Randy mentioned. So on the broadways, ace highs. It, it does look a little milky, right? It's about 35% pop bet, but yeah. makes the correct call. Nicely done. Yeah, I don't think with that line taken, we can ever be folding a pair there as Halle does eventually flick in the call. First player to really take chips from Soiza. He's working his way up the chip counts. Have a look at the Frenchman's and and Mob. Just having to scroll all the way back to the top of Steve O'Dwyer's and Mob. One point two million in live earnings. Best live cash of three hundred and sixty three thousand, which he can absolutely annihilate here. He can find the top two finish. Best live cash coming in a 25k during the WSOP this year, in fact. Came fourth. All in. All in. 
Here comes Soiza. I still can't believe he got away with those two eights against the two jacks. Yeah, and then for Sammy to get right. coolered that straight V straight situation and then lose the 53 47 spot with the queen 10 it's just it just goes to show how brutal you know snowball effect can be in in tournament poker variants not to state the obvious but a couple of hands don't go your way and all of a sudden you go from second in chips to out in seventh Everyone currently guaranteed 166,000. Slowly, slowly, right? Slowly, slowly, Michael. Slowly, 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 yeah, he has what Maria Ho likes to call a suited six gapper. Yeah, what, four million? Didn't know four that was a thing. Four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. Confirmed. It is a six gapper. And perhaps suited that's six why. Suited six gapper flopping the nuts practically. The <laughs> flush draw on top pair, Henry. We're making she it a thing, something. Randy. We're making it a thing. The defending of suited six gappers. If this flop alone isn't enough of a confirmation bias for everyone to start defending their suited six gappers around the world. And a lead from Imad. Good bluff. <laughs> Come on, just for you. Come on. Ooh, strong hand. You only shot the 10? Strong hand. Ten spades. Come on. Shown from Imad. Seems to be having a good time. I love the lightheartedness, Randy, anytime we have a final table. <laughs> Joining us for the first time here in Monte Carlo. I'll say that much. I love it. On the invitee side, the bracket in the 200k invitational. Businessman from France. I always kill you. <laughs> It's a good hand. You know I play tight. You know I play tight. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand. You talk tight. Huh? You talk tight. I? You talk tight. Ah. What? I'm trying to trick everybody. <laughs> Team, I hate you. Did he say, Steve, I hate you? He did. No, that's not true. Of course that's true. Some chirping chips. Dwyer saying that Imad talks a tight game. Sometimes Pogonis have to lose. Sometimes Pogonis have to lose. The case. Of course. As disaster, Randy, yeah. strap yourself in, pal. 900k in the middle. Sure. Axel Halley with Ace King on an Ace 8 8 board, and Mosbach has the goods. Was going to say he was on a bit of a heater. But yeah, this is disaster. Pass come out with a C bet. 25% pot, and I have to ask Randy, these board textures with these middling cards paired on the flop, Mosbok, is it fair to say, gotta have more 8x, more 7x, more 9x from the big blind than Axel from under the gun? Yes, he definitely has more 9x's. And he's most likely able to get a lot of value by check raising the flop. Right. Because once he check calls, Axel might play a passive line on the turn or a river. It would be a disaster for Halle to check back turn, right? Yeah, and it's also hard for Mario to represent a bluff if he was to check call. So with a check raise, maybe he can get a bit more. And certainly Ace-King can't go anywhere for now. Has to keep the flop honest. 
And when you're up against someone as good as Mosbok, who's going to be wrapped around those eights with hands like seven, nine, seven, five, some backdoor flush, backdoor straight kind of combos. Not weighted exclusively towards trips here is Mosbok as the deuce of spades rolls off on the turn. And with this SPR, you have to ask whether this he should, is he a He should double. go small on the turn just so that his opponent can't hero fold, fold like a weak ace. And it's also nice that it wasn't a heart on the turn just because now there's backdoor flush draws mm. he can try and represent. That's a great point. Yeah, some of those seven, nine, seven, five, seven, six backdoor spades that you mentioned. 2.1 out there, 3.3 .3 million back. Mossbok really just gives nothing away. Whether he's running a bluff or has value, good luck getting a read off that man. Yeah, he's consistent with his composure as well as his play. Looks like half pot, setting up a very natural river SPR around the other round 0.5. So, him coming in with half pot he deems this the right size that a big ace would never fold to on the turn. Just trying to get the most now, just in case his opponent folds to a river jam. It's just, just a tough spot now because you're looking at an 8x or nothing. You're never expecting this to be just a naked ace. It's going to make the call, and I think the game plan maybe for Axel is call and maybe get away on the river. Yeah, at this point, as crazy as it sounds, ace-king. We'll see, Nothing though. Nothing short of a bluff catcher. God, that's a bad card for yeah. LA. That's a really bad card for Halle. Yeah, Axel Halle really wanted, of course, the ace. But if it wasn't going to be the ace, he wanted to see maybe another spade where he can convince himself that his opponent backed up into a flush. And it doesn't help that Axel has the covering stack where there's that little bit of extra value, right? That extra bounty you can collect. That's a great point, Randy. With the bounty implications, is Mosbok really likely to empty the entire clip? when he knows his bounty's on the line. He, he's gonna leave one chip back, but I kinda wouldn't have mind it if he just threw it all in this spot. I know he probably always leaves one back, but just because it entices your opponent to call a little bit more, rather than, you know, just to see if they can collect that bounty, given that you've got the nuts, practically. What a fantastic hand of poker on full display here. You see Halle throw out all of his time extensions <laughs> and genuinely pained by this decision he finds himself in. You know, Randy, if this is me running this spot, he can just fold because he knows I don't have bluffs here. But when you're up against someone like Mosbok, who even at a final table with six left, is willing to put it all on the line with a big bluff. It makes life incredibly difficult. Right on. And the only information Axel has really is just trying to see if he can get any read maybe on the turn bet sizing. I don't think he can. He just looks pained. We've all been there. 
We've all been in his shoes. Oh no. He's, he's Is he gonna flick in the old one chip, never see them return? If he calls and loses, he'll move down to the bottom two of the chip counts, which is bad because he wouldn't have covering stacks for most of the field. Mosbot could move up to 8.5 million, closing the gap on chip leader Soiza. Oh, he's making the call, Randy, and Mosbok scoops an 8.6 million chip pot. He's not all in, by the way. Oh, he wasn't all in. The money, man. This is a Mosbok trip. Looking for redemption after the crossbar he hit in the 200k. Would love nothing more than to join his good friends, Poker Code buddies, Fedor Holtz and Ty Seibinger as Triton champions. The money man. Double M. There we go. Super Mario. Still quite a gap, though, from Soiza and Mario yeah, Mosbach. Yes. Okay, thank you. Axel Holley down to fifth of six. We're going to do the big one. So one, two, three. So no, I'm small one. Small one. Big one. See if Axel can shake it off. Feels like a setup, doesn't it? Well, here comes Imad Darwish, King 10 suited. Cup position, 30 blinds. He's seen Soyuz is so active too, he's never folding. Yeah, there's even been some verbal jousting and banter between them both about how active he's been. Michael. You have what, 4 million? A lot? Yeah. About 4.2, 4 I think. Thank you. Take care, man. Slowly. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> Michael, Michael. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Take care, Soiza. Be careful, even though you're the trip leader, and have me covered. <laughs> what is this hand position? Uh, is he... Kind of gesturing that he's going to snap check back. I don't know. 500 k of meaty seabet from the Malaysian tramp Triton champion. Getting a good smile to Soiza. See what he three bet you with just uh, now? Did you see, did he when he three bet you just no. now? You didn't see. You see? I didn't see. It's Queen Jack of Spades. Mario's thinking. Please don't tell. <laughs> Stream catching up.
Oh, ace five, ace five. Not gonna take this one. Hodwar has been very quiet so far at this final table, but did accumulate two pay jumps so far. And the big with that 10 8 off. It's tricky because it's a pretty playable hand, but he also has a comfortable lead on the bottom two stacks, which he covers. Still going to take a flop, but he really doesn't want to lose too many chips in his pot if he can help it. But open-ended, amazing opportunity for him to actually try and steal this one away from Mario Mansbach. Currently fourth in chips, and it does feel like O'Dwyer can find a path to victory here. Although Mosbach not necessarily going to be C-betting. There should be a lot of checkbacks with Ace-5, just because this board hits the big blind and... Well, Dwarf's kind of got that stack where he could check jam some of his range, too. But it looks like he will fire. He went up a little bit, too, with the 500k bet. Does that now deter Dwarf from actually check jamming? Gets incredibly awkward, right? We call the 500k. Now there's 1.8 in the middle. We've got 2.2 back. What do we do on brick turns? Gets uncomfortable. I do like check calling because when your opponent sizes up, it does kind of imply he's more willing to call and put resistance. Seven. Very interesting. This is a card that should improve Odwire's range more. And when someone sizes up with their C-bet, it's even more likely they're not C-betting mid-pair. Dwyer uh, rolling a check on this occasion. How does Mario want to Knuckle. proceed? He's found victory. a path to victory, Randy. Money Mario. The money man, 100% check mark next to his name, closing in on the 10 million chip mark, has done a fantastic job at closing the gap on Soiza. Will win this hand at showdown unless by some magic O'Dwyer gets him to fold. Well, he saved himself chips. Didn't get tempted to bluff even though he just has high card. That is some discipline. Now Mario trying to wait whether it's worth value betting it's a nine or is he going to fear getting check raised by like a seven or some backdoor clubs. It does always feel like you're opening a can of worms, right? Yeah, but he's going for it. Thin. You know it's crossing O'Dwyer's mind. Don't you dare, Randy. Ten high, no club. Well, Mario should never have 7x. He should really rarely have boats. Can have clubs, though, he right? He can have barrel. clubs, correct. And does he think an ace would bet full? That's the question. He's not sure, so he's just going to pitch it. Also be very risky to do it. Six remaining. Surging to 9.6 million. Quick dealer change here. Two eliminations so far. Champion of this one. Not going to be picking up a custom Jacob & Co. Triton collaboration timepiece, but will be picking up enough cash to go and purchase one, the official timekeeper of the Triton Super High Roller Series. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, it's just the one perfect watch brand to check out. They're embedding playful spirit into the watch functions. Their Astronomia Casino has a functioning roulette wheel inside the piece. Check it out during the break. 
Fuck. Randy, I've got bad news, pal. What? There's Could possibly be bad news. There's a mosquito in the oh booth. Oh no! <laughs> There's a mosquito in the you booth. Know who I'm getting pieced up. Is there someone who hates mosquitoes? I am getting pieced up. Is it Ali? <laughs> he hates. He gets distracted. He's just trying to kill every flies and everything. It's Hold bad, on. man. My jacket's on. I'm on. I'll, I'll be quiet for two seconds. <laughs> get my jacket on. I'm getting. I'm zipping absolutely, up all the way. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> torn to shreds here. Oh, in the booth as Halle takes the rejam spot. I'm safe. <laughs> I'm really safe here. All right. Do you got a blanket too? I can get my neck. Mario's going to be safe with that. Wrap around. It doesn't matter. Try it. You just left our money. It can be one million, ten dollars. Anyway, like you come. like it. One million, I come. I can play for ten dollars. Ah, yeah. What are you looking at, mate? Did you not see that strobe light? Oh, okay. come through the window. There's someone's up on the hill. Yeah. It oh. might be Tom Cruise. Yeah. It's blind. Tom From Cruise. Mission Impossible. Zooming he's in on so us with a sniper, mate. <laughs> okay. he's, try oh, he's trying to get the mosquito for us. Thanks, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Patricia James Dempsey's taking cover. Um, I'm standing. That's bad. I'm a big target. I think, I think you're fine, Randy. Even standing. <laughs> I hear you. Big blind's gone up. Your man's got the stream up. I don't think that's allowed, pal. Although he's not in the hand, I'll let him off. Well, he's sitting a so short ace through offsuit. He's just gonna muck. The raggedy aces don't really play that well from the big blind, especially at final tables where you don't really want to bleed like two blinds pre and another one or two on the flop. The stack preservation is probably one of the most important things at final tables, especially for short stacks. Feels like Imad Darish is having the most fun, isn't it? He's enjoying himself, enjoying the moment. Love to see it. Yeah, get a massage at the same time. Mosbok has. He's enjoying it too, just because he's always collecting huge paychecks. Could have start calling him the money man. Money Mario? Money Mario. MMM. MMM. Triple M. Okay. No. No, no, no. Oh. Ah, you, you oh. <coughs> didn't see. Uh, yeah. That was awkward. <laughs> what happened there? Huh? He. You see my cup? Oh. Wow. He uh, thought he got a walk. Exposed his hand. He said you saw it. He said Semi exposed. They're mad. Having fun and the fun leading to being distracted. No, no, it didn't fall. He, he see my hand, so I opened my hand. Maybe just one car. Well, he definitely saw two well, now. I think he, has he seen it, Randy? Are we sure? Yeah, yeah a little yeah, close up I, there. I didn't see it, but. We need a replay, but I believe he at least uh, saw one. Maybe save you. Oh, show, show me. I had one jack. Okay, no. I, I wonder, yeah. He just wants to show you because he's dominated. He didn't see you raise. Yeah. I didn't see. Of course, I didn't. Yeah, see. yeah. Of course, not, no, nobody's fault. He just, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I had one jack, so you know, before save money. Probably. You might having some fun, and it's custom. Nice to, yeah. Oh. You know, a lot of money on the line. Thought he was getting a walk. Soiser. 
gentleman as always. Seller power had a jack, so you know, perhaps it saved you. Didn't. Mossbok had the queen jack. I mean, he has to fold oh, once no. his opponent knows his cards, right? Even a hand as strong as king jack. Where do you draw the line? What if you've got, like, ace jack? Do you just play? The real boss move would have been, <laughs> oh, you saw my hand. I'm, I'm all, all in. in. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, go on then. <laughs> oh man, VPV has been incredibly quiet through no fault of his own. He's just been card dead. This is actually a pretty bad spot for him because Ace Ten. It's okay for his stack, but he'll be re jamming on a under the gun open against a player who's actually very short. One million. He's going to take a shot for it. <laughs> Slight lag there. That was. <laughs> is that a string raise? Is that possible? <laughs> I've never heard of a verbal <laughs> string raise. <laughs> that was verbal lag, Randy. Yeah. What is it? what is going on? No, I yeah. seem normal. We're playing for seven hundred eighteen thousand. We've got Imad <laughs> exposing his hand, thinking he got a walk. He really folded Didn't jacks. notice. The, the dude just now pre-flopped. He did fold the jack. He fold the jacks, yeah. And I shoved for 36 blinds or something, yeah. 37 blinds. So is I it just... <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> running good. That's how good I'm running. <laughs> it's received word. <laughs> Sorry, the Bulldog did <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Have jacks. A huge spot there, first and second in chips at the time. This configuration would be very different had he made that call. Soiza would even be chip leader and everything would be different. Sometimes it's just that one hand. Do they call it the butterfly flag? Yeah, they do. Great movie. The mosquito effect, ever seen that one? You know, ever since <laughs> I called it right out. right in front of me. It's live. Is the it? The mosquito effect, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Look at this bad boy. I thought you live in Thailand where it's a common thing. Yeah, You're not immune to it. I have spray. You'll be careful in Thailand, man. Catch some. I know. I've been, and it's terrible when you get eaten up at the beaches. Get pieced up by the mosquitoes. Mosbok is just fearless. With the ducks. Says Imad, you're sat third in chips, pal. Do you really want to go home in sixth? There's a bit of meta going on between these two now, right? Where he folded the king jack in the big face up by accident. Now he's opening jack eight off suit. By no means a strong hand. Mosbok is now just two big blinds behind. The tournament chip leader, Michael Soizu, who came in to this FT with the overwhelming chip lead. I can see things get light between these two soon. Mossbox built a tower of chips. Soizu back in the driver's seat. King 10 under the gun. 400. Randy, on so many occasions, we've pointed our viewers around the world to a certain website called pokerstake.com. Don't know if you have heard of it. We've even brought up the names of Michael Soizer. Selling action over on Poker Stake. Sold action in this 40k mystery bounty. And I wonder if there is anyone out there Just on YouTube, on Twitch, on the Triton Thank Poker you. Plus app, watching the show with a bit of a financial incentive. Perhaps a little half a percent of Soyz's action. Playing for 700 
and 18,000 plus bounties as we head to the ace nine five board. So is it? That was a bit weird, that one. <laughs> yeah, this. Some tension is building, I feel. Well, tension perhaps due to the fact that O'Dwyer and Axel are now sub 10 bigs. Average stack of 27 big blinds. Only Mosbok and Soiser with more. Steve is our shortest stack. In the small king and eight off, so he needs to really find a spot to make a move and collect some chips, or he's going to bleed out. This is the one. And you know what? Soiza can call very wide here. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? It wouldn't surprise me if he calls here because that bounty is worth 83,000 on average. If you can, can you collect exactly it. Point? When uh, a small blind jams too, it, is it doesn't necessarily mean two big cards or pocket pairs every time, right? So he's often live. The I think the key important part is it doesn't really hurt his stack to take this risk to collect a nice bounty. Call. Yeah, there he's go. gonna make the call. Knows he's gambling but happy to do so for the bounty and the ladder and to eliminate a very tough opponent. Steve O'Dwyer with over 39 million in live earnings. First live cash coming back in 2007. Fast forward 16 years He's in the hunt for his third title. Why are not ent entertaining the heart for a sweat that Soiza called for? Clean run out for the One King High and a nod of approval yeah. from Steve O'Dwyer. He shot the bullet and he missed. You know, Steve O's no, ice cold, it. dude. Ice cold. Hey, sorry. Well, someone just tried to hunt him down. Absolute Would you be happy about killer. it? This is a man. He's all business. That you don't want to cross, okay? He also runs a side business, though. You know that trinket shop? <laughs> Shaman O'Dwyer. <laughs> you know about it? I've heard rumors yeah. of the good luck charms. We've seen them time and time again. Even Ali has shopped there. Doesn't have one. Yeah, I would love one. Oh, did you know? He doesn't have one, does he? Although I will say 2023 has been an incredibly fortunate year for me. I so wouldn't change anything exactly, and start getting yeah. a trinket. You might get one of the bad ones. Although, if he wants to give me one for 2024, I'm, I'm an open shop. I know it's why it's yeah, But what if he omens. accidentally gives you a defective one? No, nah, I trust O'Dwyer's judgment, man. 14th on the all-time money <laughs> list is closing oh yeah. in on the 40 million in live earnings, Mark. I trust that he's going to slide in probably all his chips or half of them with these two sevens pre. It's about the three million. Is collected. Yep. Two bounties so far. Soyz is going to get out of there. Harlin. Oh, oh snap what do we got? Jam. Ace King. Big slick. Ah. Advantage O'Dwyer in terms of equity and bounty potential. 
BBV hey, yeah, snap go. calling out the big, understandably so, with the ace king as we head to the queen 942 spades. Split. Safe flop for Dwyer now more than a two to one favorite across turn and river. Oh, Ten of diamonds down. does now give VBV Broadway outs. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. Ace, king, or a jack needed. Doesn't come. We're going to lose the Triton <laughs> champion and the online OG, Russian Jim Carrey, one of the happiest players on tour. BBV returning to the Triton series here in Monte Carlo with a final table. Sixth place finish. Winning 166,000 plus one envelope, guaranteed at least 40,000, but an average expectation of 83k. Good to see him make another deep run. Always keeping it lively. Really does, man. Infectious banter and table chat. Humble in victory, gracious in defeat. Five left in the 40k mystery bounty, and that is how things stand and Soiser has actually lost the chip lead after going bounty hunting against O'Dwyer. It's now Mario Mosbach in the driver's seat. 216,000 guaranteed for these remaining five players. O'Dwyer now up to three bounties. Imad collecting his first. Don't do it, man. You can. I know. Just counting first. Mario collecting his fifth. At this final table tied with Soiza for most bounties. <laughs> Don't see my cut. That's collusion, my friend. No collusion. You're my friend. I'm fucking four. No problem. All in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, he's having fun, and he? I have a plan. He's having fun. No problem, man. I believe you. Honest poker. Show me your first. Oh, you can open. I wish it's my car. I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Pocket, pocket, pocket deuce. Yeah, no problem. It's okay, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Pocket deuce. Uh, yeah, same. Asian Poker Tour co-owner, Natural 8 Poker representative, two-time Triton champion, third on Malaysia's all-time money list. One of the most decorated Asian players of all time, not just from the Malaysian contingent, I've played uh, Soiza before he was playing the Triton series. Always bested me every single time. They have your number. He does. He's a solid player. Tricky. Just all around crusher. Mario's got pocket eights in the big. A hand where maybe he would reshove, but not against the opponent who's also got 10 million in chips. So let's take a flop. Yeah, first v second in chips. I'm actually unsure who covers who. Well, I'm sure that Michael Soiza is likely to win this pot. I believe Soiza covers by 25k. That's what I'm seeing in the app. Here comes the C-bet. Nice okay. and small. Keeps the pairs as well as some high card hands to continue. Obviously top pair is not very vulnerable. Another annoying spot for Mosbok. Similarly with the pocket tens earlier on. Yeah, Just but he, he knows that Soyz is going to C-bet wide and 
price is good. Just the loan over card, and that is a bad turn card for the money man. This is where it really gets interesting if Soiza sizes once again on the turn because it does have that straight up pair value pocket eights, right? But it's a little bit troublesome holding the eight of hearts as well as the eight of diamonds because you're blocking some of those multi barrels, the seven eights as well as backdoor hearts. It's not really the ideal hand to be check calling once more. Theory-wise, you'd almost rather have a 6x without blocking the, the 7 one or 8. One. But I guess you can't really choose your cards. Hey, sorry. Two-thirds pot on the turn, and it gets uncomfortable for Mossbok. First against second in chips, practically tied at the top. Eighth of a big blind difference between these two. Looks like he's gonna pay off this turn. Drawing slim. Everyone else just <laughs> watching the two chip leaders play a big pot. Three point nine out there. That's Mosbok. Bow block. I wouldn't think he'd want to block just because he'd be just giving his opponent extra chips yeah. and also Soiza needs to fear to four a little bit. The good value for Soiza winning 2.1 million chips in that hand. And if you weren't sure who was the chip leader, now we know. Really key pot there for Soiza. As Mosbok had narrowed the gap, had in fact taken the chip lead at one point. Soiza back out in pole position in Monaco. Calls himself a businessman now. I'm still a bit of a non-believer. <laughs> you can be a businessman and a professional poker player. He's just saying that because he's hoping he can <laughs> invite someone to the next invitation or one day. Hey, I'm doing the same now in Thailand. <laughs> your your big comeback like is a uh, in a couple years. years. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, look at me, I'm a businessman now. You sell some, some big properties, you let me know. And, uh, <laughs> you get me in there, you invite me as the pro. I might not be a strong pope, but at least I know the rules. Queen Jack 6, Soiza. Flopping best in the form of middle pair. Was dominated pre. 1.1 1 .1 out there. A lot of players check back their mid pairs just trying to take one off and turn into like a hand where you get one street of value at best. That's a nice card because, you know, he picks up the backdoor diamonds in case he's behind, but also decreases the likelihood of his opponent holding the queen. See an orange sweater back there. It's the eye finger. Funny feeling. <laughs> That's <laughs> the eye finger. I'm starting to question. I think he has seven orange hoodies. I hope he does. I hope it's that's the case, Randy, that it's multiple versions of the same hoodie. It's, you know, perhaps wouldn't want to sit next to him <laughs> at the table. So is it content on... Knuckling back after picking up the diamonds. Club on the river, both flush draws bricking. As does Halle. Axel did get to see all five cards for free. Was second in chips just a few orbits ago and then played 
that monster pop, the Kans Mario Mosbok, East King against 9-8 on the Ace-8-8 eight, eight board. Now the shorter end of the stacks out there. I believe Soiza can definitely th throw a little bit of chips out there trying to get paid off Holly. by like a jack. Well, okay, not a little, all of it. Actually, I kind of like it now because he allows them to capture the bounty, right? I think standard play is to bet small, but in this format, there's definitely merit to just ripping it in. That Danny Tang. Can hear Danny Tang on the rails. Fade or hold. You are more cow, bro. What are you talking about? Oh, Everybody identified you as the problem, you know, not me. You know, unanimously agreed. Mario is the problem. Fade or Mateus with three I'm titles a piece. Mm, I mean, based on Imad's uh, assessment, you know. What? You might what? You said that he is the problem. Like we are not the problem, yeah. He is the problem, no? You are the problem. <laughs> no, 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 suddenly I'm the problem. What do you mean? You are the problem. How can you change your, your no, assessment, no, you know? No, I, I show you my hand, you know? Like, it's all good hands. <laughs> Automatic, you know? It's, uh, you know? I'm not going to forget this. Why? No one here saying I'm the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, they've awoken the beast, Randy. It's all over. This is O'Dwyer's third title. Problem. I'm calling it here. For Mosbach, Axel wakes up with Jax, the shortest stack. This is good timing. Give himself a chance to get right back in there. The thing is, he's so short where mosbach has got to go bounty hunting. Yeah, of course. O'Dwyer getting out of the way. Mosbach got to make the call. Cards on their backs. He sees the one over and 29% equity as Mosbok, the money man, looking for his sixth bounty. All in, brought to you by betacr.eu. And well, the king 9 7 board, and all of a sudden, Halley does not want to make a set of jacks. As the Jack of Hearts I mean, yeah. redraw yeah. rolls off on the turn, and now he finds himself drawing to 10 outs once for his tournament life. Doesn't find it on the four of spades river. Set of jacks, no good against the money man. Mario Mosbach claiming a sixth bounty here. In this 40k mystery bounty, and with that elimination, Axel Halle adding a final table to his Triton track record. Join us for the first time in Cyprus earlier on this year. Picked up a loan cash out there. Second event here in Monte Carlo. First final table of his Triton poker career. We'll be going home with 216,500. Unfortunately, no bounty collected. That is bounty As He bows out in fifth. Will not be heading up to the stage tomorrow to pick out a bounty. Soiza continuing to reign supreme atop of the chip counts, but he's got a certain money man, Bosbok to worry about who's been, well, bulldozing his way up the table. Chip counts actually took the chip lead at one point. But I just want to return to that conversation that was had before Halle was eliminated because they have rustled the jimmies of Steve O'Dwyer. I don't think I've ever seen Steve O'Dwyer that pissed off before. <laughs> Genuinely <laughs> upset that nobody has labeled him a problem 
just due to the fact that he doesn't have the chip lead? Does that now mean that Odwire's not a threat? Lucky, lucky, lucky. Big mistake, in my opinion. Odwire is always a threat. No, no, no. I know. You know that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. They don't know that. I it's think, a problem. I think they've poke, poked the hibernating <laughs> polar bear. They've awoken the beast. Adwire is fuming. He's like, you know what, boys? Third title. Yeah. He's first one out. He's, he's gone. He's leaving. He's going. He's taking his break early. <laughs> you might even say it, Steve. I hate you now. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Scheduled break with four players remaining. Soiza, a two-time champion. Out in pole position in this 40k mystery bounty. Mosbok. Looking for his first Triton trophy has has the correct rail to take this one down. The Three time code. champion, Ibinger and Fado Holtz watching on from the rail, the poker code crew. Mosbok looking for redemption here after coming second to Dan Smith in that two hundred K. A bit of a slow start out of the gate there, Randy, but once Mustafov bowed out in eighth. It was then Sammy the Bulldog involved in a couple of big pots, and we got to six-handed, bit of a stalemate, but now back-to-back -back eliminations, and, well, we're down to four players. We are down to four, and everyone has collected extra bounties. Hello. Mario Mosbach, current uh, bounty champion with uh, six bounties at the moment, still multiple to be had, and remember, if you do win the tournament, you collect your bounty as well. 272,000 guaranteed for these final four players. We have Soiza and O'Dwyer looking for their third title. Don't go too far short. Ten-minute commercial break when Randy and I return. Be playing down to the champion here in Monte Carlo. <laughs> Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. Poker song. Main the biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of GG Poker. Wow. Traffic reaches all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Jardine with staff off. Knows that Mosbok's going to have plenty of hands that are going to bet fold. See, Mosbok has the actual goods here this time round. Has clubs covered as well. Did he just? Did he just say all He's he in. did? He said all in, Randy. We bounty hunting. Oh, Mosbok wasn't thrilled about it, understandably so, on that board. Up against the under the gun. Hear the reaction from the players as well. 4.4 million in the middle. Four doesn't really change anything, Randy. Mustafov still looking for an ace or a nine to double up. Doesn't find it on the Deuce of Spades River. Clean run out. <coughs> For Mario Mosbok's pocket jacks as he... He's got a 100% cash rate here. And he also does. takes home two bounties on top of his prize. Okay, 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 so not bad. The money machine. Gonna continue churning tomorrow, perhaps. For Mustafov, two pulls at a top bounty. The Bulldog has made a couple of disciplined folds this time. It's going to look to activate with the pocket jacks. A couple of shorter stacks behind. Axel, an incredibly observant customer, by the way. Something I have noticed. Oh, he might have hooked a victim here. He's got two eights. They're pretty deep, so I wouldn't ever think they would be getting this in pre- so I should be looking for a spot to try and set mine this one. Naturally. Oh, so sorry. Uh, and this is a massive opportunity for Sammy. Wow, this is a 37 big blind effective jam. This is a big misstep. If Sammy can find a call. It's scary though, right? Because you're sitting in third. It's a big jam. This one is Soiser perhaps found the right customer to actually jam against if he's going to get bigger pairs to fold. We've seen it already. We saw Nicky P fold the jacks incorrectly in that 200k, I believe. I don't know if I could lay this one down. I'm never expecting Soiser to do this with queens, kings, and aces. Maybe ace, king, I can see, but I'm willing to take a coin flip if I am a slight favorite. See Sammy the Bulldog scanning around the table, looking the other stacks. Again, kind of going back to that forcing and all-in. Randy, you mentioned the ace-king, but what about some of the ace-queens, king-queens? Sure. And if we are a sh Oh, wow. wow. What a fold. Soiser. He got away with that. Soiser's going to see that one. Time money list. A win here today would eclipse the 40 million in live earnings, Mark. When do you think his first recorded cash was, Randy? Uh, I'm having to scroll <laughs> way back. It was uh, definitely in 2003. 2007. That's close. Whatever. Close. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, we'll take it. 2007. King Jack suited down for, for Dwyer. All disciplined. I'm trying to think what I was doing in 2007, Randy. Were you born yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Sammy going to take a flop here, suited queen. Top pair for Axel, swing and a miss for Sammy. Maybe Axel actually checks back to this flop with a say. Is that your hand? Certainly. Betting a flop is the default. Oh, the entry, okay. Coming soon, the hand is too bad. You, you can see Jack tends to it. <laughs> Jack tends to it coming soon. Yeah, he's not really looking to just bet, get it in on the flop. So, kind of want to just check some of these down, call two streets, or bet, bet it yourself. I was just 
Sammy thinks he's got a live out to the five, but we know that would be trouble. That would be disastrous as he does probe for half part. Very comfortable call for Axel in position, especially draw two to five. Thank you. Oh. Did we say the five was going to oh. be a bad card? It's a non diamond five as well, Randy. 1.3 in the middle. Sammy the Bulldog thinks he's just rivered the ginnest of cards. Axel just playing this one to perfection. Yeah. Allowing Sammy to catch up. Definitely a dry gin card. It's like 700k on request. So we know what that's going to be met with. Yeah, the main question is what size to go for. I wouldn't mind him just clicking it really small just to try to get some crying calls occasionally. A jam would really dissuade your opponent from calling with anything. But he might still jam. We'll see. Just depends on what he thinks a three would do. Although it's pretty hard for Sammy to usually have a three in this spot. You wouldn't expect him to defend three besides ace three. But queen three of hearts is in there. What a disastrous turn of events for Sammy the Bulldog. Had that triple KO. I guess he is going to do the all but one. Folded the jacks incorrectly against Soiza Pre just a few hands ago. It's just a downward spiral. I know the eight may seem unlikely to Sammy from under the gun, but then again, what? Why would Axel ever make a heroic bluff here when you should have a lot of eight axes from the big? He said pocket eights. I have to ask a bit of a dumb question here, Randy. There is no dumb question to go on. Axel's left 25k behind. Sammy has the third nut straight. Is there ever a world with the bounty implications that instead of calling, we go for it all? Or do we leave Axel with the 25k back in the hopes that we're the one that gets it on the next hand? On this board? Oh, he's made the oh, call. Wow. On this board, I was going to say he probably shouldn't jam. 6.2 million Just in case the whole jack, you know? Yeah, he's definitely going to be replaying these hands. But he still has some chips to play with. Here comes Imad Derwish. Loves these raggy aces, yeah. doesn't he? To be fair, though, he's in a little bit of a later position in this hand. Oh, bounty opportunity as well. All in. All in. Sammy the Bulldog. Going to take the rejam spot. You don't love it, but if you f open this hand, you're going to have to expect the short stack to jam. Man from Indonesia taking the re-jam spot. Got to give him credit for having the heart. Gets shown the bad news, but 53-46. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. And you know, Randy, I'm an impartial man in the booth, but little part of me I'd like to see Sammy stick around with us for a little while longer. 
Going to be tough it's on that be board. Very hard for him to stick around. Looking for a jack. Perhaps one of the ones that he pitched. A warm welcome back to the sporting here in Monte Carlo, Monaco. We're down to the final four players in event number eight, the 40K Mystery Bounty. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, for the call on this one. A pretty action-packed final table so far, Randy. It's been money man Mosbach on the climb chasing Michael Soizer, but it is Soizer that re retains the chip lead atop of the chip counts, looking for title number three. Third on Malaysia's all-time money list, just really showing us what he's capable of. Yeah, you know, Soizer's got the experience. He's got Triton titles under his belt. You know, we expected the bounty format to speed up things a bit as players try to collect those bounties. And we've seen some uh, looser calls, you know, like ace deuce, but rightfully so because those bounties are worth 83000 a piece on average. Um, but if you get lucky, it could be worth 400000 400k bounty, three 200k bounties, six 100k bounties. The award ceremony for the bounty pulling going to be tomorrow hosted right. by Arlene Najad. 718,000 up top on this one. I think the bounty side of the equation, not saying it's necessarily going to be ignored from here on out, but the pay jumps now incredibly considerable. Right. So when there's less players, then you got to respect the prize pool a lot right. more. Um, so you're right. Things will be different uh, at this point. 272,000 guaranteed for the final four. Jump to 333,000 for a third place finish. Runner up going to be going home with 484,000. Looking at the chip counts, average stack of 32 bigs. Feels like we've got a lot more playability here. Even with Imad on the shorter stack, anyone's game, Randy, as we look it to is. throw it down yeah. to the main stage once more. Michael Soizer leads the field, but does have incredibly tough competition in Money Man Mosbok. Steve O'Dwyer and Imad Dorici in fourth. O'Dwyer also looking to pick up his third title. Would be his second of the series. Soizer looking for title number three. Mosbok, of course, looking for redemption after coming second in the 200k. Triton Invitational has so the rail of the support. You can be the oh, what's he doing? O'Dwyer is the problem. Case closed. I am the problem. Okay. <laughs> you, have you seen settled. the F I'm around and problem. find out video? <laughs> He's a problem. For that? Oh. Okay. I'm loving this. I'll tell you, if there's any man that I could single out to not mess around with, the name Phil Ivy comes to mind, but a close second is Steve O'Dwyer, Randy. He's the problem. He wants to be the problem. But no one's acknowledging it. No, it's been acknowledged oh, now. Yes. Imad's okay. case closed. You're the problem, Steve-O. I apologize for speaking so out of problem. turn and okay. yeah. think Lufanza learned the hard way. Uh -huh. He's just going to win out of spite now. Wasn't going to win before, Randy. Now he's got a point to prove. Don't sleep on Steve O'Dwyer. I feel like, oh, yeah. So is uh, on the bus. There's actually a little bit of a target on Imad's back because he's only sitting on 12 blinds. 
still have a 7-3 suited. Suited barking shark. Got to hit the mark. One gap too many. Needs to be a six gapper, right? To defend the big. <laughs> Not quite that big. Just a one gapper. I think we'll be fine. Maria easy when you hose. get caught. Exactly. When you get caught. Easy. Out here, coining. Oh, New see. terms. So you have the problem. It's not Michael. It's not him. It's you. Yeah. I mean, you can ask him how big of a problem I've been for him. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Oh. Extreme problem. I like your honesty. You know, you are honest. I busted him twice already. Yeah? Time. That's right. Oh. Almost three times. Almost three times. <laughs> Almost yeah. fucking three times. <laughs> Who's the problem in the booth, Randy? Out of us four? Who owns that oh. title? It's not me. That's all I care about. You tell me. You think it's me? No. It has to be Ali, right? Yeah, yeah. you would think. <laughs> and I think Ali well, would I'm react in the same way that Steve O'Dwyer does. He's like, hang on, <laughs> I'm the problem. Here comes Mario. Queen four offsuit. Raising into O'Dwyer. And O'Dwyer's got one of those hands where normally he can reshove, but Imad Darish is sitting on 11 blinds and he really doesn't want to be at risk first. Gonna take a flop here in position. To Mario Mosbach with the makeshift scarf. It is a Triton hoodie, but. Yeah, but it's not actually a scarf. He's uh, mixing it up. Queen four, four diamonds in hand. Did come with the 3.2x out of the small. A 7 3. Big advantage to him on this flop just because Odwar should be re-jamming all of his solid aces, even some of the baby ones as well. No spade on board is a bit problematic for Odwar and could easily be down and drawing very slim already. But he's going to take one off and I guess the idea is just try and check it down. He's going to try. It's going to be difficult if Mosbot continues firing, does pick up equity in the form of a gut shot. Also has a relevant queen of clubs. His backdoor clubs have presented themselves on the turn. Right, the queen of clubs is important because you block some of these hands that can continue when you're holding high card. 1.5. Oh. He wants an outright fold now. Such a gangster. The money man. Otwire's cards haven't hit the muck yet. They just have to. He's just got King Jack high. There's really nothing he can do. He needs to respect the situation. And just a really nice read from Mario. Otwire really shouldn't have too many A-sexes in his range. Otwire has been telling everyone that he's the problem. He's in the tank here. He's got a problem spot. Just King High. I'm blocking diamonds. I'm blocking clubs. I'm blocking the gut shots. The hand's like 10-9, 10-8, 9-8. Right, but you need to think about the hand doesn't end here if you just call. There's still one more street to be played where Mario can still fire once more. Wow. Oh. Ended up using a time bank there before folding. Had me on the edge of my seat with Steve O'Dwyer. You just never know. Spidey senses were tingling. Rightly so. Unable to do much here. Uh, come on, guys. Any chips? 
I love this guy. I want this guy to be at the feature table more often. Yes, you can do it, please, my friend, do it. I know you like me. I know you can do it. I know. I know and you want to do it. You would like to so much. You would like to so much. He's not going to like what he's going to see. <laughs> Hands in air. <laughs> Mosbox got the suited variety. Steve O in the small, 16 bigs with an ace. Chip leader Soiza in the big blind. Big question on whether he wants to rip it in or just limp to play cautious as he's currently sitting in third. Iman Darish has only got 11 oh. blinds. About 4 million. Precisely. Rip it in. Fold. Um, Sonny, Sonny, help me. Yeah, it was about four. And he's calm, please. Sonny. Tell him. Sonny. <laughs> Tell him what? <laughs> See the dealer's wow. reaction as well. Now, guys, everything will change. Look. Thank you. Thank you, darling. New dealer. Everything will change, huh? Should we just uh, mute our mics, Randy? Let Imad do the talking. How about let Imad do the betting? Over on betacr.eu, you can elevate your live sports engagement experience. Exclusive live action. Prediction options on Triton events with 15% free play up to $250. And, well, a couple of players out there that I know plenty of viewers around the world would have had their money on. Soiza, O'Dwyer, both two-time Triton champions know just how to close out one of these events. Why not pony up some money and get some bets down? Mosbok. Good start. Mario. Loving life has the short Mario. stack in the big blind as well. They've had sub-10. Soiza with a very playable King Jack mm -hmm. offsuit. From the small. There's actually, this is a hand where you could three bet, but there is a lot of reason to just actually flat because you allow Imad to come along and maybe give yourself an opportunity, but he's still going to three bet. And 50,000. The three and a half X, and we can see that. Soiza is going to be playing difficult pots out of position. That's if Mosbach opts to just flat. He should be flatting just because he's out chipped for one, so no bounty possible for Mario. I mean, can you ever like four bet? Like click it? Like and then fold to mil? a jam? I guess that's possible too. I believe the default is the flat. I don't think he would ever four bet jam. It seems a bit excessive. No, but clicking it to like 3.3 .3 million is sexy, Randy. It's 2023. 3.3? 3. Oh, <laughs> Put me in, coach. 3.3 .3 for 2023. You got it. Put me in. His hand's over. Mosbok. Okay. So, Henry, takes it down. there's a 50k going on. <laughs> You're welcome to take, find 50k and go enter Take now. my seat. Yes, and then come back to me in an hour. Wow, that was and a cool four. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> How sexy was that four bet from Mosbok, unfazed. He's playing amazing. It, honestly, every time we've had him at a feature table, He's taken the chip lead with that well-timed four bet away from Soizu, who now has a problem to his left, although they are equally positioned at this four-handed table. Raise. It's 
getting to that stage now where he may be getting a bit angsty. Needs to make something happen. Has a couple of hands for being in the big. Believe me, Steve, I will catch you. Small blind, big blind. Raise me, raise me every time. I will catch you, I will catch you. Oh, button is here. You have a problem. Yeah. I've been very fair so far. This what? Final. I've been very fair so far this final table. Yeah? Fair with who? With me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I believe you. I know I believe you. Believe me. Steve, I just lay it down Thank the you. law. Check the tape. Huh? Check the tape. I will check. I will check everything. I, I pulled it an ace in the cutoff earlier when you were in the big line. Oh. I believe you. Bo. Yeah. Please, darling, please. Okay. Give him a little point of the finger, didn't he, Randy? He's like, I've yeah. been honest with you, Imad. With nine bigs. This is enough for him, right? He's been waiting for a spot. He's on the button. Happy to run it. Bunti, Steve. <laughs> Bunti, Bunti. It's two million one hundred and fifty. Bunti. <laughs> oh man, I can't, I can't keep myself composed. The, this guy's incredible. You have to play the Bunti. Believe me. You have to play the Bunti. You have to play the Bunti. <laughs> He's got Jack High. Think He's begging. <laughs> bum 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 bum. Pum, 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 pum. It's begging Steve-O for a call. Oh, man. <laughs> that was a weak hand, though. So good. Yeah. He's my friend. Steve is my bro. I told you. From Dublin. Dublin, Dublin, Dublin. He did have a weak hand. <laughs> he tried to convince Otoir to call. <laughs> I hope this is getting you, clipped, Steve. man. This guy... Whoa. It's so entertaining. It was the only boy in the table. Talk Michael, about. Mario. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Leveling wars. Michael. Yeah, go on, call me, bro. Okay. Call me. Okay, Think okay, about the bounce here. He's Kobu. He's Kobu. Don't forget, Randy. There's 272,000 uh, guaranteed. Yeah, We're on a 60k a ladder. There's 718,000 up top, and it feels I'm like in. we're commentating on a $10 home game as Imad finds. Okay, come on. To back. Aye, Michael! Spots. Yes! I'm bet. Copy. No, 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 no. Slowly, slowly. Slowly. Oh, it's the queen. Mm. Um, 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 um. Hmm. 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 You have to box with me, guys. You want the out, huh? Huh? Both of three, huh? Bam, bam, bam. No, you, want right. you want the out, huh? You want the out, huh? If I win your bounty, yes. If not, I want you to stay. Please. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But uh, huh. you have to box with me, guys. Box, 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 box. <laughs> Steve, know me. How much is it? Oh, come on, you. Expensive, huh? It's expensive, my, my darling. If you win three in a row, maybe you can claim you're the problem. Sorry? If you <laughs> win three in a row, maybe you can claim you were the problem. Yes. Talking to me? You know, Al Pacino. Talking to me? Yes. Michael. Take care, man. Michael's got a jammy hand. All in. Into All the in. chatty. <laughs> Imad Derish. Uh, can I see? So is it happy to show? Easy. Easy. Easy game. It's not like you, Steve. He's really going after Steve. Steve's going to piece him up, mate. You, you come for the goat. One of the goats of the modern game. You better bring back up Steve O'Dwyer. Allez, hein? How much? 25. How much? 25. Oh, it's expensive. 
Okay. <laughs> um, no, we cannot chop. This is not a local <laughs> casino. I don't know whether Imad had like a red bull or a coffee. Or <laughs> Why don't we see them chatty? Yeah, that, that little break there. A little splash of the face. Where's your girlfriend here? Uh, white. The white? The first one? Yes. Beyonce. Beyonce. Mm, congratulations. Mm, congratulations. How old are you? 27. 27? Yes. So you're going to get, get married? You're going to get married? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? 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 Oh, good. Can you invite me? <laughs> sure. If you like Austria. I like Austria. You like Austria? You for much you invite me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? If you come, yes. You are invited. Well, he might have just got an invitation to the wedding. As long as he goes to Austria. Amanda. 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 Are you going to invite me to your wedding, Randy? <laughs> sure, but I'm already married. <laughs> so, yeah, you're welcome to come. Yeah, time machine. All right, I'll invite you to mine. Okay, cool. Doesn't mean I'm going to come, but please invite me. Steve-o. You've become more and more superfluously savage. No, I'm just honest. The 3x from Mosbok. The call from O'Dwyer has allowed Money Man Mario to flop top pair. The existence of Imad Darish has kind of handcuffed O'Dwyer to play his hands passively in the big plane in spots where he might have rejammed if that stack didn't exist. And Mario actually checking his pair of kings is very deceptive. Two flush draws present. Getting a bit more dynamic out there, or as Arlene Nishad would like to call it. Moist. Moist. Moist enough to bet. Top two pair. Well, two pair, not top two. Close enough. Man, I'm not even playing against the Dwyer right now. And he instills fear into my soul. It just looks like he's... Staring into your soul every time. Well, Dwyer really hasn't been getting hit by the deck, but he's going to make the call of ace high, drawing dead on the turn. That check on the flop by Mario really paying off as it's confused old Dwyer. As it stands, Mario's in a spot where... There's only 2.5 million back in a 4 million chip pot where he may just ask for it all and try to potentially collect a bounty, hoping O'Dwyer tries to hero call with a 9. Well, let's reverse engineer this. 3x ISO from the small. O'Dwyer called flop win, check, all in. check. All in. All in. Turn Mosfok. Find out a bit of 1.1 million on the two-tone turn texture. O'Dwyer. Called with ace high. Now both flush draws bricking. All of the hands wrapped around the 3-4 bricking. They do brick, but he's holding problematic cards right. against those draws. That's a great right? point. Ace of diamonds. Six of spades is, is it's all really relevant. bad. It's relevant, Randy.
But does that just go out the window? And we stare down the man in front of us. Double M. It is pretty hard to find some kind of bluff that doesn't have some peace by now. But enough of a peace to put it all on request across turn and river, right? Right, That's but the I'm question. saying if he had rivered a pair of jacks, hypothetically, or had a pair of nines, he wouldn't be trying to bluff with it. He's exactly. Trying to show it down. That's exactly where I'm getting to. So this jam feels a lot more polar. Right, Mossbox never turning like a three or a four into a bluff, or a nine, or as like you said, a jack. Yeah, so Odwar, first question for him is how wide would Mario bluff? I, sorry, for value. Like, if Mario had somehow bet the turn of like Jack 10 of Diamonds or Queen Jack of Diamonds or something and hit it, would he still jam? I mean, it's possible given that the way Odwar has played his hand usually is kind of capped towards the 9x. It's hard to say. I don't think he's holding the right hand to really try and pick this one off. That's what we've heard Arlene Najard say in the booth. Is that going to be the case here? I think he's pitched it, Randy. The sure did. Pained yet again by Mosbok. Last time, <laughs> Mosbok had just queen height. This time he had the goods. On both occasions, making an enemy out of Steve O'Dwyer. Not something uh, many was that people... Mario's fiance we just caught a glimpse of? Was okay, Amanda nice. on the rail. Spasbok on his path to redemption, perhaps, extending his chip lead atop of the chip counts. And more importantly, now has O'Dwyer on the back foot. He's slid down to fourth in chips. Blinds have gone up to 150k, 300k. Odwyer playing eight, Imad playing nine, and then Soizer playing 40 bigs, second in chips. It's very problematic for Odwyer as he no longer covers Imad Derish. Now he's in a spot in the small where his fold equity is dramatically decreased. Suited just because he's gather. clearly covered. I don't really see him being able to just rip this one. It looks like he's still going to try and take a free flop here. And if Soiza has anything decent, he, well, Ace Jack, we're not going to get to see a flop. Bye bye, small blind. I would love to see like a 2.7x ISO. I agree with that because it allows Odwire to have some Only. limp jams. That wouldn't necessarily call off a jam. Yeah, but I, look, in a bounty format, open rip is sh just fine. I think if it wasn't the bounty, then he'd probably more likely go for induction. There we go. Officially, the blinds are up now, 153. Red Steve, you and me? <laughs> Oh, you. you and me. By Poker Steak, who, well, we know. Two monsters. There are going to be some happy viewers but out there because Soiza <laughs> sold action into this very event over on Poker Steak, <laughs> finds himself second in Mario. chips Mario. with five bounties oh, on, and 272,000 guaranteed so far for his efforts. On, Let us know, by the way, if you're one of those lucky few that listened. To our advice, 
picked up some of Soizen's, Soizen's action. game yeah there's a little bit of a waiting race at the bottom this is 61k pay jump if you can survive once more and we know it's going to be either Steve Odoir or Imad Darish given the stack distribution seven and nine blinds for them big stacks have 41 and 51 big blinds apiece and actually they're neck to neck at the bottom now after that last pot. Seven blinds apiece. 2.2 million. First up, O'Dwyer. Dust. Here's some firepower. Yeah, but he does have Mossbok in the big to worry about. Has him covered. Yeah, but he's got like a big enough stack where he doesn't necessarily have to worry about getting blown off too much. You know he's just itching to get his chips in, but you can't do it with Jack-9 off. Mario is relentless. Queen six offsuit. I did not expect that. And you know, this is just disrespect. We're seeing a similar play style from the 200k Invitational, where Mosbok wasn't a clear-cut chip leader. He was actually in the middle of the pack, and through this kind of aggression being represented here with the Queen six rebet. He worked his way up the chip counts there. Same story here in the 40k mystery bounty. Soiza does make the call with the dominating hand as we head to the 998 board. Soiza with two overs, backdoor spades, and a gut shot. And Mario thinking of whether he should see bet this board. I mean, it's so hard to flop a piece. With Queen six off. Yeah, he's just trying to pinpoint what range his opponent might have, decide to check. And if he's checking this flop, then he technically would want to balance this with the biggest pockets as well as his high card holdings. It's such a sick check, Randy, for precisely that reason, because that balance that you mentioned sometimes is skewed towards you know, betting with range with nutted hands, but having the discipline to remain balanced, even with just the lone queen high, to perhaps navigate an attempted steal on the turn or river. You play some ace kings, ace queens, perhaps in similar fashion. But what about now? Still checking. To be fair, for Soiza, it kind of looks like Mozbox got some showdown value. Even a hand like Ace King, Ace Queen right. wouldn't fold to one bet right. at this point. So it's really hard for him to bet, even though it would work. Thus, check. We've seen a river. It's the King of Spades. And does that now present an opportunity, Randy? The king is a really good card for Mossbach to now have the game plan to fire away. He's played his hand like it's ace-king. Plus, 
a little bit less likely Soyuz is holding a king given that he's got a queen in his hand as he blocks king queen a bit, which is nice. Great points being made there. Let's see what size he comes with. It is milky. So the small bet is to kick out all of the ace highs. Mainly. So is it just queen high lays down? Wow. Money man. Mosbok on the path to redemption. Playing good. Really okay. is just playing a different level. Okay. Executed to perfection. Really does striking similarities with Steve, you and me. his coach, mentor, and good friend yeah. Fader Holtz. He's done. Fantastic job at separating himself from Soyzer. Now has a two to one chip lead over Soyzer. Imad and Stevo. Both on seven big. Spotma the chip counts. Not a great hand, but he does have that bounty potential. Maybe he can just pick up that big line. He might just rip this one into Seawall Dwyer, who's trying to outlast Imad Derish. Gonna try and limp and actually take a free flop. Don't think it's gonna work here, Randy. I think this King Five should likely rip this one in. Mario should be jamming like so much of his range into that stack. Given how much icy and pressure would be on Odwar. This is just a good read. Nice awareness. Devo's just really not been able to get anything going through no fault of his own at that King Jack spot. Blind v blind against Mario's Queen 4 on the A736 board. I feel like you His spidey senses were tingling on the turn as well, Randy, but he just couldn't unable to cool down with just King High, obviously. Perfect series. Huh? Perfect series for you. Mm. All right, Imad, a fan of the four card streets. So Can that's where he's yeah. ready to play. And two Nine. eights is ready to play. Time to go. Time. <laughs> Time to say. <laughs> what in? All in. Oh, man. That's the style. Yeah, hey, guys. Bunty, Bunty. <laughs> Steve, Bunty. <laughs> I'd love. That's a bounty Michael? token he's holding. Bunty. How much exactly is it? No, 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 don't do it. What, man? B about two million. I give it to you, really. Take it. <laughs> okay. take it. You're throwing that, Michael. <laughs> take it, take it, take it. Michael, take it, take it. Two million and twenty-five. Take it, Michael, take it. This is close for Soyuz. It's for around 20%. I give 20 my bounty. I give him my bounty. Of his stack. I give him my bounty. Huh? <laughs> He's given Amit okay. his bounty. Soiza going bounty hunting well, right. with the queen three of diamonds. Be careful what you wish for. No queen. No queen. You are my queen. 30, no queen. Two percent equity. No queen, darling, please. For the please. Asian Poker please Tour co-owner, two-time Triton champion, please. third on Malaysia's all-time money list, looking to shower him at as he's now picked up some diamonds on the ace-8-7. Imad flopping middle set. Queen's no longer an out for Soiza, but I do say. Insignificant queen of clubs. Queen, 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 again, queen. Eight outs once. Doesn't find. The diamonds that he needed. Toto! Toto! 225, correct? Yes. 
Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Amanda, Mario, Steve. Ah. Boom. <laughs> Him had calling over <laughs> to Mario's fiance, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> She's on the rail. Quite the celebration. Needs to get his bounty back. There we go, dealers. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Got it done. <laughs> well, <laughs> the theme of the series so far, Randy, has been overwhelming chip leaders coming into the FT, just unable okay, to convert four handed, three handed. Okay, Soiza with. Of course. The old time three bet against Mozbox Ace Queen. That was when he relinquished the chip lead. Then the crafty three bet from Mozbox with the Queen six and the double delayed C bet to get Soyzer to fold the best hand. Bounty hunting gone wrong. Now Soyzer with less than average. I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I'm tired. Oh, wow. Slowly, yeah, slowly. What? Why fast? Why for? Oh, slowly, 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 darling. Slowly, darling. I check. Uh, as slow as Mercedes. Michael's in front of me, you know. It's a new friend. Double your man. Michael is my friend. Slowly, slowly. Gone 11 o'clock local time. Did not expect to still be four handed, Randy, did we? No, but we do have a sh very short stack of old wire. Not Soyz is gonna bet. He got it. No free looks this time. Four remain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. In the 40k mystery bounty. There are your chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. It was Bulgaria's Faradin Mustafov bowing out first in eight for 88,000. Then Sammy the Bulldog, the Indonesian, bowing out in seventh after what's probably going to be a sleepless night. VBV, another final table to his impressive Triton track record, sixth for 166,000. And it was Axel Halle bowing out in fifth for 216k. And well, perhaps a sleepless night for him as well. That ace king against Mozbox, 9 8 suited under the gun V big blind on the ace 8 8 board. That's what propelled Mozbox up the chip counts. Is this go time for O'Dwyer? Eight bigs. 1.9 million. Yeah, I would think so. What, is he going to just wait for the next hand and bleed out? Don't think that's a good play. Soiza can't go bounty hunting, but Imad can now. He sure can. This is great because this is the only bounty he can collect. It and is. And he has a good hand to and hunt with. 475,000 behind, so... 2,375,000. It's been a bit of a rivalry between these two, the verbal jousting. O'Dwyer saying to Imad that he's already busted him twice this series. Imad looking to return the favor, perhaps in this 40K. 2,375,000, I believe. Has to go with this one, right? There's so much opportunity. And he's got range advantage, too. Doesn't want to open the door for Mario. There is a little bit of trickiness on whether to call or click or reshove. Just because of that, maybe Mario wakes my hand and then O'Dwyer finds a way to get away. But he. He's more wondering if he should come along or not. I think Steve knows that 
He's got a oh, close that's spot. a big fold. Wow. He got away with that one, Steve Dwyer. I think he, he is knows the problem. it as well. He is the problem. He it's knows it. Mm. Imad, who could have gone bounty hunting, would have had O'Dwyer dominated and in rough I shape. You. Huh? Huh? I don't believe you. You don't believe me? No. Okay. We will check. We will check. See, if I told you, I know we check, so if I told you, I stay. You have to believe me. Believe me, I stay. Steve O'Dwyer, a non-believer. We've checked the tape, Randy. Imad, telling the truth. I mean, it's a very specific hand to be naming off. That sounds reasonable. I don't see why you would think he's bluffing that. But he's jam a three of clubs. Face ten. Ah, you were lying. Flo. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny, Sunny, love you. We're playing for seven hundred and eighteen thousand dollars here, Randy. We don't have ten. Well, the tape's caught up. O'Dwyer, he's getting feedback. On the stream, he's going to find out that Imad did actually fold ace 10 there. Do I with nine lives, perhaps? You know, you throw an invitee like Imad in the mix, and it really <laughs> makes for an entertaining. I mean, he's having a good time. He's having a great time, man. Everyone's engaging with him. It's been so entertaining. So entertaining. I mean, just like every single hand has got something <laughs> going on. I wonder how rich one has to be, Randy. <laughs> to firstly, play a 40k, but then have this much fun and lightheartedness and banter with four left, 718,000 up top and bounties on the line. Top bounty prize of 400,000, three 200,000 bounties, six $100,000 bounties and Imance out here having the time of his life. Like, it's fantastic to see. Yeah, Imad currently has one bounty. Maybe he's just feeling so good because he already knows he's just going to open the 400k <laughs> right away tomorrow. He's like, okay. It's a good trip. Michael, Steve, Mario, Steve. Oh. Oh, that's a good one. I felt... You touch it? Yeah, it's very good. Mario, please. You know, I'm smart. You know, short start, you know. I have two children. He's got two children to feed. Oh, yeah. Having said that, Mario opening King 4 offsuit in the cutoff. Going after Ima Darish is big. Let's see. Just the computer hand. I mean, I've heard. A lot of begging at feature tables before, but leveraging one's children <laughs> <laughs> is not not something I'd heard prior to today. Especially from a multi-millionaire. But here we are. Monaco in the bay, sporting Monte Carlo. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, on the call for event number eight, the 40k mystery bounty. We have two more Hold'em events. Have event number nine, the 50k eight max, which is up and running. 
136 entries in that one, down to 65. A top prize of 1.5 million and change. Obviously be playing down to a champion in that one tomorrow. And then of course, wrapping things up with the GG Millions. That's for the Hold'em side of the series. So it's a 40 and a7 also in the button because things are different once he lost that huge chip lead. Out chipped by the round 10 million by Mario Mosbach. Gets a walk. Triton Poker, where high stakes dreams are dealt. It was a dreamy start for Soiza in a bit of an ICM cage as things stand now. Still four remain. Aces, oh man, he wants some action. Are so short in the big. Gonna try to trap him. Does he have anything to pay off? Oh, oh it's two kings right behind. Oh, Randy. Now Dwyer wants action. Are you kidding me? Blind versus blind. Number one versus number two. I mean, there were other ways in which the money was gonna go in at six bigs effective. Are you kidding me? Sick. Wow. wow. Sick. Wow. You can hear Odwar's verbally annoyed about that one. Yeah. Wow. Are you kidding me? Sick. Yeah, a few cuss words thrown in the mix, understandably so. This is a problem. Never fun, Randy, to call the action on these types of hands. Some hope in the form of clubs for O'Dwyer, but things looking like Money Man is about to eliminate Steve O'Dwyer in fourth. One card to come. Holds with the Kings. So with the Aces, do apologize. Title number three. We'll have to wait for Steve O'Dwyer. Great sportsmanship on display, as always, He's from. Definitely the problem. <laughs> He's the problem. One of what a the true goats of the modern game. Yeah, that was brutal. Just the coldest of decks, yes. as you saw. Does Never. win 272,000 though. It's pretty good. Also picked up that title earlier in the 25K for 416,000. Also, three bounties to take home that he can open up tomorrow. It's worth a lot. We're going to see him bounty hunting tomorrow, but it's a bitter taste for the time being. You heard him say, are you kidding me? Kings into aces. 14th on the all time money list. The $40 million in live earnings club will have to wait a little while longer for Steve O'Dwyer out in fourth, 272,000. Money man, Mosbach, with his fiance on the rail, watching on as we said it at the start, we said it when we introduced him to this FT, Looking for redemption here in event number eight, the 40K mystery bounty. Now holds two thirds of the chips in play with three left. So 
So Mario with King-10 on the button. There's a dead small blind. Rips into Soiza, who's got Ace-5 offsuit, and... A grimace yeah, he's on the face of Soiza. He's thinking this hand is good, but... I've got 2x the stack of Imad Derish, who's currently sitting in third. And his kicker's not really the best. That's a side lay down. Big problem, Mario. Change Mario, please. Thank you. <coughs> oh. All right, Mosbok. First joined us in Vietnam earlier this year. Burst onto the scene with a flurry of caches, played five events, cashed three, <coughs> multiple final table guys. soft bubbles. Uh, good luck with Mario, bro. Uh, with Mario, huh? yeah, Couple of six-figure caches. Yeah, Cypress Look, played four events. Look. Lone Look. cash out there in the form of a Look. mim cash. Didn't Look. join Look. us in Look. London. Look. Kick things off with a bang here Look. in Monte Carlo with a career record cash of 2.69 million in the 200k invitation as he continues oh. to lean into the rest Double of the time. field 10 10 in the big blind for Imad. he's a huge favorite in the spot gonna be very hard for mario mosbach to pick up another <laughs> bounty in this mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. No nine, no eight. This one's slightly difficult. Ace, king, jack. <laughs> this one is a bit difficult. Ace, so. king, jack, whatever you want. Ace, king, jack. Oh. Oh. Um, oh exactly hello. what he didn't oh. want. Hello. <laughs> Good news for Mario is he can't Ace be King dead Jack. on the turn. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That is a good card. Great. That Chelsea is a great eight. card. Eight now he's asking for eight an eight. Diamond. Eight diamond. Please, darling, do it to me. I told you, diamond, diamond. Amanda, sorry. <laughs> 3 <5? laughs> I don't know. I, don't I, know. Had, I had a nine. I <laughs> Think I about the children, know, Randy. I don't know. I don't know. I told you. Oh, you man. Against me. This is, this is the character of the series, for sure. He's amazing. Do you think his two Thank kids are watching the show, you, wherever they are in the, the world? I hope so. One of the best, you know. Dad out here trying one to get it done. Monte Carlo. What's your name? What's your name? Michaela. One of the best dealer in the Monte Carlo, Michaela. <laughs> I told you, Michaela. She is one you of the best. Stay here. No change. Stay sunny. No Shout change. out. Stay here. It's not you only Michaela, here. but all of the dealers that. Travel around on tour with us, Randy. Not easy to get a seat at the Triton Super High Roller Series. The staff side, Luca Vivaldi really chooses the cream of the crop to come and pitch cards. So with that double up, Soiza actually moves down to third, last in chip, 16 big blinds. Let's see how Imad Derish is going to play his newfound chips. Does he just walk to the chip leader? Or perhaps try to get some free flops in there? He's going to try. Oh. A cheap one. Like you, you know. Ace is a call. Oh. I learned. This is you a know, I kind of hand that might raise. Professional. Slowly, Mario, slowly. 
one million one hundred fifty. Okay. One million one hundred fifty. One million one hundred fifty. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> oh, ten move is it? <laughs> one million one hundred fifty. <laughs> How do you have face? No, I will catch you. Believe me, <laughs> I will catch you. I kind of believe it. He's got to try to catch him soon believe because me. the blinds are huge. What do you know, Michael saw is it? Came in as tournament chip leader. Now the shortest stack. 400. Five point four back, right? Five point five back. All aboard the MM Express. Jack seven of spades. All you can eat. All for orange chips. Picks up the blinds and the big blind ante, and more importantly, chipping away at Michael Soyser's stack. Just getting closer and closer to potentially one up his second place finish before. Earlier this week. Just my phone. Sorry. The reckoning. Mario Mosbach looking to join his friends Tess Ivinger and Fedor Holtz in the Triton Champion Club, and to do it in front of his fiancée Amanda as well. Truly make it all the more special as Soiza has an ace in the small rejammable stack, Randy, with fold equity. Yes. Could be trouble. Yes, he's going to take a shot at it, thinking that Mario opened a hand that was looking to min raise and fold. Yeah, he's run into it here. And he's going to get snapped off once he ma Derish folds a 10 9 offsuit in. Brutal development for Soiza. So many times this jam would just pick up the dead money in the middle. All in brought to you by betacr.eu, the Asian poker tour co-owner, always with a smile on his face, even in tough spots like this. Not the final table. Chop is okay. He would have wanted, finds himself two cards away from elimination. We'll take the chop. Nope. Dead. GG gents. On the turn. Game. Ah, oh, Ace would chop it. Doesn't find it. You need it. <laughs> I need Handshakes it. all round. Okay. Michael Soizer, the two-time Triton champion. Third on Malaysia's all-time money list. I keep this, yeah? It's mine. I Humble this. in victory oh, and gracious in defeat. Bowing out in third for $333,000. Another final table on his Triton track record. Up to 9.3 million in Triton earnings, 18 caches and two titles. And Randy, got a funny feeling. I'm going to be seeing more of that man throughout the series. But for now, third place will have to do. Big old smile on his face as always. And we have ourselves a heads up match. More than a four to one chip lead for Mario Mosbach, who kicked off the series with a runner up finish in the 200K Invitational. Looking for redemption here. 66 bigs, place 15. We're going to a quick schedule break to set the stage when we return crowning a champion in the 40K Mystery Bounty. Randy and I will see you very shortly.
crushed the bone more so many players. This is a crazy thing to do. Broke the Guinness World Record. Welcome to the World it's Series the of Poker. poker song. The biggest event. poker song. Now larger than all of the GG Poker. Stop it, which is all time high. Jump, 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 jump. No way. Jump, he's going to hit you. Jump, he's going to Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Bit fold at the stack depth. Does Mustafov want to push his perceived fold equity? He's going to take a flop here. Feels like you the price is up. amazing. His hands a little bit troublesome. How many do you have? How many do you have so far? Well, is it troublesome now, Randy? Extremely. He's going to get all the chips in, no matter what bet size Mario goes with on the flop. Nine, eight, four, two clubs. Top pair, top kicker. Absolute disaster for the Bulgarian, Aradin Mustafov. Knows that Mozbok's going to have plenty of hands that are going to bet fold. See, Mosbok has the actual goods here this time round. Has clubs covered as well. Did he just Did he just say all He's he in. did? He said all in, Randy. We bounty hunting. Oh, Mosbok wasn't thrilled about it, understandably so, on that board. Up against the under the gun. scary. Hear the reaction from the players as well. 4.4 million in the middle 
Four doesn't really change anything. Randy Mustafov still looking for an ace or a nine to double up. Doesn't find it on the Deuce of Spades River. Clean run out for Mario Mosbox. Pocket jacks as he... He's got a 100% cash rate here. And he also does. takes home two bounties on top of his price. Okay, 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 so... Not bad. The money machine. Gonna continue churning tomorrow, perhaps. For Mustafov. Two pulls at a top bounty. <laughs> Just in case the whole jacks, you know? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely going to be replaying these hands. But he still has some chips to play with. Here comes Imad Derwish. Loves these raggy aces, yeah. doesn't he? To be fair, though, he's in a little bit of a later position in this hand. Oh, bounty opportunity as well. All in. All in. Sammy the Bulldog. Going to take the rejam spot. You don't love it, but if you f open this hand, you're going to have to expect the short stack to jam. Man from Indonesia. Taking the rejam spot. Got to give him credit for having the heart. Gets shown the bad news, but 53-46. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. And you know, Randy, I'm an impartial man in the booth, but a little part of me would like to see Sammy stick around with us for a little while longer. Going to be tough it's on that be board. Very hard for him to stick around. Looking for a jack. Perhaps one of the ones that he pitched against Soiza. As the Queen of Hearts does yeah, now give card. additional outs, okay, some yeah. chop outs as well. Happy to take the chop. Now he's calling for the 10 as the five of spades. Completes the run out, Randy, and we are going to lose a final table to his Triton track record. And one for the highlight reel, a triple elimination. We'll be seeing him heading up to the main stage tomorrow to collect four bounties. Four bounties. But three of those collected, as you mentioned, in one. Average stack of 27 big blinds. Only Mosbok and Soiza with more. Steve was our shortest stack in the small King A off, so he needs to really find a spot to make a move and collect some chips or he's going to bleed out. This is the one. And you know what? Soiza can call very wide here. <laughs> what do I do? It wouldn't surprise me if he calls here because that bounty is worth 83,000 on average. If he can, can you collect exactly it. When a small blind jams, too, it doesn't necessarily mean two big cards or pocket pairs every time, right? So he's often live. The I think the key important part is it doesn't really hurt his stack to take this risk to collect a nice bounty. Yeah, there he's go. going to make the call. Knows he's gambling, but happy to do so for the bounty and the ladder and to eliminate a very tough opponent. Steve Odwyer over 39 million in live earnings. First live cash coming back in 2007. Fast forward 16 years he's in the hunt for his third title. 
Fryer not ent entertaining the heart for a sweat that Soiza called for. Clean run out for the One, King High point, and a nod of approval yeah. from Steve O'Dwyer. He shot the bullet but didn't change anything exactly, and start getting yeah. a trinket. You might get one of the bad ones. Although, if he wants to give me one for 2024, I'm, I'm an open shop. I know Dwyer's... Yeah, but what if he omens. accidentally gives you a defective one? No, I trust Odwire's judgment, man. 14th on the all-time money <laughs> list is closing yeah. in on the 40 million in live earnings, Mark. I trust that he's going to slide in probably all his chips or half of them with these two sevens pre. Three has collected three two bounties so far. Soyz is going to get out of there. Harlin. Oh, oh what do we got? Ace King. Big slick. Ah. Advantage yeah, O'Dwyer yeah. in terms of equity oh, yeah. and bounty potential. VBV. Hey, yeah, Snap can. calling out the big, understandably so. With the ace king as we head to the queen nine four two spades. Safe flop for Odwire now more than a two to one favorite across turn and river. Oh, Ten of diamonds down. does now give VBV Broadway outs. All in brought to you by betacr.eu. Ace king or a jack needed doesn't come. We're going to lose the Triton <laughs> champion and the online OG. Russian Jim Carrey, one of the happiest players on tour. BBV. And plus one envelope guaranteed at least 40,000 but an average expectation of 83K. Good to see him make another deep run. Always keeping it lively. Really does, man. Infectious banter and table chat. Humble in victory, gracious in defeat. Five left in the 40k. I show you my hand, you know, like it's all good hands. <laughs> Automatic, you know, is uh, you know. I'm not gonna forget this. No way. No one here saying I'm the problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. Oh, they've awoken the beast, Randy. It's all over. This is O'Dwyer's third title. Problem. I'm calling it here. From Osbach. Axel wakes up with Jax, the shortest stack. This is good timing. Give himself a chance to get right back in there. The thing is, he's so short where Mossbox got to go bounty hunting. Yeah, of course. Dwight getting out of the way. Mossbox got to make the call. Cards on their backs. As he sees the one over and 29% equity as Mossbox. The money man looking for his sixth bounty. All in, brought to you by betacr.eu. And well, the king 9 7 board, and all of a sudden, Halley does not want to make a set of jacks. As the Jack of Hearts redraw I mean, yeah. yeah. rolls off on the turn, and now he finds himself drawing to 10 outs once for his tournament life. Doesn't find it on the four of spades river. Set of jacks, no good to his Triton track record. Join us for the first time in Cyprus earlier on this year. Picked up a lone cash out there. Second event. Here in Monte Carlo, first final table of his Triton poker career. We'll be going home with 216,500. Nosbok. Good start. Mario. Loving life. Has the short Mario. stack in the big blind as well. They've had sub 10. Soiza with a very playable King Jack oh. offsuit. From the small. 
there's actually this is a hand where you could three bet but there is a lot of reason to just actually flat because you allow Imad to come along and maybe give yourself an opportunity but he's still going to three bet and 50,000 the three and a half x and we can see that Soiza is going to be playing difficult pots out of position that's if Mosbach opts to just flat he should be flatting just because he's out chipped for one, so no bounty possible for Mario. I mean, can you ever like four bet? Like click it, like. And then fold to mil? a jam? I guess that's possible too. I believe the default is to flat. I don't think he would ever four bet jam. It seems a bit excessive. No, but clicking it to like 3.3 .3 million is sexy, Randy. It's 2023. 3.3? .3? Oh, <laughs> Put me in, coach. 3.3 for 2023. You got it. Put me in. His hand's over. Mosbach. Okay. So, Henry, takes it down. there's a 50k going on. <laughs> You're welcome to take, find 50k and go enter Take now. my seat. Yes, and then come back to me in an hour. Wow, that was and a cool cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How sexy was that 4-bet from Mosbok, unfazed. He's playing amazing. It, honestly, every time we've had him at a feature table, He's taken the chip lead with that well-timed 4-bet away from Soizu, who now has a problem to his left, although they are equally positioned at this four-handed table. Rose. to that stage now where he may be getting a bit angsty. Needs to make something happen. Has a couple of hands for being in the big. Believe me, Steve, I will catch you. Small blind, big blind. You raise me, you raise me every time. I will catch you, I will catch you. Oh, button is here. You have a problem. I've been very fair so far. What? Final. I've been very fair so far this final table. Yeah? Fair with who? With me? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I believe you. I know I believe you. Believe me. Steve, I just lay it down Thank the you, law. Man. Check the tape. Huh? Check the tape. I will check. I will check everything. I, I pulled it an ace in the cutoff earlier when you were in the big blind. Oh. I believe you. GG Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Heads up. It's where we find ourselves in event number eight, the 40k mystery bounty. Mary Mosbok with a more than four to one chip lead of a Frenchman and Triton first-timer Imad Luigi on 15 bigs. Chip counts brought to you by GG Poker. With the departure of Michael Soizer in third, we find ourselves heads up. Soizer, with one of those storylines, Randy, at this final table, took a rejam spot that 90% of the time works mm -hmm. with the Ace-5 running into Mario's Ace-Jack, which is what got us here. The heads up, perhaps a little bit of a sour taste as the storyline of runaway chip leaders not closing out the show continues in this event. You're right uh, about that, but he will get to walk away with at least five bounties to open tomorrow. But we do have this heads up match. Current bounty count is Mario Mosbach eight, Ima Derwish with one, and there's a sweetener. If you win this heads up match, not only do you capture a 234,000 pay jump, but you get your opponent's bounty and your own. Oh, so if Mario closes this out, he's got 
10, ten bounties. Bowls tomorrow. Wow. And he's the favorite to do so with this chip it's here or stack here? distribution. It's it really is. It's here? 10 pulls at a bounty. This one, Top prize, as Randy mentioned, huh? 400k. There's three 200k bounties, six 100k bounties. Okay. But what is it? I got a funny hey, feeling, Randy, how, how, how much that that hasn't even crossed Mario's mind as he looks to close out this 40k, looking to join his close friends and mentors. Ty Seibinger, right. Fatal Holt says Triton Champions, that Triton Champion Club. Came second to Dan Smith in the 200k Triton Invitational at the start of the series for a career best cash. Yeah, you know, Mario actually eliminated four players so far at this final table alone. He's collecting quite a bit. He used to take out the very talkative and fun, lively Iman Derish in this heads up match. Yeah, the verbal jousting has been perhaps the highlight of this FT. Yeah, it's not even the cards as we know. The rivalry between Imad and Steve O'Dwyer. It's been fantastic. So entertaining. <coughs> we got to see some of that, the highlights on the break. Steve O'Dwyer was playing a very honest final table. Unfortunate to just run kings and aces. I mean, as a commentator and a viewer, it's never fun, right? Because we've all been there. Oh, you even heard Odwar, you know? He, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, like, because normally people are just kind of like, oh, it is what it is, but it just was very patient to be dealt that right. out. It's just four. Four. rough. Four. Four. Oh. A couple for of simple pots so far. For the people stateside, no chips, Mario. I'm dying. perhaps thinking, wow, mm. we're heads up. What am I going to do at the conclusion? This has a match. Do not threat. More entertainment in the form of the penultimate No Limit Hold'em event of the series. Event number nine, the 50k, is up and running with 136 entries, paying 23 in that with 54 left and 1.58 million up top. It's okay. The conclusion of this heads up match. We'll be picking up more coverage from that event, but for now, Mosbok. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Nothing to finish the job. Like uh, aces? No. Aces? <laughs> Let's gamble. Let's gamble. <laughs> he meant up out of his chair. I mean, is there any tells if he sits back down or not? Oh my. Showing nine seven six. That's a straight. Second nuts for Mosbok. Little tickle. Here, Matt. Not enough. Shows the Robbie. Easy poker. Sorry, Mario. There is fiance. Amanda watching on with excitement, perhaps some anxiety and nerves as she's been here before. Watching Mario heads up for the second time this series. Couldn't get it done against Dan Smith. Can he get it done against the okay, Triton so. newcomer? How about that for a shot? Showcasing the venue here. All in. All in. Wow, Jack do suited good enough for him to jam. Interesting. You can, What's your name? You can make empty in the middle. What's your name? Huh? Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Gwen, right. come on, you can do it. Again, come on. Gwen, 
Come on, Grant. How much are Four? Four hundred. Four, four. Four, four. four, four. Uh, Mario, four, four. Four, four. <laughs> Ay, Mario. Ay, 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 ay. She's happy. Your wife is happy. Yeah, slowly, slowly, Mario. Small, small race. Okay. It's okay. Okay. You know, you know that it's class. It's gentleman. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. gentleman. Yeah. Hmm. Eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Think. Imad's a fan of uh, <laughs> the British accent of Grant, our dealer. Well, he's got a hand I can definitely jam. I'm all in. All in. Sonny, we don't have any other tips for this? Huh? For you had such a strong race. He's talking to me? Yes. Talking to me? Yes. Sonny, what? I don't, we don't have for the final... No. Why? You have, this is a five, so you have seven. Uh, how much you have? Six. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice handy, Matt. Thank you. Ace Ace? <laughs> oh, ace Ace. I, pull, I push all in Ace Ace. Fish. You're a fish. Amanda, he's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. If you want yeah. each hand, if you want one of who fall, we can choose one of one card of the two. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Just for the fun. Yes. Okay. You choose. You oh, choose. I like this. Uh, winner shows one basically. You no. Mean? No, no. The winner, the loser, choose one. Yes. Uh, no come two. Uh, two. Yeah. So we got a little side game going on. It's me. Sorry. Whoever loses the hand can pick a random card of the winner. And I like that Mario just immediately says okay. Oh. Gentle, you know, you see? Gentle. Uh, good, yeah, gentle. Uh, gentle. You see, gentle. I told you, I'm gentleman, man, you know, gentleman. Two kids. You know. Yeah, I race. <laughs> I, to, I just have to raise. I've got Jack 3 off suit. Mario is just playing this perfectly, his man. Just Queen 8 off suit. Doesn't have that much chips remaining. He's out. One cup. Oh, you better pick the jack. Fuck. Oh, he, <laughs> he picked no, the three. No, I could three. I hate you. <laughs> the other one, I was hoping you see the other one. I don't want a picture. I'm not sure. I don't want a picture. Ace? Ace? No, picture. Ace? No, no. Big blind, 424. Four for me? This extra show card dynamic might change things up a bit as Imad did see him, his opponent raise with just a three in hand. Slowly, Mario. Slowly. Okay. Okay. Oh, this time, Trappy set in a little bit of a trap. So incredibly well balanced. Check, check. As Mario check, check. Bean, we saw That's good. Good. four-handed mixing it up. See our man Andre in the background taking a swig of Coca-Cola. Queen Nine Deuce. Oh, open wow. rip. Okay, odd. Wow, little yep. forex. Choose, choose one. Just choose one. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> strong. Oh. Very strong. It's up. Perfect. Who's that? Someone 
Coming over. Seeing that Moss walks heads up against the Frenchman, Imad. Come on, I every time. Feel like, like Mario's got the experience, but Imad has played this show one game before, you know, and also has this speech play going from him. Maybe that can give him a little bit of EV back. Does have ace jack. Oh. Okay. I do like that he's trying to trap this ace jack, especially having seen his opponent raise the three. Not this time. Mossbog, not taking yes, the bait here. Do it, do it, you got do it. <laughs> it's getting a bit excessive, not gonna lie. It's funny up to the heads up, but now it's just, you know. I mean, whatever is gonna help him play at ease. Does trick, does check back quickly. It may be Mario might read into the immediate check back as potential weakness. And he is gonna reach for chips. But Imad's got the nut no pair and has a draw to a straight. One million, one Can't really let this one go just yet. One million? One million or one hundred thousand. One one. It's a meaty bet. Gift, gift. <laughs> gift. For his, his uh Don't think Mario's is married. So gift. Betting this to then It's a gift for you, Mario. Thank slow you. down. You and Amanda. On the river. Can't just get there, Andy. Did get the gift. Five of hearts. No, no don't you ha don't have to tell me that. Come on. What's going on? This is a lot of verbal banter going on. 3.4 million out there. Okay, check. Check, check. Check. Five. Check. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Mario. You win. Are you lucky? Confidently tabling the five, but Imad. <sighs> Upset with the run out, Randy. I mean, he did say it was a gift on the wedding registry, apparently. That is what was said. That is what they're playing for right there. Trophy. The 718,000 that yeah, comes with it. Very lucky. He didn't want to see it. Huh? He already. You're yeah, very, 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 very lucky. Believe me. Huh? Four. Aim it down to just 13 bigs. I'm actually really impressed how Mario is engaging with him, but still playing his game. Uh, so yeah. he's keeping it. Ca it seems casual, but he's really that's a great playing point. as sharp as he can. Yeah, he really has but done. Finish. Give it. 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 Everything he can to accommodate. How about that for an action flop? King 10 7. Double gut shot for Imad. Who gets there on the turn? Uh, drawing dead. Wow, just open rips it. He might be missing out on value with these big jams. I have a pair. A problem. Up his bounty <laughs> chip. Bounty. Next one, please. Yes. Oh. Jack of hearts. That's like the perfect card to show. Good card. Now there's some mind games going on because you see the jack of hearts, you're thinking, there's, you there's, there's, some a big lot. Draws there's a lot going on right now. How much I have to put? Blinds up. 250. 250. I put two Line level increase brought to you by GG Poker. Those who just joining us, heads up between Poker Code's very own Mario Mosbok and Triton newcomer Imad Doichi. Mm. 
So an epic final table. We saw the Bulgarian Mustafov out in eighth, followed by Sammy the Bulldog in seventh. Vyacheslav Boldogin out in sixth. Axel Halle, the Frenchman, about out in fifth. And it was Steve O'Dwyer's departure in the coldest way possible. Kings into aces. It's about out in fourth. And before we got to this heads up, we had the chip leader coming into the FT. Michael Soizer bow out in third. It's been all Mario Mosbach. Eight bounties, overwhelming chip lead. One hand on the trophy. Bounty token, and you know what that means. All in. All in oh, once take again. It. Take it, Mario. I cannot. You choose. And I have you to agree. Oh. oh. <laughs> I have to agree, Randy. Believe me, you have you to fight. You pointed it to out. Fight, to fight, to fight, to fight, to fight with me. Fight, with man. The Jack Nine that perhaps some here. value. Yep. Being missed here from Imad. Yeah, he's definitely missing value. What Imad's trying to do, especially with this show one game, is How much have to move to try to appear 500. reckless 500, 500? Yes. and oh, hope his wow. opponent just. Calls with like second or third <laughs> pair. I joke, eh? I'm joking. Eh? You know me, okay? He the problem he is, oh, just saw the king. Gentleman, gentleman, Mario. Yeah, gentleman. The verbal jousting, Randy, yeah, has been relentless. Playing her. Let's gamble. Yes. A show one game, Mosbok. It's tricky, especially with so much on the line. With the limp. I check. Queen, five, four, two spades. Lines did go up. A little stab from Mosbok. Ranges are wide, it sets up. Your opponent just has so yeah. much dust. Yeah, Matt's gone quiet well, all of a sudden, Randy. Kind of been playing an all-in or fold strategy post-flop. Fold it is this time. i show you both. What is it, okay. six? Six? If I push, you call? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Uh, like pocket six is shown. It would be tough if he got shipped into, though. Because if he calls, then he's up against the queen. He he's just very good drawing blood. slim. Thank you, thank you. Sir, so, thank you. That one. Good luck. Quick dealer change. That's how things stand. Mario Mosbog. We mentioned at the start of the final table. On the path. To redemption, the reckoning, if you will, after coming up short in the 200k, second to Dan Smith, looking to go one further here in the 40k mystery bounty. Um, um, how much am I? It's a five to one chip lead. Yeah, currently sitting on eight bounties. If he can win this one, he will have ten because he'll collect his own as well. Currently in the massive lead in this heads up match. We walk. Who's the number one bounty hunter out there? Bobo Fett? Yeah, you don't know who that is? <laughs> well, the same way you don't know who Maradona is. You don't know who David Beckham is. Well, I've heard of David Beckham, <laughs> but you don't know who Bobo Fett is. Five high? And. Fuck, yeah. It's a bounty. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Star Wars? Mario. Mario. You heard of it? I'm dying. <laughs> Mario, help me. It's getting Mario a bit awkward me. now, isn't it, Randy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get back to it. It's just, you know. Slowly. Yeah. Couple sevens. Hola. You're a gentleman. It's gentleman. He limped two sixes before. He's a class. Believe me. 
Very classy. He did. Yes, yes. Seems to be the theme. Just giving Imad a chance. It feels like Mario wants to see flops because he wants to catch a piece in a spot where M Imad just goes crazy and just 5x jams pot. Right. Like, if Imad happens to jam on this flop, he's just... You yeah, know, obviously going to snap yeah, off, yeah, of but course. to get checked. Things go in Mario's way. It doesn't matter which one you pick. It's the same card. We showed them both. You did show them both. Thank you. Yeah. Last block, happy to show. It's good that he shows two in that spot, pocket sevens, because he's going to limp so much, and when he sees that, then he can't just get jammed on pre. Try to send that message. Yes! Can do it. Ali, 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 Ali. Each bounty worth $83,000 on average. Mario has eight bounties. Technically, that's worth, what, <laughs> 640000 minimum? And he's guaranteed at least 484000 for second. If he can guarantee, if he can win, he gets another 234 on top of that. That's insane. Yeah, and also, since we started this 40k mystery bounty, Every time the top. Oh, sorry. Is, yeah, she's just missing value missing right value. now. I was going to say, in London and in Cyprus, the person who had the most bounties pulled the top prize. Johannes Strava pulled the top bounty in London. Ding Biao pulled the top bounty in Cyprus. Mario closes this out. He's going to have 10 pulls at 400k. Minimum. 10 pulls at 200k. Three times over. Six 100k bounties. <laughs> you just take the whole top prize. Can you, oh, dude, I mean, can you imagine? Possible. I mean, he really wants to win this to get two more extra pulls as well as the extra 234 in pay jump. Imagine if he just pulls a million in bounties. <laughs> He's grinding successfully so far against the Triton newcomer. 10-3 suit. He's just very content taking flops. I understand Mario's strategy. I like it. I'm a big fan. You are too smart. I, you know what? I like you. You know why? You are too smart. Okay? Believe me. That's some recognition from Imad as well. How smart Mossbox has been playing. How old are you? 27. Which one? This one? My son, 27. Oh. You have more than one? My son just get married. Oh. 27. So, good uh, timing. I have an idea for a wedding gift. Give your son one of the mystery bounties you've collected. Oh, wow. My son, 27. Mm -hmm. Nice, like what's you. his name? Iwan. Iwan? Yeah. Oh, nice. 27, like you. Say hello to him. <laughs> he, Send him a picture. He's, he's watching? He's watching. Oh, nice. He's watching. Wow, shout out nice. to Iwan. Okay, boss. Okay, boss. How much? He had son, 27 years old. 250? Watching the show. So come on, no, no, stop, stop. Mossbox is such a gentleman. Such sure a gentleman. Iman's e got one envelope and guaranteed second, at least right now. Does he go yeah. trap you? Does he open rip? Is he just going to open rip it? Yeah, eight bigs. Mario's going to have 
a lot of calls out of the big, but content with just seeing flops and trying to outmaneuver him. Shout out to the Ricci family watching wherever they may be. 162 hopefuls in this 40k mystery bounty reduced to two. Mario Mosbok squaring off How much? Huh? against Imad Luigi. Both looking for their maiden Come title. I wouldn't mind seeing Imad trying to force it pre a little bit more because Mario has a limp like every single button now. Maybe try to make a statement do it, to do try it, do to it, do it. win some chips. <laughs> silent Jack oh. and the silent all-ins. I mean, he's just allowing Mario to just bet every single flop, even with no connection like this. Oh, so which one? I don't want better. I don't want better. I hate you. He's not lying. <laughs> True. He's not lying. I'll tell you what, if there were people on the fence out there as to whether or not they were a fan of Mario Mosbok, I, I think they've joined the fan club. The Money Man. The MM Express. Super Mario. What else has he got? Money Mosbok. Money Mosbok. Minimum eight bounty Mosbok. On pace for two more. He's on pace for two more. That's him. That's been reduced to just eight bigs. So oh, he, he said all himself. in. And Queen Ten of Hearts, that's enough to continue when he's dwindled down to 4.35 million. Give him, give him the 20. Is he going to throw that bounty chip <laughs> He's over there? He's throwing the bounty <laughs> chip over. You the might not get it back. Maybe. No, it's unlucky. No, that no, unlucky. come on. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it. <laughs> <sighs> Spock just soaking up the moment. I mean, getting an official easy, count. Man. Easy call. Easy call. He's right. All right. Oh, oh. It is oh. an easy call. For Imad's tournament life, a fist bump exchange between the two. Five cards away from redemption. Five cards away from his first Triton trophy and joining the Triton Champion Club along with his coaches, mentors, and good friends. Matthias Seibinger. Fatal Holtz. Good start for you. Ooh. Quite the Ooh. series. Ooh, what a flop. The poker no, 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 code no, no, no. crew have had. Come he on, could spade it up. You can. You can. Slowly. Slowly. Luca. Top pair for Mosbok. Luca, tell him. As he turns. Oh. Top two does reduce the outs Oof. for Imad. Looking for. A long queen spade to double up and stay alive. Doesn't find it, Randy. Love the sportsmanship and the warm embrace at the end there between these two. We have ourselves a champion. It is none other than Mario Mosbach taking down the 40k mystery bounty. Seven hundred and eighteen thousand for his efforts. Imad Darici, runner up after an epic final table performance, Randy. A lot of verbal jousting, managed to talk his way to heads up, a couple of spots that he passed up on to stay alive. Did claim a bounty as well. We'll get a chance to pull out that 400k tomorrow when Ali Najad hosts the bounty ceremony. That is 
the end of this 40k. Those are your payouts. Mustafov, eighth. Bologna, seventh. Boldogin, sixth. Halle, fifth. O'Dwyer, fourth. Soiza, third. Ricci, second. Nosbok. Closing it out here in event number eight. What do you think of that final table, Randy? There's One a lot of memorable moments, you know? Like, I think that um, Imad Darwish really stole the show and just chatted away, you know, talked about Steve Dwyer being the problem, and there was a lot going on there. And, you know, it, it was very fun to watch, right? And then we also got to see Mario show not only his poker talent, but his willingness to engage with someone who he probably isn't too familiar with how to kind of do this verbal jousting. You can see just world-class play, world-class uh, gentleman there and scooping that title and winning 10 bounties as he collects his own. 10 pulls at the top bounty tomorrow, 400 and I couldn't agree more. Uh, Imad Darici, runner-up here in the 40K, did not cash the Invitational, but managed to cash the two events he's played since then going home with 484,000 for his runner-up finish here, as well as a shot at a bounty tomorrow. Tomorrow, Randy, 2 p.m. local time, we're gonna be picking up coverage of the 50K, the penultimate No Limit Hold'em event of the series. But for now, a word with our champion, Mario Mosbach with Ali Najat. Now, generally, career changes are something we wait until later in life to explore. But for Mario Mosbach, his shift to poker has been a fruitful one. And Mario, this is your third Triton Festival, your sixth cash, second in the Invitational already here for $2.7 And you put a cherry on top with $718,000 here today. You hadn't made a Triton FT until this festival. Did you put in a little bit of work between festivals? What has changed? Um, I got engaged last month and uh, took a little break from poker and uh, after that it was just, uh, yeah, I feel really good, I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, that is pretty much it. That's something no solver can help with, right? Uh, I want to turn my attention to the footballing. Obviously I brought it up, a career change at one point in time. How has being a professional athlete helped you in terms of mindset and approaching poker as a career? Um, I think it helps quite a bit. It's uh, like situations like that are like very high pressure and um, I'm used to uh, having to perform at a high level um, and so I can get my mind uh, focused and I know when when it really matters that I uh, have a routine that I can rely on that I'm uh, performing well. Well something that's a bit out of the ordinary, not a routine, is the fact that you and I have got a date right here tomorrow, and it's not going to be a short one because you've got 10, count them, 10 bounty envelopes to open, which we'll do right here at this table. That's worth a minimum of $400,000. EV of those envelopes is 830 k and the reason I bring it up is because this mystery bounty format required some real adjustments, didn't it? How did you change your approach in this specific event? Oh, the, the phase from like start day two when the bond is coming to where everybody's still short and the bond is worth so much, it was a real uh, frenzy. It was uh, lots of all-ins. I got really lucky in a few key spots. Um, yeah, and then I ran really well. And I'm really happy we have the format. Well, that run good isn't done yet because now I invite Luca Vivaldi here to put the official touch on your victory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mario Mosbach, his first Triton title here in the 40K Mystery Bounty. Congratulations.